arms are tied, holding all the weight. If you could only rest, only concentrate. It's always easier to take the bait. You have me in the palm of your hand, in the palm of your hand. Don't you let this go. You have me in the palm of your hand, in the palm of your hand. Don't you let this go. Don't you let this go.
quiere yo ya voy sin y me dice que yo guapo y también tengo un flow que mata quién paga yo bebí no me diga que no quiere que estoy sin y me recoge cuando quiere yo ya voy sin y me dice que soy guapo y también tengo un flow que mata Las drogas se venden como frutas, paraíso de los gatos, tú disfrutas, paraíso de los gantes. Bebiendo jarabe con dos p con el más adelante. Cocadra y tranqui, mocato sin el mando, haciendo lucas como ande, paraíso de los gantes. Lambe, de esos p se los fumes, se ponen fuera, destruiría. De esos p que hablan p de mí, que quiero que les parta el cuero. Paraíso de los gantes, los mato en 30 segundos. Los peluches ya no aguantan, los subay, flow batter. Dale con la carcha, somos los niños de la calle atrás, ni carta. No me eche el aliento más, sal a buscarte. No te pongas filosófico, me pego el descarte. Estoy dripping como un carro, con los clones y con los cortes. Ve cacho se reparte, ve el totito si te paro. Para eso de los carros, con los clones y con los cortes. Ve cacho se reparte, ve el totito si te paro. Para eso de los carros. Yo solo pío me voy a jugar, es tu bar. Si lo pagaste ni pa' Paraíso de los gatos, tú disfrutas Paraíso de los gantes Bebiendo jarabe con dos p***s Ponen más adelante Si no, pues no se chan Fumando chante con la chan Haciendo lucas como ande Paraíso de los gantes Hasta esos p***s se los fumes Y ponen fuera de tu herida Hasta esos p***s se los fumes Y ponen fuera de tu herida El mundo se los fumes 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 Ya me el paraíso de los cantos Casi que rats, mi nombre por tu ciudad Baby, si es que lo escuché el vecino de atrás Let's hop and crash Y si preguntan la que hay She want it, I got it, acabo de fixar Let's go to class, la parte digital solita You're all over around, yeah, yeah, yeah Eso que tiene duplicado, yeah, yeah
Revolution. Die, die. Revolution. Die, oh, die. Revolution. Y quién me dice a mí que hoy no voy a salir? Y quién me dice a mí que hoy no voy a salir? Yo lo que quiero bailar hasta que el sol salga aquí. Dame ron, dame ron, dame ron, 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 ron.
This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy and other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. Today, the best of the best will go head to head. Every number one seed will take the stage and fight it out for a spot in the playoffs. Hello and welcome to day three, numero tres of Masters Madrid, coming to you live from the Madrid Arena. I'm Mika Fabs on the desk today with Mimi and Kakuka. How are you ladies feeling? Blue I'm a dream. I didn't know you were fluent <laughs> in Spanish already. Oh yes, now I am. I just said one word. I want to hear your Spanish. I, I am technically fluent in Spanish. So so, but you say technically, yeah, and technically. you live in Spain. I don't think. Yeah, that's I, technically, technically I live in Berlin. <laughs> okay, I live in Germany. I, I, I just I just I told Bea earlier. Bea, Bea, uh, you have done poco de español, pero entiendo bastante bien. Exactly. What's you're up? So Hello, good at it. Madrid. Maybe you step up. Um, Hear me no, out. First no. tech pause. You're taking a lesson. Oh, it's okay. happening. Okay. First tech pause. I'm down, but we're not going to get one because we're going to get into the matches and not have any tech pause. Absolutely. Before we get into that, though, let's talk about what happened here yesterday because it was our second day and we had amazing matches. And it started with EDG versus Paper Rex. I thought actually, Mimi, that history was going to repeat itself since we've seen this matchup so many times, right? Yeah, and it's always so close. EDG always ends up falling on the final yeah. hurdle. This has been their, their kryptonite since they've been going to these global events, but they finally best Paper X, but they do it in a very chaotic style. Paper X is playing a triple duelist comp with no Sentinels, and I actually think EDG showed a lot more depth compared to previous matches between these teams. They didn't let themselves fall into the chaos. I think they showed some good ideas, good mid-rounding, and, and really dealt with the, the hyper-aggression of Paper X, the best I've seen from them. Yeah, exactly, and probably EDG is one of those scenes where we think of them, we think of Kanga, you know, the operator, the flashing plays here on the big stage, where actually that was not the case, that was not what left them to victory and I think good leadership and Haodong and those lurks having what you were saying certainly. that control of that mid round certainly gave them the match. I love how it's a new chapter for so many teams right and it was certainly the case for the second match yesterday as well it was Sentinels versus Team Heretics and Mimi this was not only like superstar players on the field there it was a master class in utility post plant just about everything. By far the best match of the tournament that we've had thus far and, and I think the two teams that aren't necessarily I'm saying are the best of the tournament but have shown the best form in their debut matchup. Both of these squads had really great ideas of how their opponent was going to play, how they were going to adapt on the fly, but also just had every individual we needed showing up. This was an absolute banger. And honestly, you can't even fault uh, Heretics for, for losing this. One around, could one have or been. two rounds yeah. different on that third map, and it could have been Sentinels, it could have been Heretics. So close. I think it, it represented the perfect matchup and the perfect three maps, you know, with, with uh, the teams and the studying of their opponent so well and actually finish up on that third map uh, with that 6-6 six to six after the first half to actually, you know, um, focus on, on how they can step up in the game and, and tweak things around. Uh, and actually, Sentinels came up on top. They have to be ready for the first matchup today. Yeah. <laughs> they slept. It's for crazy. sure, for and, sure. 
And I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to add as well that it's wild, first of all, that Sentinels are going from playing that last match to the first one with not mm -hmm. a lot of prep time. But it also showed, I think, kind of a preview of how good this KC versus Sentinels game is going to be today. I love that you said it was a preview because, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It was just a little teaser of how far this team's going to be pushed, right? But a lot of people might be asking what comes next. Well, we do have a Swiss bracket. So at the end of yesterday's show, we did a little draw to set the table for round number two. And, uh, you know, I do have to ask you guys, these matches right now, we can hear the crowd right yep. now, and it is they're going insane. This is going to be a banger match for sure. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely will be. And we'll get a lot of time to talk about that one. But I want to talk about this second match because everyone's looking at KC Sen, but I think Genji EDG yes. is going to be a sleeper banger. EDG is in great form right now. Like we were talking about earlier, they've refined their play style a lot coming into this event. And it's the same for Genji. I think that they managed to maintain their performance from Pacific here at Madrid in their opening match. So that one's going to be great as well. Well, that actually brings us to today's MasterCard fan poll. Which team received? the toughest draw. Is it going to be Sentinels? Is it Gen.G, Carmine Core, or EDG? Scan this QR code. Am I pointing in the right direction? Yes, I am right now to cast your vote right now. And I have to ask you guys, what was your reaction when that draw came on? I mean, crazy because you were talking about not having a lot of time to prepare, but actually everybody had like the same time. It's the resting time uh, that, that you're going to need. Uh, and obviously the, the, the kind of time to watch your opponent that you're going to have a small advantage in. But I think that we can all agree that Sentinels probably have the toughest one. I, when I arrived later yesterday at the hotel, after the meeting, after the shadow, after everything, I got some food. When the food arrived to the hotel, I went downstairs. Celsius was coming back from the venue because of course they have to do interviews and all that. And I was like, I hope that you're going to straight to bed. <laughs> Oh my gosh, but like, you know, that, that just goes to show how competitive this tournament is, right? And just how much pressure our teams are under, right? Let's actually take a moment to check in on some of the newbies that might be coming in for this tournament because this kind of culture, this kind of, you know, competitive environment might be a bit of a shocker for them, especially since a lot are doing their first international tournament ever, Mimi. Yeah, I mean, it, it is impressive that we had so many new players qualifying to the stage here in Madrid, and pretty much every single one of them has showed up and played excellently. The numbers differ a little bit. That's ACS on your screen between mm -hmm. domestic and global. But what matters is they're having the same impact, having the same big moments. None of our rookies have disappointed yet, which is astounding. And in such different roles, right? It's not only the duelist coming in, just to add in that new electric, super young player to your squad. We have Sentinels, IGLs, duelists, but also support players. I love the fact that 2024 is shaping this way. Yeah, even new IGLs to yeah. this global stage. John QT has been in the game for a long time, but this is a, a big step to be leading Sentinels. He looked great on that stage every one of these players has been showing up for me this is this is already shaping up to be one of the most competitive global events we've had yet absolutely and it's, it, as we mentioned earlier right it heralds a new chapter of vct it heralds a new chapter of valorant so let's get into it let's talk about today's first matchup it's the clout match sentinels versus carmine corp there's already been a lot of talk about this one on socials you can see all of the fans just basically battling it out almost on social media we have the fans i can see a lot of blue over there, understandably. There's a whole, yeah. there's a whole wall there's a whole, there's a whole wall. Someone's been saying, but I mean, you even see in this suite, Carmen Core and Sentinels promising to use the opponent's bundle of the classic for whoever wins this one. But, the, but, is Sentinels but, saying it? No. <laughs> no. Celsius will do it, I think. Del why why he, are they he scared? He why would. are they scared? I think that Celsius will, 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 will sell to it. No, no, no. <laughs> he, he'd do it. He's a big supporter of uh, the bundles. Too. And specifically to, his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, 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 to say the least, uh, I would say. But yeah, I mean, like, these are massive matchups. And as we mentioned, like, you know, the, there are a lot of new faces that are coming in here and uh, for Sentinels and for Carmine Core. I think that, you know, the new flavor of these two teams is what makes this match so exciting, right? We saw an era where in Sentinels was like very aim heavy, very almost superstar like. And now we're seeing almost like a hive mind coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Sentinels is, is the best they've ever looked. And I think maybe besides Loud and Heretics, these are like the <laughs> two most electric fan bases that we have in Valorant. Every North American fan loves Sentinels. Every Everyone from France is France. What France. is that? This terrible <laughs> East Coast accent that I've somehow picked up. Um, but everyone from France is clearly putting support behind this Carmen Core squad as well. You know the fans are going to be loud. Yeah, exactly. Yesterday was crazy for Heretics. I do not expect anything else less uh, from the KC fans. Well, look at what we have here. We have a very interesting matchup just because of this um, of this, uh, this series, right? We have Tense and 
Magnum back on the stage, back facing each other once again. I think it's been a few years since we've yeah. seen this. A few, it was like, it was the late 1800s last time we saw <laughs> a few yeah. centuries ago. Up against yeah. each other. It feels like it's been that long, Ben. Yeah, exactly. Magnum was in Fnatic, Tens was in, in his prime back, also in Sentinels. in his prime now, Ben. You no, know, but they are they are both in their second prime, if you think about sure. it. Yeah. After that, Magnum, yes, he did go to play at uh, the next uh, Masters Reykjavik back then, and, and uh, Tens had only be back uh, for that lock-in, right? But we were longing for this moment where they're going to be back head-to-head -head against each other on their second prime, given uh, uh, all to this game and also in different roles, different situations. Tense advancing and moving on as a player, as a new role. Magnum also on the IGL, talking about those responsibilities and how they're merging with their new teams. Yeah, it's been such a growth for both these players. When Tense was playing on that Reykjavik stage, he was just running around and killing people on jet. He, he was the biggest star in Valorant. Yeah, he was an agent of chaos. He was a star player. And now he's evolved so much. He's playing on the Gecko. He's playing on the Omen. He's so much more of a team player and he has a, a, a really, I think, a much more cohesive team around him just because Valorant has evolved so much, but it's the same for Magnum. He was kind of under Boaster's mentorship, not really as big a voice on that team. He was flashing his teammates in Grand Finals last time we saw him. Now he's leading okay. KC to... Uh, no, but it, it just it has to show it how happen. much he's improved that he's... He, he'll never live that flash down. How much he's improved that, that he's now going and, and leading KC and to now the he title plays and beating Boaster. Well, you just you, you guys just basically like you probably made me sweat here just thinking of the pressure these IGLs are yeah. on, right? But Carmine Corp, they were able to with Stand all of that pressure of the big stage and pick up a huge win 2-0 over FPX Mimi. What did you think of that match? So I, I think a lot of people look at this and, and will be thinking that, oh, this is FPX. How did they lose so many rounds? How is it so close? I disagree with that. Zeish in the press conference said that there's 44 teams in the International League. Only eight of them made it. Every team deserves their slot. Every match is going to be close. And I don't think Casey looked in their best form. I think it's probably the weakest we've seen them all of this year, relying a lot on individual plays, on kind of late round adaptation mm -hmm. they looked a little bit shaky but that doesn't actually worry me because i think they just needed one match yeah. like this to warm up especially because it's against an fpx it has a super different super chaotic style compared mm -hmm. to a mia sentinels is, is a team that's a lot more preppable that plays a, a, a lot more of a style preppable, similar to what like they're, that. <laughs> yeah similar to what they're used to playing which I, I think will make this matchup not easier by any means but a little more comfortable stylistically for kc especially with that warm-up out of the way the sent the setting was also so a different, right? Because you're coming onto the to the big stage. I think that there, it was a pressured test, especially the way For that sure. FPX plays. And I think you know they passed it. Now moving on, as you're saying, to a different uh, to a different team. I think that they showed some of the cracks that you can see on some of those matches. We were looking at Lotus and probably how they have to advance also, and how everybody, uh, sorry, every single team is going to study you in a different way and is going to put new questions on the table. I think that for today. You know, they're going to be very ready because of, for example, things that we saw around Icebox, you know, when they were so sure of what to do and how to counter their opponents. Well, for more on Carmine Core, let's send it over to Golden Boy and Coach Anchor standing by. Coach, let me grab you here, my brother. How you doing? Feeling good today? Yeah, today is okay. Yeah, all right. Good. You got a big matchup today. Uh, we've seen Sentinels pull off some pretty interesting strategies going into their matchup yesterday against Heretics. Do you think you have anything uh, clever for this matchup today? To be honest, I want to say like Sentinels, they're like really great team. I respect them, their coaching staff, their like I don't know club yeah. and their roster. So I feel like it should be. I, I hope it will be like interesting match. <laughs> well, I think we're all very much anticipating it, man. Best of luck to you, brother. You have a good one. Back to you guys. It's going to be a very interesting match for sure. And we just want to point out that there is an NA spy of sorts on Carmine Core, right? We do have Narrate, who is ready to show NA what they've lost. He mentioned that in, uh, in, in one of the interviews. Yeah, exactly. And of course, is Narrate the player that we have to highlight time and time again? Of course, it happened in EMEA, but his debut here in the international stage was electric so many times where he was getting the multi-kills, where he was getting the clutches, especially when the team needed it the most. He was the one bringing that round that turns things around and puts it on favor of Casey. Again, from the roles that he's playing, coming from being a duelist to becoming one of the best supportive players. Yeah, he wasn't bad when he played in NA. He that's, wasn't bad. That's not the reason why Madlock 
Lions had a pretty terrible season in Challengers. The reason he's great now is because he has a team and a coach that is building him up. He's been taking off Duelist for a lot of maps, switching over to the get-go, to the fade, playing these uh, roles that are new to him. And that's all in the coaching staff, Zeish and Eng's vision. They saw the talent in this guy, and now they're yep. molding him into not just a wild superstar going out and fragging in Tier 2 games, but to someone who really fits this team's system and is great and disciplined in the util, yep. but can still have those superstar moments. You got to respect about how Coach Eng is just able to make, you know, he's like a kingmaker, right? He he's again. able to bring superstars out of even, like, you know, the the, the, the small, uh, the, the biggest rookies. Yeah, and, and there's a really great comparison there, too, because I think Kaplan has done the same thing with Tens. I yes. think Tens and Narrate are very similar, where they had this incredible amount of raw talent, raw talent that yeah. was waiting a diamond to be in the refined. Rough. And we've seen that from both of them now. Well, we did uh, sit down uh, with uh, Shin and Narrate to talk about the team's glow up. So let's check it out with uh, Shy Sideshow, who sat down with him. What's up? I'm here with Narrate and Shin from Carmen Core. Excellent to have you here at Masters Madrid. Shin, I want to start with you because you've seen the worst and you've seen the best. You really have gone through so much in what is a fairly short career playing at the top level in Valorant. Can you talk me through some of the emotional ups and downs of being on Carmen Core for the last couple of years? Yeah, I think it was like really hard like for the first year. Uh, the last year, uh, we like we didn't expect such results, and um, the only thing I can tell is like I'm really glad that I had, like I have a second chance with the results we did the last year because it was like really depressing. Uh, but uh, now like team changed, the way we work changed, so like kinda we are. I mean, I'm apt up, apt up again, like to play again. Uh, it was kinda hard last year because like with the um, new era leaving the team. We had some problems in the teams, so it was, yeah, it was a bit depressing. But uh, like, uh, I feel like all, like everything changed in the team now. I mean, in the new team, like we have a good environment. Everybody likes each other, and it's really, really cool to play. Yeah, I've been following the comic core stuff behind the scenes. Yeah, Org's putting out very good videos, and it seems like the team culture is working very, very well. Nore, can you talk to me a little bit about what the environment behind the scene is like? Because you guys are practicing a ton. It feels like you're all very involved with everything you're doing. Hyper each other up at all times it seems like a very positive atmosphere i mean we all are like very like hungry players we're all new to like this like vct and new experience so we all want to win we all want to do everything we can to win so i think that's like the first quality we all just want to be here and the second one is obviously we have our coaches who definitely lead us really in the right direction we have like obviously ang who's really smart he gives every all the details in the game while also being not making it like super like tense atmosphere. He's always super casual and like really friendly with everybody. Yeah. Same thing with Zaysh. And we also have a performance coach, uh, UN, and he's really helpful on like even going past like just like the surface level, like uh, like friendships and stuff like that, trying to make us like really know how to work together as a team. And it's definitely really important um, for a lot of teams. Like obviously Fnatic last year had him. Yeah. And it, I think it helped them a lot. And for us, I can definitely feel it that everybody is being helped by this and it just it just brings us all closer together like just naturally and we know how to deal with certain situations with how to talk to people and stuff like this so we never run into like oh this guy's just mad at this person sure. all the time for something that happened in the past like everyone gets over stuff pretty easily and yeah it's just everyone's like really I was really chill. <laughs> so, I mean, talking about chill, when you guys begin matches, Zay, she's hyping you up by asking, what is the color? And you guys are scream responding blue. It, so I wanted to kind of quiz you a little bit, because if you're the blue experts, <laughs> if you're the color experts, I wanted to get some opinions, right? So, three colors. They may all look like blue. <laughs> no, you fools. <laughs> one of these is called periwinkle. Which one do you reckon is periwinkle? Periwinkle. Periwinkle is like a goofy name. One, two, or three? It's a goofy one. Yeah, a goofy name. <laughs> like, the third one looks like a goofy color as well. Goofy color. Like goofy All right, color. Shin reckons this one is periwinkle. Yeah. Correct. That's gl Glaucus, Indigo, and Periwinkle. Glaucus. What are colors? <laughs> Glaucus. Just ridiculous. Glaucus. All right, what's the color? That's not even blue. Oh, you're like <laughs> asking us a question? Yeah, what's the color? Uh. Yeah, no comment. What's the color? No comment. Uh, teal. What's... I mean, nearly. That one's teal, actually. What's the color, <laughs> really? <laughs> um, I don't know. So none of them are blue. Nah. All yeah, right, I what about this one? Blue. One of these is the Carmen Core blue, but the other two are not. I know this one. <laughs> I mean, I, know this I one. think it's... One, 
two or three? I mean, <laughs> we're telling you're the not same wearing comic book no, no, no. blue. Yeah. Just, you ready? All right. Three, two, one, three. one. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Shin's yeah. correct. Yeah. It, it is no, but like one. it's not the same color. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the no, one is, like the logo we used like in VCT. The, 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 oh, the, oh. I mean, I was yeah. just thinking of the jersey. No, no. Yeah. I would have said one. Okay, yeah, okay. For well, sure, you, for sure, I would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You've, you've managed to dig yourself out. Of the whole <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred yeah, percent. You can still apply for that French citizenship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very, very, uh, very much for joining me, both of you, and good luck in the tournament. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, Sideshow, that was quite tricky. I thought it was gonna warm up. I, I love that warm up. I need that. <laughs> I He's need in that. the zone right now. Look at him getting the massage. Uh, <laughs> Who is well, that? Is that Zaish? Uh, it's Jin. Oh, giving the massage? Yeah, give Actually, it. I don't know. I think it might have been Zaish. Who was it? Oh, wow. That's yeah. why they're that's, so that's good. Some, that's some warm up. You're saying hello to us. Hello, Zaish. We love you. Hello. <laughs> well, of course, on the other side, though, I don't see Sentinels getting any massages or getting any warm massages, but they are very resilient. I mean, we saw that yesterday when they were down. Mimi, Coach Kaplan called a timeout and they picked it back right up. Yeah, it was this impressive comeback in Ban because they had this map yeah. honestly started off dreadful. Heretics was running them over with the retakes yeah. and then it took one timeout. Kaplan got his input and Sentinels rallied. Exactly. And it's actually they started down on every single map, probably something that they have to address for today, they need those stronger stats uh, uh, to be able to close out the match. But it's what you're saying, that timeout from Kaplan being like, guys, they're wrapping you up, they're reading into your read. You need to be aware of your surroundings, have that awareness and actually go on to them. Zek and feel as comfortable as you are tense. Oh, I hear. I hate that expression, but he actually did. He did. I hate that Gekko. expression. Can we break that down? It's because of the way the, the way it sounds. It, it has nothing like pop. Yeah, pop, I don't. Pop, pop, pop. I mean, there are words that I don't like in English. I assume that there's, you know. But going back to it, I like all words. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're beautiful. Um, but I, I think uh, this this comeback when uh, when Sentinels have talked about their ability to do so in the press conference last night, Zelsus was mentioning that he thinks the team is blessed because they won a lot <laughs> of these comebacks early in the team's history when they were playing in the off season, pulling off some crazy things, mm -hmm. which means that now the team has this really wholehearted belief that in any one of these situations where they're down, they're not really losing. They always believe they can actually make that comeback happen. And I think it really shows because if it's just one strategic adjustment mm -hmm. you have to make, if people are wavering, if people aren't feeling it anymore, it's so hard to make that instant switch. But Sentinels have done it match after match. Yeah, exactly. But if we are going to uh, crown them the winners of this Masters, we need to see more. Sure. We need to see them actually setting the foot into the maps into uh, the whole ecosystem and the, the entire match. Yeah, it was, I was eager to see what that next level will be from Sentinels and eager to see how hashtag blessed they truly are. So let's <laughs> send it back to Golden Boy, who spoke which co with Coach Kaplan earlier. Live, laugh, love. Coach Kaplan, if you don't mind giving me a few moments of your time. Good yeah. to see you, brother. Uh, all right, man, this is obviously a quick turnaround time for you guys. Uh, really, how are you feeling about the squad going into? Are you feeling comfortable, especially of a, against a formidable opponent in Carmine Corp? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a tough game. Uh, they've had two nights to rest and one full day to clean up their game. We've had one full night to rest, and in the case of us coaches, not rest. Uh, it's not fair, and it doesn't make any sense. That being said, uh, we're no stranger to tough roads, and we're not taking any excuses. We're here to win, and if we lose, that's on us. So, All right, respect that, brother. There you go. Best of luck to you no matter what. You already know that. Good luck, bud. Back to you guys. Oh, conditions are tough for this team, but as you mentioned, as we kept talking about earlier, they have this ability to just, you can't ever count them out. For sure, they're, they're definitely used to these situations. In America's, they played more rounds of Valorant than the rest of the teams in playoffs yep. combined. They went through every game of play-ins, every possible game of group stage. It has been a really long run for them to make it here. Even in the off season, they played more than any other team in America's. This is a squad that is no stranger to these kind of circumstances. Kaplan was telling me before the America's final, three hours of sleep. He told me last night, <laughs> oh my five. God. So it's already an improvement. I love the fact that we're seeing also uh, the same uh, kind of thing for Kcorp, right? They had to play through that lower bracket into the play-in and then go on to get that revenge and win in the finals. It's a very similar story, but I think they had an easier time and they surprised us more. I feel like Sentinels were like fighting against the waves time and time again, but they managed to do it here. I love the way that Kaplan has that winner mentality of no excuses if we lose, that's on us. But the difference is that that prep time is very impactful. Carmen Core is a team that is really good at coming up with those Annie strats when they have the time to do so. The team constantly talks about how good Aang's game 
plans are when they have the time to do so. So I think that is a big advantage for KC heading into this match. And I think that's what makes this uh, match, you know, really deadly for both teams, right? You have such little prep time, and that means that's where the ante comes in. There's no other way. You just have to outthink and outplay each other, right? But um, a big part of that also is like the energy that Sentinels brings. And I think a big part of that is Zelsis. And you can see it, right? You can see how he'll just yell on stage, he'll smile, he'll lift um, everybody up and, you know, convince everybody to buy the Sentinels bundle, of course. But Mimi, you know, he's just a powerhouse also in-game. He's more than just a salesman. Uh, when, <laughs> when his teammates talk about him, he, they describe him as the player who gives them a reason to play, that reminds them what they're here for. He's really good at giving his teammates energy, being that emotional leader. But he also will have games like this one. Yeah, I think if it weren't for his clutches on Lotus, Sentinels wouldn't be here. It would have been Team Heretics instead. In a close match like that, little pop-offs like this, giving your team the energy, those things that are, are less easy to point out and that are easy to point out, like his clutches, are both so impactful for Sen's win yesterday. Well, uh, you, when you talk about these two teams, you actually cannot talk about them without talking about the duelists. We have Zekin versus Martin and uh, Bea. You know, yeah. we talk about these two. We talked about them earlier, how exciting these, uh, you know, they have the same kind of like agent pool. They kind of mirror each other in a way. So this head-to-head yeah. -head is going to be so exciting. Yeah, exactly. And I think that Zekin did a brilliant job yesterday. I think that he was being extra aggressive when the team needed it most. Probably, you know, Celsius was on his ear being like, I just, just my man, just jump just in. Go in. Gonna we got you. you. And also the combination of him and Tense is going to be very similar to the one that we're going to see between Narrate and Martin. And, you know, probably we haven't talked about Martin so much because we've been focusing on Narrate, but this is the same. And Martin brings something different to the team. He's going to be playing on the Euro. He's going to be on his own and making this place in some of the instances. <laughs> but the electricity from both have to be ready on stage. Did Zekin always just fall out of his chair when we came into that clip? I think so. I, I think it is. If he yeah. can stay in his chair this match, he's going to be time. great again. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, uh, less less friendly fire on his side. He did acknowledge that. It is yeah, kind of messed it, it up. We, it is kind of messed up that no. his stats didn't show those two extra kills. Hey, they did say that, like John Fury did say, like, hey, if he has to kill me in order to win the round, then so be it, right? I will be the sacrificial lamb. But I think that you know, these again, you point out how like this tandem is going to be so interesting to watch. You know, you have second and tenth, you have Martin and Narrate. That's gonna be where my eyes are at actually on this match because it's gonna be, uh, it's, it's gonna boil down to the wire, especially since we've talked about all of the pressure that these teams are going through. And at the same time, this is a breakout for John Cutie as an IGL. Well, yeah, it absolutely is. This guy has been grinding in Tier 2 for a long time. Yeah. Started his career in the MENA scene, moved over to Canada for college, competed there in Tier 2, finally made it to Tier 1 with Sentinels, and now he's he's IGLing his first global tournament, which is really impressive. He's also reunited with Coach Kaplan, who mm -hmm, they played exactly. together back in Tier 2. And I think the system that both of them have built is really parallel to the impact yeah. that the coaches have in KC. For my money, these two teams are the two that have the strongest read on the meta right now. I think Sentinels finds a great balance yeah. between playing meta stuff like that Gecko comp they switched to on Bind and doing things that enable their players that is more based on comfort. And on the other hand, for KC, they're, they're playing stuff that no one else is that I think is also on the forefront, like those uh, like the their split comp where they're playing the Double Smokes and the Yoru. Both these teams have such great ideas and also such electric individuals. This is going to be a fantastic match. Oh yeah, for sure. But for now, we're going to take a little break from that discussion because it is time for the results of our MasterCard fan poll. Earlier, we asked you which team had the toughest draw for round two and the results are in. People think it is Carmine Corbea. Do you agree? I mean, probably this is because of the time zones in this one. I'm going to give it to You're you. You're using my cope. No, I mean, Let's your go. cope was that the, the people in Brazil didn't speak <laughs> <laughs> Again, oh, that she's <laughs> twisting my words. No. That's not what I said. I love Brazil. I love Brazil. No. I love Brazil. Let me mind control you. <laughs> well, I believe you. I believe you. I'm glad. Yeah. I think it's a, it's very jarring because Casey and, the, and their fans, they do have the opportunity quote unquote, uh, to make it here to the stage. So of course, if just with a few hours difference, get on a train, get on a bus. And Mimi, can they get here by train? Don't get me started <laughs> talking about trains. Don't get. I'll, I'll ruin the, How long do we have? That's two minutes, 36 <laughs> seconds. We have better things to talk about. Okay, okay. But uh, the first time I'll say that, maybe the last two. <laughs>
But yeah, making it here for some of the KC fans is very important because we've known how the support has been unconditional for this team and definitely is going to give them some edge. Yeah, and I'm eager to see how Sentinels will be playing up against a kind of sort of the home court of Carmine Corp, right? They're going to have to deal with the blue wall that has showed up in support of this team. So they're going to be looking like the villains, but that is uh, no, uh, no, 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 no stranger. Uh, Annie is no stranger to that role, I would say. Uh, but for now, while we are waiting for map select Mimi, I'm thinking like um, right now we can see that our teams are getting ready. And I think like, you know, you, you can feel that energy. You can feel that energy coming out. And I believe our coaches are standing by for map select. So let's listen in. All right, welcome to Map Select presented by Omen. We will start with the first one of the day. Um, Sentinels, you were higher seed via the draw, so you will get to choose, choose Team A or Team B. Take Team A. Team A. So KC will be Team B, and Sentinels, we'll start with your first ban. Ban Icebox. Icebox. Your ban? Uh, ban Sunset. Sunset. And map number one from Sentinels? Pick Split. Split. Side on Split. Defense. Defense. Uh, map number two? Uh, Pick Lotus. Lotus. Side on Lotus. Pick attack. Attack. Okay, next set of bands, starting with Sentinels, you have Ascent, Bind, and Breeze. Ban Ascent. Ban Ascent. Your band, you have Bind and Breeze. Ban Breeze. So map number three is going to be Bind, Sentinel, Side on Bind. Attack. Attack. All right, good luck to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. It was so fast. Last time we had like 10 minutes. Yeah, this is going to be crazy. I think that probably these maps are the best that we could get from all these teams. I would have changed maybe the bind for the sunset, but actually the fact that neither of them played the breeze, what was going to happen with that map, it may be a crazy pick or maybe a, a, a very ballsy uh, um, ban, but I love the fact that we're getting split, that we're getting Lotus. This is perfect for this matchup. It's the best possible match Literally. pool for, map pool for a match I'm so excited for. Yeah, it, I can feel the excitement already. So let's get this day started. It's going to be Sentinels versus Carmine Con first. And later on, we have EDG versus Gen G. That is day three for Masters Madrid. And it starts right about now.这是一个 Genji crush loud! Looking no. so good. 我觉得他们对于我来说是家人, 所以说他们一直的相信, 一直的对我的肯定, 一直对我的支持, 所以说我要做得更棒, 所以说不能让他们失望, 对于我失望, 所以说我觉得我会带着这些东西一起前进, 跟我的家人们, 저희가 남아있는 경기들도 좋은 성적으로 거둬갈 수 있도록 노력하겠습니다. Any predictions for a match against Sentinel? So is it nostalgic being back with them? I mean, what, how do you think it could go? It's weird to me, because uh, it's like happening deja vu, I'd say. Yeah, it's like uh, it's been three years. It's been a long time, so yeah, it would be quite cool to, to face them again and uh, this time to take the win. Playing against Carmine Corp is definitely going to be tough. Nere, I already knew he was a strong player when he was playing challengers here in NA. He was putting up really good numbers even though his team wasn't that strong. Kicking out and over. Nere oh! can't be stopped, man! It's just disgusting! I had a couple of trials for NA teams, and I think they were extremely well. It just, I kind of got unlucky. The teams that qualify from NA are not like the teams that I expected 
to you know, play for last season. Everything happens for a reason, and I'm here in Carmine Corp, and we're obviously doing way better than those teams I was talking about. To be honest, like, revenge is not really on my mind. I'm just really excited to play the NA teams at least, because like, you know, I could have been in their region playing, but now I'm in a different region, playing with a new team. The NA isn't the only region that can be dominant. They can always be European teams. It, or NA players going to different regions and still performing like really well. Second is so mechanically just filthy. Hey, look at him go! Many people have no idea this guy has just given him hell. Second is incredible player. I think we've all known this. He's just He's just Zekin. I would say the difference between 2022 Zekin and right now, uh, I have a lot more experience than I did two years ago, and I'm a lot more confident in myself as a player than I was. Going up against Sentinels will be uh, quite a challenge. They're probably the most dangerous team at this tournament. For me, I don't really think about winning or losing. I just think about playing the game that's in front of me and learning as I go. As a whole team, I think Carmine Corp is very strong, but I believe that I can outdo anyone in the world. Madrid is coming right up. Sentinels versus Carmine Corp. The kickoff winners of their respective regions, NA versus EMEA, is a tale as old as Valorant itself. But Mimi, it's matchups like these that signal a whole new chapter of this rivalry. It absolutely is. Both these teams have massive fan bases behind them, people cheering them on. But for both these squads, they have defined their past failures. At one time, both these squads were the memes of their region, the, the teams with a lot of clout but no skill. And now they're the two squads defining the, defining the meta at the forefront of the VCT with some of the best players in the world. And just because of that Swiss stage, we get to see them head to head today. Maybe some would say a little early, but this is probably one of the matches that people were expecting the it's most. The and not only the people, also the players. Of course, for Sentinels, they want to go up against the big guns of EMEA, and for EMEA, is never different. Okay, I did hear something in the press conferences yesterday, and Martin was like saying that Bunny is good luck for him. So if that Bunny comes out, you know he's dropping 40k, apparently. Le bon la bon. You said it, now you cursed it. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm so sorry. You're I'm good, so you're sorry. Good. The it's desk, still good I forget. Power. I forget the power that this desk has sometimes. But you know, these two teams. If you told me that we would be seeing this match in, you know, the first international event that Valorant has, you would. I, I would be like, alternate universe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is really shocking the the comeback that both these teams have had. But the, I think the things to be excited for are first of all the map pool. We're starting on split. Yeah. Sentinels looked unbeatable on this map in America and it was the exact same for Carmine Corp. But they play incredibly different styles, playing the, the, the Yoru noise denial comp with this double dive for Carmine Corp and playing the old standard comp, but just executing on it incredibly well. For Sentinels, this is a, a map about their protocols and how strong they are at finding the right timings on defense, at making the right calls. This is... It, uh, in my opinion, the best map for both teams. Protocols, that is the word, Mimi. Of course, Casey is going to try and disrupt and break the protocols for Sentinels. We need to take back uh, and, and think about those retakes, how good they've been in the region, uh, especially when playing compositions like this one. They know how to administrate the utility throughout the round. They know how to, as I said, disrupt your position, your thinking, and your interpretation of the map. But this opponent is not going to be an easy one. Kaplan in the press wait. conference last night, he, yeah. he said that this tournament was about 
about prep, was about any strat, because there was not a lot of turnaround time for yep. teams to switch up their strats. The issue here is, for Sentinels, 14 hours of prep since their game last night. You gotta sleep for at least some of those. And on the other hand, Carmen Core have had a good amount of time for Aang to come up with a counter strat. They're so good at implementing that. Ooh, and right now, as we're seeing our agent select, we are seeing Martin bringing out the Yoru that we talked about. So that head-to-head -head we talked about, like it's gonna be a double duelist this time. I love the fact that we get the double duelist, that we get to see the split, because we're going to see now Ray playing on that duelist. We had enough of the initiator, and this duo also combined uh, with Magnum and how he's going to be initiating and gathering that information is going to be key to the success of Casey. Everyone's seen Sentinel's comp before, but if you haven't watched Carmine Cores, the things to look for is how they're pairing the teleports in their comps with audio denial. They have yep. Fade Seize, they have Fade Alt, they have Omen, Omen Paranoia. They have all these tools that take away your ears, and then they have Yoru gate crashes, omen TPs to get behind you. They're so dynamic in the way that they double dive on their retakes on defense and on their attack side sight hits. Yeah, exactly. And do not forget about the Astro as well. Another key element there. Well, let's get this match started and bring in your casters. It's Bren and Sideshow. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, forget the bundles, forget the clout. This is two teams, number one seed in their respective regions, going at it for that straight shot to playoffs. It's all on the line here right now. I mean, we are expecting an absolutely incredible series yeah. between these two teams. Especially given the map pool that we have in front of us. These are the teams playing at the top of their pools. And they're the teams coming from the regions that have lifted trophies in the past. The number one seeds coming out from Americas and from EMEA. There was no guarantee that we were going to get this game throughout the tournament. Nope. Swiss tossed the coin and it landed on a goated match. We set our sights here on to split. As you've already mentioned, very good map for both of these teams. It's going to be mind games on mind games, I'm sure, as we get deeper and deeper into the series. I mean, we attribute a lot of the strengths of both of these squads down to their retakes, the fundamentals. Uh, maybe we might see that being picked apart. Casey looking to see if there's any aggression at mid here. Sentinels, you can see just from their pistol round by, they're not planning to go for an aggressive pistol strat. Zekken did not buy the blast packs, go for the boom bot instead. Full utility on the sky, looking to try and play a more defaulty pistol. Punish the aggression from Casey, which may be happening in mid actually, as Thomas she took yeah, a little bit of damage. Almost first blood going away, as Sentinels here, just a bit of chip damage and away. Narrate spamming back and forth, exchanging. With the bullets, no yeah. casualties. It is so slow going. I was, I was taking a look at Magnum and Martine, who were thinking about getting information over towards B Heaven, but they didn't actually spot that Senna going for the walk up. It's contacts on contacts, but a stack of KC. They've got the players here. Pull, triggered, Prowler through, along with the decoy. A lot of noise being made. And the mid round audible here now. 30 seconds left, Sen. Oh, we're going to accelerate into the A side, but they're worried in case it's some kind of a trap. Well, Zelsis goes for more info, punished, but that is finally going to make the call. Sassy gets the spike down, planted for heaven. Exactly so, and I'm going to be paying close attention to this. I mean, this is where the Sentinels' protocols have been immaculate in Americas, constantly stopping their opponents from taking heaven control playing so well around that area, understanding what their opponents want to do. Absolutely, make the same argument for Carmen Core here. Paranoia being held and primed, ready and waiting. There's a flash to set that right up. The rate will fall. Nade, unfortunate there, gets stuck into the wall. So no rebound for Zek and the rest of now Carmen Core willing to just try and take the fight straight through into Albo. That's going to be some ground gains, but oh my, the bodies falling and toppling pistol round for Sentinels. Lovely performance, really well played. Highlighting the strengths of Sen right from the beginning there, which is that they understand how their opponents want to play on split. There is a meta that's developed over the course of probably the last year or maybe a little more, which is plant for heaven, try to retake heaven control as the post planners, and the retakers are gonna end up flooding often around that heaven area. And Sen are so good at anticipating what their opponents want to do and stopping them. Yeah. You see how they Send that flash just to disrupt what was happening. The timings were all perfect. I'm sure they can upset some of that one. Well, a little bit in the weeds there. I mean, just catching on to one another with the bodies, but they're going to be granted and a ramp control deep in the position. And this does look like a round where both teams have opted for the opposite side of things. Casey stacking four players over towards B main, hoping that things were going to come into them. And instead, Sentinel's getting a very easy A site. There was a lot of there was a lot of talk, Brent, in Americas after Sentinels went on their Spike fantastic planted. run about whether 
this version of them playing Split was just the best in the world. And for me personally, it looks awesome, but you have to see it tested at an event like this and go up against other top teams like KC, for example, before you can make claims like that. This might be one of the biggest tests they've ever had. Kamen Core, still danger here, even though they are on an eco round. You never want to count this team out, especially with how drilled they are. Look at them, playing together, piece together, but so are Sentinels, always side by side, not leaving any gaps, nothing to chance. So it will be nice and easy sailed round. We've shin the last one left, and time ticking away. We're going to be playing close attention as well if you want to talk about general matchups into this. I mean, on this map, we get an absolute treat, don't we? Narrate versus Zekin on the raises with that head to head. Yeah. I mean, what a head, what a head to head. That really is spectacular. And Tenz has moved off the Yoru on bind just, uh, unfortunately, exactly aligned with when he could have gone up against Here. Martin, as we were thinking yeah. of later on into the pool. The rolls might get funky. I mean, the rates playing all sorts. Yeah. Watching into the initiators. But here we go. Casey with rifles back online. And Sentinels with a great buy themselves. Second picks up the judge. He was talking about how much he was playing that on split during his rank games since being in Madrid. <laughs> that was advice he gave me in Korea. He was like, if you're losing your rank games, just force the judge. Well, we'll see how that it works for him. Getting in their faces. It was definitely working out the other day in their match versus Heretics. Trailblazer straight in the middle, up the gut through the side. Prowler knifed. Second, he set up for success <laughs> and even more. He's deep now. Fox in the pen, looks like he wanted to try and overextend, but now here we go, an attempt to try and reclear into mid, trip, Broken John. Might be in some trouble, has to call for some backup and reinforcements, fights happening all over the bloody place, yet still the movement is clean. Satchel there, trip in his face, and the rate still wins that one out, but the side has been fully taken, territory now for Sen. Kamiko forced to slow it down now, side by side, the rate and Shin, gonna be holding hands through this one, but they've got a lot to chew through. This one way that Shin's looking to pop. Very difficult for the post planters to deal with. Celsius goes for a peek early on, trying to play Zekin in. It's a bit of that information, yet yeah, close to Rafters, close to the corner, and a eight plucks him out. Now brings it to the 2v2 with an aid rebounding. Do they know? Did he expect it towards new box? Half clearance! Celsius, just the one a touch, Shin! That is nasty! Nasty business, man. That's a 2v3, and you can start to see it. The signs are live here for Carmen Court. Yeah, that's a great work from both Shin and Narei. But at the same time, a very expensive bonus round. Look at the economical difference here. Sen have so much more money to be able to work with. KC on the verge of not even being able to buy in this round. Great awareness though, really well cleared. All of these different angles. Very fast from Shin clearing out these two final players to trade Narei too. So it's a big round and Magnum gets on his feet early. But things do not get any easier. Like I said, the economy is in a really rough spot right now for KC. They're coming into this next round with two Bulldogs and a Stinger. Money is odd. They're quite weak. Martin going to be set up in a four position. Has the gate crash. Just to back out in case it's necessary. Sentinels opting for a much slower beginning. A bit of spam exchanged. Led Halen down on either side. Casey's retakes have been fantastic. Both of these teams look amazing on the split retakes. But Sentinels will try and force the fights before that's even a possibility. Flash. Chance for the repeat needs. And the fly straight past each other. Zekin, he's already way further ahead than anticipated. It's just so good. The way that he breaks the Prowlers whilst continuing to scale, whilst continuing to move forwards, he's done it with the knife and with the run and gun movement with the Phantom there. It just ruins what Casey are going for. Ability off the charts. Tomasi feeling the heat turned up. Sent out the paranoia, but now backs away. Trying to play for the life. Giving up heaven control. Gives up B as a result. But maybe I'll be able to just pick him apart from the side here. Is he going to get lucky with a few stray bullets? Not quite. Sassy. Minor bruises, basically. It's going to be that plant down now with five players up and kicking. Martin. Holding that flash out wide. Magnum not ex expecting it, not anticipating it. Showstopper now earned. This is what I'm talking about. Sen forcing the fights before the retake can even happen. The swing timing there from Zekin was excellent. It shut this retake down before it could even begin. And Casey were getting so many of these 4v5 round wins against FPX because FPX would, I mean, to be kind to them, 
throw it away. <laughs> and Sen yeah. are just not I mean, going to do that. If they get up early, they have the discipline and the player strength to be able to close this out. They've been working on that since October. Both of these teams Here. grinding away in separate regions. But I think one of the biggest things that we're seeing here that's allowed Second to get the entry both of these times is that he's just disrespecting the Prowlers. He, he knifed one of the Prowlers, got through, and managed to get a kill with the Judge. And then this time, I just look, straight past him. Narrate thinks there that the Prowlers got attack onto somebody, I think, or at least he's putting pressure on someone and giving him space to be able to swing. That is not the case. Zekin was so ready for that. He's seven and one on attack side split right now. Dominating. Much like last night as well. I mean, Sentinels talk about this team. Last one's out, first one's in. Haven't had much time to prepare for this one, but the form factor playing its part here. All the Sentinels players looking warmed up and ready. B main control. It's going to be the name of the game. So Sentinels are giving it basically for free, just the one snake bite in exchange for that one. And most of this pressure has been coming through mid. This time, Zekin moves his way over towards B main. Tomaji might have gotten a spot there. Oh, it's going to get explosive. Yeah, as soon as he spots that one, Paranoia. Good, flash. good to send that one out, yeah. Actually fantastic, but still close to the corner. Ducks and no wins. Way. How the hell is he getting that? <laughs> From target, they're taking most likely the nade rebounds, and Zekin, man, he's going to build himself up to another one. That's unbelievable. And a snipes Martin up there. I believe it was with the showstopper, and then also gets a nade kill too. Unreal. And Sen, easy as it goes, isn't it? Look at that, they can pick and choose the targets. Who wants to get a plan? Who wants to earn their ult next? Sassy, okay, you're up. Keep the war machine chugging. And that's the big thing, right? Once you start to get momentum like this, this was only a bit of an anti-eco round. Uh, Casey still had three uh, rifles, if you want to call the bulldog a rifle as well. But it wasn't a full buy for them. Sen used a big ultimate, but they managed to get another one online too. So this ult cycle is now going to start to push forwards and things only get more difficult trying to hold off Zekin when he has the Seekers to be able to entry behind too. It's a vicious cycle. And this is all before we get to see Sen playing on the defense side, where I think they've also looked spectacular. In fact, might have looked better if you were thinking about how you weigh up their attack versus defense side split. I, yeah, I mean, I would make that argument. Defense side, they have so many different looks on it. Now, Carmen Court. As we've already mentioned, haven't really had time to pick themselves back up after the series of losses. The economy has never really been honest at any of these points. Look at them working with classics there for Magnum. I mean, now you're going to see hopefully a bit better weaponry. I mean, it's half armor, a couple of rifles, still the Bulldog being kept for Magnum. Of course, we can see this. Yeah, and another opportunity for Sentinels to mix some stuff up. Zekin, by the way, still 10 and 1. Still yet to be punished more He's than one time. He's dominating. Absolutely frying. And this looks like, once more, the pressure's going to come towards mid. And Martin and Magnum have been trying to get aggressive in this area. They just haven't found the opportunities. An attempt to take an early fight there, but Carmen Core looking a little bit out of sync with the high-low, but Martin's been pushed forward, so they want to fight this. I think Martin is just looking to catch Zekin as he powers his way up mid, trying to position himself into an unusual spot. Getting really close, Trailblazer. Using the clutch corner, Martin wasn't stunned up there actually, catching, but still the trade's there. Does Martin not have his gate crash? I'm not too sure. But he did a lot of damage too to Sassy. So there has still been damage done there, even though it was a one for one trade. Call is made. Yeah, this push through is an excellent idea from John Cutie. No Sentinel on the other side for KC means that these gaps do exist. I'm going to be aware of the ramp players though. Seekers, they should be now used. Spam down and spray down, so the rate gets both of them. Are they aware and how deep John and Tens are? It seems like it. Look at that narrate. Watching for the avenue as a game of time is, but he is going to be granted. What no way! Walked straight into him. Should have been a freebie. Was not. Shin. He's got so much more to do now. Perfect paranoia. That's Ten setting his team up. But will there be anything to capitalize? It's him himself. He'll want to follow through, man. Absolute dismantling so far. In terms of the entry in, in terms of the lurk play there too. It looked like Narate had it. His crosshair is in the right place, but I don't think he anticipated the timing being that quick. And this puts an enormous burden onto Magnum and Tamaji. Sen running away with the early section of this half here. Horn sent wide. Paranoia only on the one. Zelsis holds it down, but as the instantaneous trade, Thomas, he does not expect that position. So it's five to one. Sentinels 
really looking like just the mid-round calling. The idea is initially off the rip. Even when KC seemed to get that minor advantage of the first kill, there's always that instant trade coming out. No, they are absolutely crushing them right now in every department. These are the kind of banger matchups that when one team just... When you haven't had the opportunity to experience how the two clash and collide, you don't exactly know which way it's going to go. No. And when you see it play out like this, you're like, wow, this is spectacular, the way that Sen are just handling everything that KC are throwing at them. But I also feel like KC are not actually being able to define the tempo at any point in these rounds. Maybe this, an eco round where they can take more risks, could be the one. This is the time to do it. Peeking wide, Shin will respect it now. Shows presence, though, so Sen are going to be wanting to re-clear B-Main, just in case. This Astra smoke does make it a little difficult to do that, though. Especially when Zelsis has the pit online, which he's going to want for a post-plant situation, probably. If things get dangerous, perhaps he could save it for a rifle. Abundance of caution from Sentinels here, up against that weaker buy, for good reason. Haunt thrown over towards A right now, so Carmen Core start to stack B. It didn't see anybody. Sassy might decide to try to use some Sky Util to pull people back away from the B site before this pop happens. But also that means that there won't be Initiator Utility with the site hit. No rates running away. No, nope. going back to heaven. Close corner. Flash. Martin collects. That's a great punish. It gives them the kill and it tells them to keep stacking B. Here we go, Util being forced out of them with Paranoia going flying to pull on top of it. Tens cannot get through. In fact, it's down to just single digits of HP. There's 20 seconds left. The rate's still there with the rocket in his back pocket. It's going to be pretty monstrous here. Pit just to get themselves out. 14 seconds left. Time Spam. becoming an issue up to oh! second, but the rate two for two on the way. Carmen Core full control and no more chances here. No more chances at all for Sen. That's the danger when you take it slowly. That abundance of caution that I was talking about prior. Doesn't matter if you're playing against the half by when you take your time like that, these teams are going to punish you. I think the big play, I mean, I can't believe, by the way, that Zekin, even in a round where they lose, is pulling out that kind of stuff. But yeah, that is the combo of the ultimate there too, the Yoru ultimate, so that you can spam into the pit, the raise ult that comes through locking up the round. But the pick that Martin got onto Sassy told them exactly what the play was. And that's what they've been missing the entire time. They've never been able to read what's happening, and even if they got the read, Zekin bowled them over. Kamako back into it. More than happy with it. Celsius ended up using the cry here. That one way is a little difficult. Hello. No disrespect from Zekin. It's not for the util. And he's one away from getting his ult online. Look at how passive these positions are from Narrate and Magnum. Really far back in spawn. Martin expecting. Play to walk right past the back wall there, holding his crosshair for it, but Sen have got different ideas. With ramp control game by John QT, he's lurked himself up there, caught that timing, so with that cleared, the rest of his team now regroups and meets him from mid. Shin is looking very isolated on the A site. Narrate's trying to get into a position where he could help him. Now gets smoked off, that's going to be a danger signal. Alarm Smoke bells ringing. Yep, tense, alt. Does this a lot to just try and gather that information. They're going the other way. Like what he sees, yeah, going in the opposite direction. Players still ready here to meet them. Close to the corner, Martin has to do more than that, but he still gets the one kill for him. And B main control is there with Thomas. He smokes himself off now, pouring into the side of Sentinels. 20 seconds left, Nightfall, Paranoia near sighted. Spike, drop down, Carmen Core Rapidly approaching the position. And there's no way for Sen to bail themselves out. That is Carmen Core again. In complete control. Another lovely round there. Finding out what's going on with that constant control of B main. So this time, Zelsis not deciding to re-clear that area of the map gave KC good info. Now, they could have been miles away from the play. If they decided to commit A there into Shin and Narrate, who was not, you know, in screens, then that round could have been very successful for Sen. They decided to pivot in the opposite direction and ended up falling straight into that crossfire from Tamaji and Martin. Zekin, ult online though, to try and get things back in the hands of Sentinels. I feel like Kamikor have had their most success actually by trying to play for the late round information and the late round picks. 
rather than forcing the fight early on, where you know we saw Narey and Martin getting punished in those earlier rounds. It's almost like a stalemate just being drawn initially. Exchange that util, waiting for it out. Tomasi is going to be in trouble here, potentially. Forwards now with the old flash into the corner. Rocket rebounds. There's no kill there. Tomasi's already repositioned. Spray by Tens. Wrangles the beast and eventually takes out the rate, but the evacuation was successful. So Tomasi is alive. And now he's going to be setting his house back up with the orb up. He's got a free walkout into the site. Wraps back to the pillar, sees potential connection. Players are weak, and this is an I interesting exactly. one. It's an unusual one. Neural theft gives him an idea of where these players might be. The positioning's now highlighted, pointed out, 40 seconds left, but they don't have heaven control. No real way to play this one and fight this. Doubled up together, the double swing is called! Celsius finds two, flash through, Martin lacking for that one. Straight bullet just going wide, but it finds the target. And a necessary one at that with 25 seconds 20, left. 25 seconds, Tens is going round the world. He's got his knife out trying to make this play happen, but Martin's already read it. Watching. They know there's no noise being made here. Someone must be going for a flank. <gasps> He's missed the angle. Tap. Sassy, he's trying to push the players and pull them away. They're looking the wrong way. Shit up top. Oh, oh my. The minor moments making a difference there. Tiniest of differences. A comedy or a tragedy, depending on which side of the equation you're on. But that round came down to, as you said, the smallest things. Martin was so aware that a flank was coming through. He just believed that he could spot the head. And then the tap is beautifully timed from Sassy to pull attention away. Tens had no idea where Shin was. No just, idea. Just didn't clear afters. And now KC have won three rounds in a row to get themselves back into this. It looked dominant for Sentinels, but they have lost their grip on this map so far. Oh, here we go, the paranoia play. Yeah, Dimensional Drift sets it up as well, pinged out a multitude of targets. Martin, too many. Exited out, yeah. Far too many Way for Martin to, to deal with. with. And I guess John QT is just playing anti. That is such a nice play. <laughs> and Sentinels have destroyed it. A lovely set play from Carmen Court. Looked fantastic when they ran it in EMEA, but with three players there from Martin, bit off a little more than he could chew. And Ten's got the punish. So this does look like now a round where Sentinel should be massively favored. Magnum's positioning is the one that I'm looking at down mid, wondering if he could get some kind of flank timing to turn this round. But it does look very much like Sentinel should be favored. Should be right in the race down already onto the floor. He's caught the back head a second. And nobody in behind nobody to try to get the to trade. Follow. Oh, spray. Magnum almost there with it. Nasty, nasty stuff. So Three much players danger. moving, pivoting. 40 seconds left. Making their way over towards mid, but they're making all the noise in the world. And the Wraith is hot on their heels. He's right behind them. He's making a call for it. But he can't afford to make noise, so he's got to travel more slowly. And that's allowed Sentinels the timing to be able to get into the site. Surely somebody is going to be watching for this. Spike planted. Surely, right, but doubled up. Now, this is where the Astral could be useful. Not going to be comboed, obviously, with Martins. It's all about this crossfire setup. First point of contact close to hell. It's John QT. Boombot will clear him. And actually, Feels his position up top. Celsius takes the fight. Oh, it was all trying to distract as well for Shin to get this timing. And now I fear it is simply too late. He realizes it, not even going for it, despite the money. Obviously, two of his players still basically brought down to zero, but you can feel the tension, man. I mean, how back and forth these two teams are so closely matched. It is gutting, though, for Carmen Core. When you've been having a lot of success, letting the rounds tick down and playing for kind of late round advantages, and you decide, right, we've won three in a row, let's change stuff up and go for an aggressive play at the beginning. Ah, and that's just Martin not quite realizing that one of the players wasn't caught by the paranoia. Even if they all had been, there might still have been a bit too much there for him to deal with. But Eng is now going to call a timeout. We're headed into a tactical pause for Carmine Corp. Like I said, they tried to adjust the tempo there, but I feel like everything they've been doing in the early round, Sen have had the advantage. But it is so difficult to play patiently and slowly with their composition when you don't have a Cypher or a Killjoy or something like that giving you information. Yeah. Double Duelist, I mean, it necessitates, I think, as well, some of those aggressive plays that you see. Because otherwise, you're just you're starved of that mid-round information. You don't have a clue, really, where players might be landing. When the rounds go late, that seems to be where Carmen Court are favoured. But we are 
on to our 11th round, and this only the first time out that either of the coaching staffs has taken. Right. Yeah, playing things, you know, trusting their team, even when they were down 5-1, I believe it was, to begin this. So Eng is now going to have his input. The only head coach at this event who's won a Masters before. <laughs> Which is madness, but that shows you how new a lot of these teams, rosters, coaches are to the big stage here at Madrid. It was a very unusual qualification process. It does feel a little bit like a new era of Valorant, if indeed they can win out against the old guard, of which Sen, frankly, are kind of representing the old guard here. Sassy, Zelsis, Tens, all been to very, very, uh, very many of these Masters events or ones that happened a long time ago. Carmen Court, Young and Spry looking to try and take a big scalp early, but got to offset this disadvantage in the rounds. A flash repeat through, stun a little bit too late. Martin rips the head clean off second shoulders. And they Good decide to fight that. Way. I mean, a massive fight there, comboing the Prowlers with the Boombot, so they have even more utility to try to stop Zekin from entering. That's the first time they've actually blunted the tip of the spear. Flash connects, second one used now, Sassy, no more left available to him, Seize. That is a big Seize. Let's connect, yeah. Stops him in his tracks for just a moment. Smoke, finally. Props up, divides up the site. That's going to be putting the fear of God into them, I think. Thomas is just setting that one down, but they realize back site is going to be cleared. Planting a default spot. What's the call now for Sentinels? An aggressive play into the spawn. Paranoia, oh my, it's almost perfect. Thomas, though, he's got the escape. Planned down at the back of his head, just the TP away, heaven control, not given up at all. TP, heard by tens, breaks it. No funny business allowed. The rate already in, <laughs> leading the charge and through the back, twisting and turning tens. He's brought back up, but it's a 1v3. And now it's got to weave and dodge and juke. Diffuse being stuck by Shin, half on it already. Too much to deal with, too much to deal with. Surely it is. Looked impressive there, that's break control. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried for a moment. But Shin had it under control, and frankly, the number's just a little too much there for Tens to deal with. What a retake from KC. That's probably the first one where we've seen them have a proper execute on that. They really nicely come out of this timeout with two big plans. One to stop the early round aggression in the way that Zekin was dominating them in those first six rounds, and the other to be able to set up a clean B retake there. Cosmic Divide, the flash through with the double blast pack. Perfection. They have a chance to be able to tie this up at the half. Wouldn't that be something after that blister and pace that Sen have just come out of the gates with? But almost equalized. And with a major tool in their back pocket with regards to Narrate's ultimate. We've seen Sentinels run some of these slow rounds. And in fact, it was a bit of an eco when Narrate used his showstopper before to be able to get success. Presence. Prior conditioning by Sen here, usually there's a player following up, usually Zekin with the Trailblazer. This time, though, the Prowler not catching on to anybody until it hits Sassy. So I think they can be fairly sure that that isn't where Zekin's going for, Martin! Wow. He tries to go for the info peak, punished. I know exactly. We're about to set it up here, Neural Theft as well, so info gathered. I know this anchoring spot, but what do they choose to commit into? A call again made to just contact through. It's you do not want to give a timing here for Narrate to pop his ult. There. That's what it comes down to. Nade rebounding. Satchel's now in towards the back of the side. Shin! Nasty! Anchor in position! And that's three in a round. Rocket might not even be necessary. Narrate. Fuse running out, doesn't know where to fire it. Pre-fire into the corner. <laughs> that is ridiculous! <laughs> and now just tens. Last alive. Disconnecting, snapping the cord and the tether, the seas. Not there with a the paranoia, blind as a bat. 6-2-6 six six for Carmen Core. What a return to equalize. Incredible comeback, powered by an excellent timeout as well taken. Both of the Smokes players, I say both, I suppose. Thomas, she's also playing Smokes, but Shin and Tens up towards the top of the scoreboard. And Shin with a perfect cap put on the end of that. Absolutely impeccable stuff from the anchor in position. Now, earlier we heard from the rate a little bit before this match as well, heading into things. Let's see what he had to say.
nerves going into the match. I just think about playing the game that's in front of me and learning as I go, because obviously our team is a very young team. So it's really important for us to just learn from every match. I didn't really have any doubts about whether or not I'd make it to the international stage. For me, I don't really think about winning or losing, but me personally, like every game that we played in EMEA, I just felt like we couldn't lose. Flying here, but again, no connections. Martin towards the back. Trying to go wide here with a dizzy. No, Rate is on one, man. He's on one. Almost there for the ace, but four kills eventually shut down in the end, but seven to zero. Merci uh, to the French fans. I appreciate everybody for coming out. It's incredible that so many French uh, fans come to Madrid just to watch us play a video game. It's really an incredible thing, and uh, I can't thank you guys more. Arena certainly filling up with quite a lot of that. The cheers from the blue wall. You can hear it building, emanating. And with all of the success that Zekin had on the attack side playing Rays, now our eyes are going to look towards Nare, who you just heard from, and Martin together. The double pronged tip of the spear. Does that make it more of a fork? I suppose the coming core, <laughs> the coming core two pronged fork. But coming core's composition, the double duelist, I think it does look better on the attack side and the retakes. You know, not so much in that mid round battle on defense. But they weathered the storm. They won five out of the latter six rounds to be able to tie this one up. And now we get our second part of this big discussion. The things are even here, it resets. We know that Sentinel's retakes have looked unbelievably good. Does Kamikor offer them the opportunities? Are they able to get advantages early on? What does this half look like? Quite familiar scenes from the previous half of how slow going it was just off the rip. Bravo. All of this, all of this is all just a fake to allow Carmen Core's players to mostly try to take space on A. It's pulled back forwards. I mean, you've got four players of Sentinels looking for a reclear fight through the smoke as well, setting up for the flash through and the timing gone away. Even as it goes, two for two here. Carmen Core, in the meantime, walking away through, going to be hearing them on the ropes. And now the sound cue is betraying them. John deciding whether or not to swing, tried to find a timing, didn't quite manage it. Tens still with Paranoia, so they still have Flash Nade to be able to put pressure on these elbow players. Martin, though, is very far away. Do they anticipate this? And miles away. Could be exactly what they needed. Trip was broken. They're walking all the way in again. Tens opens himself up, just showing himself at the back. Nade rebounds. Paranoia now. Kind of connection if there is going to be any sort of follow up from behind. Oh, Martin, no he's already caught them. And it's all up to John. Low enough, dodges the flash, expecting and anticipating, but now two players to deal with. The reposition is immaculate from the rate. And with a pistol round under their belt, they're going to be more than happy with it. Yeah, great attempt there from Carmen Core. I think they looked coordinated as a team. You could see that they had a clear game plan going into it. That got disrupted a little bit by the camera. Their team was thinking about calling the audible and going to punish the players in mid. They decided, no, let's just commit to sight, play a post plan where Martin's positioning, even though he was tripped off, ended up being really important. Let's go! That pistol means so much. You were tied 6-6, six to six. you've taken the lead for, I think, the first time in this map. Feeling of control returning a little bit for Carmen Court. Too used to being on the back foot. Hasn't <laughs> happened too much, really. No, and it's another one of these rounds where we're just seeing both teams Rotate around, away from each other. The race hunting. Yeah, he's hunting. You can smell the blood in the water. Back and down, wants a little bit more as well. Just some stray warning shots popped off. It would be a major ultimate to try to get up. That's part of the reason why he's playing so aggressive. And I think the other reason is both of these teams want to play disruptive against the other team's retakes. You see them on paper. Both of these teams have ridiculous retake win percentages, especially on split. So trying to play aggressive and catch timings in the post plant, one of the best ways to disrupt that. Hello. <laughs> That's an anticipation from uh, John Cutie, though. Expecting it. Surely no danger, though, in the round. I don't believe so. I think these players are just going to look to die to spike. They do not want to start the alt cycle going for Casey. It's disciplined. It's a good call. Yeah. Not the time there. Everybody going down. Martin did actually manage to pick up a kill, but he was nowhere near getting the alt online. So this is going to be a pretty dry bonus round with some good weaponry, but no danger particularly coming from the ultimate side of things. Uh, we've seen Casey 
not really relying on too many of their set play ideas here. They threw kind of one in, uh, two, I suppose. The B retake and then that aggression with the um, Yoru ultimate and the paranoia. But on their attack side, we could still see a lot of new stuff that KC have cooked up for Masters Madrid. KC being one of the more creative teams that we've got at this event, really innovating in terms of just the compositions. Even Absolutely. ways to counter strat. Looking up through there with a the flash prowler. Right through the snake bite. They do not care, and Tens just taking a peek there from heaven. Punished. Celsus is spotted. Boombot lucky. He gets away, hightailing it, but guess what? Right behind him is Narrate. Sentinels are trying to apply pressure with these peaks in B Heaven. The first one got punished. Zelsis also looking for information, seeing if he can catch somebody. It's a little worrying here if John Cuthie gets pushed away, but Shin almost taking the fight. Here it is. Walking right into it. Good crosshair placement from Zelsis, and he recognizes it as a threat coming from behind. Satchel through! John! What is that? QT quality tactics. This man just hitting nasty, nasty shot. C's avoided. Narrowly now, but two players left to stand here for Carmen Court. Spike and in their possession. Look at this flank. This is really nice from Zekin and Sassi. It's going to be unexpected. 30 seconds left. Magnum's stuck in the middle of the map. He doesn't know where to go here. They only have 25 seconds. Wondering about 20 John's seconds. John's ready. This fight, this fight, this fight is so important. Unbelievable. He wins that. 4 HP and a dream. And now look how far away they are. They are miles away, but they know it. It's going to be planted towards B so they can get a jog on and get a move on. Oh, we but missed it. Magnum, he missed it. Has to stick it again for the plant. Luckily, time to spare. Horn thrown. That's a critical mistake, honestly. He might not have time now to reposition. Backing to the pillar. Fast through Satchel in the back. <laughs> and that's just good comms. Knowing that Magnum was that low, all adds up for Zekin to just run him down with a classic. Very well done. I'm amazed, frankly, that John was able to get both of those kills. It did look a little off from KC. As Narrate went for that blast pack peak, where was the second player? The spacing, not quite there. Now, John's aim, fantastic. And the spray control, too, to be able to pick up the second is ridiculous. But KC are going to need to have super tight play if they want to be able to keep this advantage. Crowd building up. Barrier is going to be dropping. Carmen Core fully grouped up as five. Around four, number to haunt in the TP. So, gain control. Nightfall scatters, going wide. Sassy, there is danger here for him. He's tucked in a very forward position. He's there. Follow up, yeah. He can't see or hear. Bloody thing. Narrate already into the back of the side. Magnum now with the plant, and Narrate wants to go hunting for a little bit more. This time, aware of it. Both of these teams trying to disrupt that retake potential, and it's only just equalizing now 4 2 4. How does this get played? Into the post plant, players close up into the position still with the paranoia available. Flash through, now the paranoia, it's there, spraying forwards, gate crash wide, damage done to Martin, but he still survives. Alive and kicking into the back of the side is Magnum, tucking, dodging, weaving, tens forwards. This is relentless by Sen. Really lovely play. Relying on that individual ability that's coming out from Tens and Zekin. They've been tearing apart the KC players in terms of duels taken. And you see the difference in style there. Really solid awareness to be able to punish the Ray, who went for that same piece of aggression. Something now that Sen are expecting. But in terms of just also the duels won, and Tens is swinging. Not completely alone, but certainly going to try to take the 1v1s. And they're winning them. So now the score is 8-8, eight to eight, but the economic advantage in favor of Sen. KC can't buy. Sen have ults. Primed to take the lead back. Closely matched. Such a high degree between these two teams here. Satchel. Celsius got spotted by the Prowler. Oh, yep, spotted, horned, cleared. He needs some help here. Decoy forwards, showstopper. Relieved from Zekin. That was just to try and spot that one player. He's got a timing. He's right past them. Ships in the night. All the way through Shin. Wins it out, but still the follow-up there from Tens. Hopping across the box. This man is just hunting them down. And if that fight in mid had gone slightly better, Narrate's timing might have been worth something. But now is stuck in a 1v4. They have the timing to be able to go and look for him. And they pick it up. Sentinels deal with that. It was scrappy, but they came out to the good in mid.
That was absolute chaos. But I tell you what, second and tens look amazing in those spots. When things get really messy, look at tens here. The way that he plays around all of the smokes and decides to go in aggro, he just looks really One aware and remaining. quick in these yeah. moments. Thriving. And now he's, he's going to pick up the operator. <laughs> Uh, we saw some unbelievable rounds. I mean, some what? silly rounds. One in Honestly. particular. One in particular. Oh, yeah. And here we go. Fast up mid for Casey. The raid! He's punished! Oh, he's a big player for Carmen Core, especially when he had the rocket available, but he's taken out early. Horn broken. Um, the Molly was a leader position. The Molly was amazing from Zelsis. He caught a little bit, I believe, a vulnerable onto Narei, so that he only needed half the spam to be able to take him down. Great punish. I mean, the decision making to do that so quickly and land it and not get caught with utility in your hands. Very sharp. Pressure back on KC. Yeah. Silence settling in, isn't it? Kamen Core don't really have that advantage. Maybe just hoping to fake some presence with Marty on the other side of the side, but the jiggle is good from Sassy. He gets that information now. Gets himself back. <sighs> Sentinel's not really biting that one. Already to full rotation. Coming through. But time to spare for Carmen Court. They fake and switch and pivot. And Martin has been continuing to put a little bit of pressure onto John Cutie's setup. He knows that there's a Cypher playing here. He knows where this trip is too. His clone caught it. Didn't break it, of course. Left. But he hasn't made too much noise up here. As we divide. Feels like B now, but breaking the trips as well. It's all over the place. Zelsis. Just takes a peek, take a gander. Zekin is your turn to shine. Swings out wide. There's that operator. Hello. What a surprise. 12 seconds left. There is no way in hell. Martin has any chance in this round now. Just got to give it up. Waiting at the sidelines now. And the and team going to be simmering. Economy crushed. This is where Sen are starting to pull away. And it's not based on the retake stuff. It's based on punishing, again, that level of aggression from KC. And they did win one of the previous important Spike rifle down. rounds by going for a slower paced retake, stopping their eight from getting inside that smoke. But these rounds, they've just shut Carmen Core's early round ideas down. And now Senna primed to pull away to a three round advantage, only two away from taking the map. This is where things really matter. The pressure starts to mount. And these players who are new to a stage this big, most of them, going to be listening to their coaches here, getting that input and trying to stabilize themselves. They did look a little bit shaky, I would say, in the game against FPX to open things up. I don't think it was the best performance we've seen from KC. Today looks a bit cleaner, but how are they going to perform? in the big moments, the ones that test you and add all of that mental weight. Could argue outside of that EMEA Finals, there really hasn't been anything bigger. Think about the stakes of this one. You win this series, you book the ticket to the playoffs. Not just a couple of days rest, but listen, that's preparation time. That's you going through as presumably a bit of the higher seed. And that's dodging the other sharks in the water. Oh yeah, that low. I mean, we call it a lower bracket, but I mean, they're losing teams. There are no bad teams at this event. Nah. So Casey here have some ultimates that might end up making the difference. Martin could get the dimensional drift online this round and cook something really interesting up. We're not counting Carmen Court out by any means, but Sen are favored here. And look, Zekin with the up. Yeah, adjusting. Nails a shot straight into the eight. Backing away here with the paranoia. Has to respect the TP through into the back of the site. Kamakor going to be given this one. What's the call now? Grouped up. Looks like it. Ready to try and take this fight. Shorty. Close. Flash. Satchel. Great movement. Second. He's blinded up entirely there. Couldn't see a bloody thing. And I also have another go of it. What a snap. And what an adjustment. A right before your troubles, and now the fight taken straight to them. They can't withstand it. This kind of pressure is way too much, and even Shin spotted out. Poor, poor Shin. That is an amazing round from Zekin, and the setup from the rest of his team there too. Tens throws a paranoia through for him to be able to blast back back onto them. Insane value from the blast backs. He's full blind when he decides to use the one to disengage. 
get the hell out of here. And then goes back in with the shorty. <laughs> and that's following up on that blind. Punishing so the aggression. Good. The game plans of Kami Core. Picked apart, plucked apart, the threads are unraveling. And this round, it's a must win for KC. Rifles, ults, they have it all. Now's the time to offload all of them. Got to get your head back in the game. Got to try and stand a chance. Who's but we're big enough sense defensive side here. Flash connects, giving that information forwards. Dimensional Drift going to be clearing out that site. So it gives Carmen Court the go ahead. They know it's now fully cleared out. Straight bullet, Sassy is a kill trip. Set that one up, Rocket forwards. Everybody narrowly avoiding, just dodging away from it. Fuse running out, second. Damage, big damage. Sassy though, he's regrouped and refound that angle. TP broken, no gate crash for you, but still. In the back lines here, flash repeat of Martin seeking to do some damage and take some risks, potentially tear away a couple of these players. Because they are disadvantaged. And this is Sen looking all the way now, set up for that 12th round. It's gonna have to be hero moments, it's gonna have to be individuals putting up big performances. Another flash, it's perfection, it clears them out in the open. One player left to stand, it's Shin. It's just not possible, man. There's just absolutely no way he can hold on. The Sentinel's retake utility there was perfect. There is no other word to describe it. They put pressure over towards ramp, grab a kill. They back off, they dog out through heaven. They had this kill trip to be able to set up at the start too. They then have another paranoia to layer on top of it. As they blast pack into elbow, that catches onto Martin. So many waves of things. And Casey's post plant aggression cannot find any timing. They can't disrupt it, can't stop it. The war train keeps on going. Six rounds in a row have taken Sen from losing to Matt Point. It's all in for Kami Court. This is it. Showing her hands a little bit early, forcing out the nade second. The timing for the wall, Paladin spots him! And the race finished! Run and gun! Drive by, going wide, angry in position of Sassy. A safety in numbers, and numbers are arriving! <laughs> but he doesn't need him! Sassy! This man's in a class of his own when he's really on fire. And once more, poor Shin. Left alone with the things, but that is Sentinels leading the charge and leading this series. What outrageous dominance in the second half. The first, full credit to KC. They came back into it and made a, made a go of that. They really did. But when Sen got onto defense, there was no stopping them. One of the scariest teams out there, of course. An absolutely electric first map and even more to come. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Come with a bad boy flow, bad boy flow, bad boy flow. Bad boy flow, bad boy flow, bad boy flip. Come with a bad boy flow, bad boy flow, bad boy flow. Bad boy flow, bad boy flow, bad boy flip. Come with a bad boy flow, 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 bad boy flow, bad boy flow, bad boy flow. 
Welcome back to Masters Madrid and we saw that Sentinels really were able to get that first map. However, KC, they really, um, they were, they came prepared. They came um, so uh, like with guns a blazing against Sentinels here. And I think that, you know, the, they were talking about how challenging uh, this match was going to be because Sentinels probably didn't get as much rest, as much sleep. I don't think so. But before we dive fully into map number one, we want to gauge the audience, which team has their allegiance. So spam in chat right now, as in right now, guys, Sentinels or KC. And we'll get to your votes a little bit later. But as we said, Mimi, that match, I mean, there are so many rounds that just were, were probably masterpieces in what could possibly happen on Split. Yeah, both these teams, I think, had such incredible ideas of how their opponent wanted to play this one. But to, to to me, it was really defined by the protocols, and Sentinels showed why their defense split is so good. I think something like seven rounds in a row to close that one out, Bea. Yeah, exactly. The retakes were on point. The fact that they were reading off of each other, exactly what they showed back in Americas, but actually the fact that they're able to do it here, and also the Casey is not prepared and somehow does not expect it, cannot think through that, is what surprised us, that they're still that comfortable doing it. Yeah, and I wanted to, to take a look at a round from actually the first half that, that talks about just how good Sentinels protocols are, but also, how good tense has looked on the omen. So we're going to start this one off. The situation that we're in is we're in mid and Sentinels have started off by heavy fighting here. There's been a one for one trade. And well, John QT has noticed a little something. No Sentinel on the KC composition. So instantly you see him and Tens trying to take this opportunity and find a gap to lurk into A. As we watch this one play out a little bit, that trade I already mentioned has just taken place. And now this lurk activates. John and Tens find the perfect time because you see, the second that trade happens, KC has the same idea. Players are coming back ramp, they're re-clearing this space. But as we speed up a little bit, this lurk makes it all the way through, and as you look at your map again, the players are being called back into A, actually making noise when they run through here, which means that, that KC has players ready to fight on ramp. But that's not 
the priority. Instead, it's all going to come down to this flank. I'll, I'll speed us through again so we get to this flank being activated. That's a great kill by Tenz. But now here comes Tenz's mobility when he's playing on the Omen. Kaplan talks about why they put this guy in this role because of the X factor. And we see it here. His first kill is from CT spawn fighting out into heaven. The second is teleporting here. And if you just watch the minimap as this plays out, he's going to reposition towards main, throw a paranoia towards ramp. And as we look, Shin completely blinded. And Tenz is so quickly beating that timing, getting up towards heaven and killing him. But he's not done yet. He teleports towards heaven yet again. He re-pushes into this space. And as this retake, this is cut a little bit forward in this round, as this retake is coming out from KC and Sentinels is stuck back sight, watch Tenz on that little mini map again, because he's gone all the way up towards heaven. And his third and final kill of the round is from that position. Sentinels are so good at in these chaos late rounds, finding the perfect position, setting up their players for these plays when risks need to be hap that need to be taken, but also just finding great calls on both sides of the map. Yeah, exactly. I think it is that movement that is going to characterize them. And I think that is something that they're going to need going on to Lotus, going on to that next map. Because even though Shin was a very good strongholder for the majority of their defense, giving us amazing rounds to watch, I don't think it's going to be enough and definitely shows up how prepared Sentinels was for this split. As you said, all all the weaknesses that were exploited time and time again. And those timeouts were simply brilliant, uh, brilliantly used by Sentinels. Every single time they had the response, even uh, when Eng was putting something different on the table, I think the Zekin was just brilliant with his movement and with his interpretation of what the next movement was going to be for them. Oh, look at that. We have 84% in favor of Sentinels. Wild. And I think that, you know, that crowd also agrees. I mean, we were surprised that we actually heard the Sentinels chant over there. But of course, KC fans were jumping on there as well so i think right now it could be anybody's game even as we uh, look at the fan reception right but right now it is going to be time for the aim lab shoot around so let's check in on casey shin right now by the way shin had some amazing plays and a big part of why sentinels had such a hard time against casey was this player i think that there is a couple of things that made a, that made the match and the score seem closer than it was first that crazy uh, uh second um uh pistol round that we yes. saw when Casey just had this amazing good play using the Yoru and the TP that they set up at the beginning of the round. And another one of those factors was Shin as a strongholder, as I was saying. Nememore Iconic Duo, this guy and defending B. Has he ever lost a 1v2 clutch on the B side of split? I just want to just go back to uh, uh, EMEA and watch that ace that we couldn't see. But he managed to defend time and time again. And it's so complicated. I think that also his utility coming from an Astra, when you don't have that Sentinel, there's a lot of responsibility that falls into your place. Absolutely. Uh, across that first map, both teams really had such a great read. I think they both had this idea of really forward committing to fighting in towards their, their, their opponent when they're in their post plants to stop these set retakes. And I really think that's what got KC in particular on that attacking side, right? When Zekin was going in, was disrupting these ideas. But it was the exact same thing from Sentinels. Casey had that same idea, but they managed to shut that down. They did such a good job at playing up against that forward aggression and still managing to play these set retakes. And yeah. not only that, they also managed to win, I believe, almost half or even more than half of their 4v5s. It's it's having the, the right read and the right response and what the information that you gather, even when you're uh, having one player down because of getting that information, the, 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 uh, the, the fact that they're so in sync into following onto the steps, into knowing everything that comes after, has to come into play also in Lotus. FBX showed some of the cracks that are already on that map uh, the other day, and it was not. It was only because of that crazy performance that by Narrate that they managed to close that one out. Because FBX, tr trust me, a 13-10 is not that much. And specifically, after seeing the retakes that we got from Sentinels and and how we struggle on that on the on their attacking side. Uh, I'm worried. Uh, well, uh, we're going into Lotus right now. And here, no no sur big surprises here on uh, the Asian composition. But Mimi, I think that, you know, um, definitely we're going to have our eyes on each and every one of these players right now. And, of course, the Tense Omen again. In this first half, what I'm watching is Sentinel's post-plant protocols. In their match against Heretics, what they mm -hmm. did really well was in their post plants getting forward, playing into yes. their opponent's smokes, playing little trap plays up towards heaven, disrupting those retakes. I think that's been the biggest focus 
Kings for Sentinels coming into this event. It shut KC down on map one. If they can do that again, they have a real chance to close out this series 2 out. Yeah, exactly. And for KCorp, we know how important for them is the aggression at the beginning of the round, how they're going to be uh, uh, fighting for A control time and time again. But I assume the Sentinels is going to be very ready for it. Well, let's find out if this one makes it to a map number three and send it back to your casters. Here's Bren and Sideshow. All hope isn't lost, really, if you are a Carmen Core fan. Lotus is a map where they are highly specialized on. They have shown great success in the past on this one, but they are up against Sentinels. Who, listen, there are no slouches on it either. It's the reason we were so excited about the map wall heading into this one between both of these teams. We're seeing an interesting beginning. Already, it looks like it's gearing up for a lot of aggression out towards the middle of the map. Uh, it looks like we've got a set pistol round coming out here, especially from KC. Anytime you see the Killjoy player on defense not buying utility and just going straight for the Sheriff, you're expecting something a bit pacey. KC trying to take tempo right at the beginning of this round. Walking up with the paranoia prepped, trying to take the fight to send. No signs of life, John. Oh, the timing there. Yeah. If that had been a tad earlier, KC probably would have stayed to try to take the fight. But now they're anticipating that John's calling a reaction. And they've read it correctly. The desk, sorry, the desk was talking a lot about mobility, Brandon. I feel like that's going to be key on both of these attack sides. I think with mobility comes confidence. You have to be confident to be able to make that play. Trust the call, take the swing. And so far, that's been one big area where Sen are looking better. It's been missing a little bit for Carmen Core. Maybe a symptom of, as we've already mentioned, a new guard versus the old guard. Sentinels have got some experienced players. So do Carmen Core, don't get me wrong. Magnum himself was shut down his hopes and dreams in a Reykjavik 2021 Grand Finals by Tens himself. So now we see it, a bit of an explosion. The pivot here over towards B. Open sight line at eight. Ooh, chunk load of damage. Has to back away and respect the nade now. And that's Ooh, their star player. Plant. Spike planted. There's no heals online as well. No chances there for him to get top back up. Contact call by Carmen Call right behind them. That's three players. Looking to set their sights on the link. Distraction plays with the Prowler, peeking Sassy. Is that wide? Probably too much in terms of the connection. Ezekan taking the time here to reposition up towards heaven. What a call made. Still near sighted, blinded up, but narrate. He will fall. That prior damage done. Clearing him out into the site. It's getting dangerous. It's getting dicey. A little bit all over the place here. Damage just wandering right into him. Celsius definitely doing it here with the players. Tickling down a wide face of Zelsis. There's no time left whatsoever for Carmen Court. He struggles here, the opening. And again, look at how mobile Sentinels are in these post-plant situations. They got into an uncomfortable spot and immediately, Zekin calls to push Heaven, 10 smokes it. It's a weird smoke, one that they can dominate, not your standard smoke. They get inside of it very quickly and set up the on split to be able to win the post plant and secure a pistol. So neutralizing that early round aggression and playing a dynamic post plant that looked superb. You can only go for those plays if you're feeling really confident and very in sync with your teammates. I think that's been a clear difference today for Sen. And one to keep an eye on. I don't actually think that Martin can swing through this gap between the turret and the wall. He can jump it. Can he? Can he squeeze his little legs through? Yeah, he's, he he's through, he's past it, but Celsus is watching, yeah. Very aware of it. Now the door opens wide, so this is sends protocol to clear through. See, oh my, okay, could have got dangerous. It's all good though, nade. Watch the top of the air wide, take your pick. Do you die to the nade or do you die to us? And now just Shin left standing. I feel like I've been saying that quite a bit, but it is the eco round in early days yet for Lotus. Still, two in a row now for Sen. They got the expected one with four players surviving. We're expecting this to be a pretty attack-sided map. Can I get a drop? Sentinels versus Heretics, that's exactly what we saw. Right, Heretics got up to a really big lead. I think it was an 8-4 half, something like that. And Sen were able to bring it, bring it back. Incredible attack sides, and both of these teams have been good in that situation. So, it's not over for KC if they can't build some momentum here in the first half, but it is going to be very difficult for morale, for the way that they approach the map, for their confidence. Well, pushing through with a prowler. Next wave of util here. Paranoia and a satchel. 
Only grant some access to B main. The rest of the map not really being played. In fact, Carmen Corder wants to have taken a few liberties out towards a rubble. John hoping to spot it out at a jump spot, but there's a lot to account for. There they is. Hit jump spot. Yeah. Wow. John not even really aware of the fact that they could have walked all the way back up there. So first kill. In that direction. Similar scenes for Sentinels here, just to try and clear through the front section. C mound. I mean, look hotels. how deep Tens is. I mean, he's going walkabouts. He could win this round for them despite being down 4v5. Way behind them. They don't seem to be aware of this at all. There's Not even slightly. There's been a gap in the defensive protocols, and they need to force these players out wide. The damage being done to them. The raid looking to the side. TP. He missed the teleport. Mr. TP Shin! He catches him. Judge in the face second. It's a trade by every part of the definition. Prowler forwards, jumping, <laughs> damage. The shot's going wide, second! There's no <laughs> way he's getting away with that. <laughs> I love the attempt, though. I really respect it. it. It felt like there was serious danger in that round. T the timing that Tens found was extraordinary, and I think possibly one of the reasons why John got a misread on what was the defensive setup looked like and just ended up dying. That's the unfortunate play, though. Two of the players both got seized there towards the back of the site. Shin and Narate. And Tenz, he just missed it. You can see the frustration there. I mean, he was absolutely dominant Time map one, so he expects to be able to win those. On the way he's back up on either side. This time, Carmen Core more keen to fight overseas, man. Look at it setting up with the yeah. paranoia and a few players. Trying to deny the ult orbs on both sides of the map. Good plan, but well, Magnum's just out wide like that. There's no return of fire from Thomas. He can't take the fight and stand his ground, not with the Odin. Oh, he's going to try and get in behind the showstopper engage here instead of being a, a vulnerable victim on site. Could be the danger zone still. Showstopper! Thomas, he can't hit it. Spraying through near sighted with the Prowler. Second Forcer just fired a rocket blindly. Two players down now for Carmen Court. Do you really still choose to take this one, or do you choose to take the save? They're looking, hoping for a bit more. That's uh, an odd one. Bouncing off the tile or something, but the orb still does the job. Cuts off that one sight line, and now it has to be the call, surely. I think you've got to save here. Yeah, you have to. They look like they're still sticking around, though. They want to make a go of it. The economy on Shin and Tomasi is just not good enough to be able to go for this one, I don't think. No, no. Now they're backing away. And that's a, a huge win for Sen here. Sen, by the way, getting into their very standard post-plant setups, where they have Zekken up top. So they often tuck somebody in towards the box. They have a one-way smoke as well. And you can see here, that, that really is the crucial duel, when Sassy is able to get that pick onto Tomashi. Oh, yeah. That's the real one that matters. It's astounding as well. I mean, the consistency with Zekken frying just builds up these ults like it's nothing. Yeah. Absolutely, and you could see that the clear game plan there from KC was we're going to fight over all tops on both sides of the map. So they had a triple player over towards C, fighting very heavy for mount control because that's where they expect Sen to start the round. And then they had a crossfire setup, but it just ended up with Magnum kind of wandering around in the open. He missed the timing, didn't tuck, couldn't play the cross with Tomashi properly. Ended up giving away his life a little too freely. And Zekin has started this map much as he started the other one, dominating. Just rolling. A fight to contest over the A rubble control. Sentinel's happy to concede it. So Kamikor gonna just place Shin into that forward angle. He's gonna be getting a lot of mid-round information for his team. Lots of juicy tidbits that Magnum could use for some potential calls. These are the situations on defense where it's so difficult to get a read on where the attacking team is going to end, especially if they have a really competent IGL like John Cudi. So this is going to be a lineup to try to clear out Shin if he was playing behind Rubble or on top of it. But Shin is playing that jump spot angle a little further forwards. So he's not really going to get caught by this. Might even get value. I mean, he's he in a very really exposed spot. Really pressing forwards now has to respect it. I mean, he was just trying to get ahead of the wall. So they couldn't lurk out, but now backing away. A few stray shots. And this is where KC start to lack information. 45 seconds. They know that Sen might be pressuring A. But are they really there? Is it a fake commitment? Crossfire. Not even quite. I mean, Martin's just trying to play, weaving in and out of this wall, see if he can get that time with the door. It looks gates. like a fake. I mean, Martin's seen that there's nobody really pushing off the back of this. Yeah, it's not really going to be calling as well for the rotations here. Paranoia forwards. Martin can't do the same moves as Ekin was doing. Not in that last map. Can't get out of it with the satchels. Is this going to end B? Straight into Shin. Shin! 
Could have been a difference maker, might still be. With only 12 seconds left, they've really just got to get a move on into the site B. Plant, Magnum, forwards, pressing oh! forwards. The players, they're dropping all over the place. The time pressure, maybe just get into them. Nerves getting frantic for Carmen Core. Those are the kind of confidence moments that I'm talking about, where it feels like Sen are very strong in those kind of spots. You see second or tens in a situation like that, they're taking the swing, they're taking the fight. Feels a little more tender, tentative from KC, and they're getting caught out. A half clearance by Magnum. And it does look like that at the moment. You see Zen, Zen are fired up. They believe that they have had the most difficult run. I mean, the, their run through kickoff, through the play-ins, their run here, fighting against Heretics, then fighting against Carmen Corp. Two big, heavy hitters coming Massive up from heavy. EMEA. You've got to think as well, I mean, you've got two of those teams in the EMEA. It's only EMEA and Americans who are winning the titles. Yep. Two of the potential strongest teams at this event they've had to go up against early. And Kaplan clearly not happy in the interview at the arrival and having to be last out first in I and mean, not having I, that prep time. I saw him at breakfast, I don't think he got sleep. No, I mean, he's come in here and I feel like the whole team has just got an aggression about them. Yeah, they do, they do. I mean, they're fired up. There's a certain rage about it with the way that they're carrying themselves in this one. They are determined. Doesn't matter how many obstacles you throw up in their face. Doesn't matter if you give them the number one seed, the number two seed of EMEA, they don't care. They're on a war path right now and their goal is the playoffs. I remember, this map tends to be attack-sided, so they need to be stacking up as many rounds as they possibly can. Kamen Kora, no slouches. Assuming that KC don't get uh, mentally boomed here, they will still probably put up a good attack side themselves. So you can't let off the gas. What is this cooking? Okay. Fast play, paranoia. But Sen don't bite. They no. don't go for an aggressive uh, reaction somewhere else around the map. They're playing it slowly. So many players from Sentinels are close to these alts uh, coming online as well. The lockdowns one away, the pit two. Kills or orbs, grand them in. Come across, of course, back end of the timeout, holding onto mound. Paranoia only clearing the one side, nade as well. Through, there's a couple of kills collected on either side, yet it's still Sentinels. Out on top of that one, whether the weaponry or otherwise, but they've got the protocols, they've got the aim, sharp as anything. The two players that were dominating the duels on split, Tens and Zekin, just continue. <laughs> Anytime you see them in a duel, obviously here it's against the Sheriff, but it just has tracked all series long. You see them taking a fight, you expect them to win it. The way they're swinging it, you know they expect to win it too. Yeah. It's been monstrous. Yeah, there's none of that swinging into crowd spray, uncertainty with your aim, with your own abilities. It's just decisiveness. It's all been there. Yeah. But they expect to be winning every single fight. And look at it swarming the last two remnants here of Karma Court, five to one. And I know we've already mentioned, listen, it's an attack side of map. Everything points towards it so far. All the data, doesn't matter what changes they made on Lotus, it still points into that direction. There are still chances as much as that feels right now, like there's nothing really going for Carmen Court. The question is just how many rounds do they really need to get online on the defensive side? Why? Uh, we don't know that, <laughs> right? Sen didn't look like they put together too much defense on the last time that we saw them play Lotus, but their players were still good enough in the game against Heretics to give them rounds every now and then, which was more than you saw on the other side. They're a very dangerous team. Even if they're getting outplayed in the macro, or even if the map doesn't lend itself to, uh, you know, one side or the other, they're still going to find those win conditions. And here, you have huge ults up for both teams. KC, Eco swing round. They have to invest all of their ults to try to win this one. Time to play close here because he's got the showstopper. There it is. Beef Prowler. on the movement. Acknowledge, yeah, beef on the movement. Massive one, in fact. He sees Tevard to the spot, rooted down. Won't be getting value with that. In fact, the second one to take a refine into That's this. That's wild. That Lucas, is wild. The need, unfortunate. And I said beef on the movement, but I think second threw a blast pack to disrupt that, and the seas came through afterwards as well. A little bit unlucky towards the end there. I think that nade was meant to be tucked into the corner. But I mean, amazing reaction instantly from Sen oh, to stop course. that from finding any value. And they've neutralized the threat again, slowed the round down, denied information for KC, and now they can go wherever they like. 
careful through the site. That's one trigger onto it. So they're going to know that at least there's one play there. That's Thomasy! Time to shine, son. Time to step all the way up, and he certainly has done so. Still in control of Tree. Here's the pivot being called. Door broken, Haunt forwards, rotations abound. Breaking it through now with a paranoia to really set that one up. Shin giving them this space. Locked down. Going to be committed. Close towards it with 15 seconds to spare. Is there any attempt by Carmen Do They want to get aggressive into it. Looks like they're going to give them that space and now planning for a retake of their own. This pit could allow, yeah, John Cutie's going to commit pit here, and this can allow them to get back into the site and help them flood. Lockdown. Stop the lockdown from really finding too much value. We'll see. Even Tense as well, holding the TP as well, making sure they can get straight back into the fight. He's forwards into the corner, barely expecting it, but it's traded almost rapidly on the approach of counter pit. Online, layers it forwards in common court. They've got the players, they've got the bodies. They just need the win, and they're going to get it. The round going their way, finally. Feels like it's been a bloody long time at that, but that second one is on the board for them. And they took a lot, don't get me wrong. A lot of ultimates had to be expended. Yeah. Send media extremely expensive, and I think that's the silver lining to KC winning the round there, if you're looking at it from the perspective of Sentinels. But a lot of ults being drained on both sides. This play, though, it just wins the round. Oh, yeah. Right? They're hoping that Tomashi is going to be passive in this situation, is going to respect the nightfall, worried about being pushed from one angle. No, he holds his ground, steps up when his team needs him, and puts one on the board. We'll see more of that. Show me a bit more fire, Carmen Core. Come on. Satchel's through for Zekin. It's faster than the double satchel. Both being used to oh, punish potentially. All oh, from Tenzi's just taken out. Completely punished. Bullet to the Dharma is all it takes. And yeah, that's the oh, punishment of sticking that one. I suppose he thought it was clear. Door opened up, rotating now, calling. Pivot, getting a move on, out towards the seaside. Now it is entirely open. Util still going to be used to clear it. There was a seas and a nana swarm. It's going to be completely given up, in fact. Now the question is, what kind of post plant aggression do we see here from Sen? I felt like on split, their post plant aggression was timed well. They played together. A little more sloppy for KC. Here, you see John with a bit of a timing. A bit of a timing, but he might just miss it here. There's a nightfall as well. Boombot forwards, nightfall. The sound cue is going to be missing from a few of these players. Elsis is in a one and done position. Blinded. Satchels. Martin barely grappling onto that one. A satchel forge just in case. Cuts it up. And now everybody playing from mount. A backwards position, but smoked off. Immaculate stuff from Shin. Almost going down to the spray. Down here. Damage done, but the bullets flying through. And true for Carmen Corn. The rate. Oh. Able to stick this half. 1v2, 1v2. Not sticking it. Out wide. And the patience played by Carmen Corn. We'll get the job done. That's more like it. That's what you got to see from KC when they were playing in EMEA. Coordinated on the retake. I was worried just for a moment when they lost track of where the final player was and one went to check Waterfall of the other mound. But they got the play there. The punish under Tens through a snake fight Nano Swarm to stop the rest of the team coming in, isolate Tens, get the swing and punish. Very nice from KC. And they follow up. Two rounds back to back now puts KC in a much better position. And the ults still nowhere near for Sentinels after that huge explosive round in round seven, where both teams utilize the entire war chest. Follow up from the Prowlers, just a handshake there, front section of B. No real aggressive map control other than Shin. He's holding close to Mount, refreshing the one way. He's going to be able to TP out of dodge if there is any danger. Now you can see pings here, though. They're getting ready to put pressure B and actually crush this C setup. Shin has got to be so worried about this. That's why he's holding it. Paranoia, but still, it's going to be coming from multiple angles in the end. Does have the TP. Forwards! What a call! That's Martin confident. just swinging right through, and the rate follows it up. And listen, there's no one else watching for it. That was the danger there if he ended up losing that fight, but it don't. It's exactly right, Josh, what you were calling for. That confidence is back, and it's boundless right now for Carmen Court. Opportunism, looking to take the timings, even if they're not playing together. KC find themselves in another 5v3, very similar to round seven. Easy as it goes, forwards, past it, tens. Tethered to the floor, can't see his Elsa's just to watch his teammates back. He can be trusted with that at least, but will fall. Spike, dropped out in the open. 2v4, make it a 1v4, John. No chance whatsoever here, he's on the opposite side of the map. With only 20 seconds left, will be the save. Yeah. KZ finding that mid-round aggression. Sure, the previous was taken 
with that punish onto tens, but they found themselves the player advantage situations so many times in the last three rounds. That's one of the biggest reasons why they're able to actually win them. They're able to find a double kill that comes out from Tomashi, then they get the punish onto tens, and in this round, it was such a nice audible called by Martin there and Narate, deciding to take the swing through, using Shin almost as bait over towards C. It's pre-planned or called on the fly. Shin was completely alone on C. I mean, this team is big brain enough that they might have set that up as a bit of a fake there, like, oh, look, we're playing mound, come and punish us. Either way, lovely setup by KC. And you were asking a question earlier, Bren, as we go into this Sentinels timeout. How many rounds does KC need on their defense side? Because this is generally an attack-sided map. And I think now that they've got four, you're feeling relatively comfortable, even if Sen take all I mean, the rest. At minimum. A4 half, you can definitely come back from that on Lotus. You, come over there. you need things to go right for you, obviously. You need, you know, either a pistol or to start rolling with the rifle rounds and get the ults online. It's not a given. <laughs> But there is actually reason to celebrate for the KC fans right now. I'm not even watching a game. I mean, obviously, there's not a game going on right now, but they're all facing away from the screens. I respect it, man. They don't even, they don't need to look. They are the loudest ones in the building, and they are taking up probably one eighth. Maybe that. Yeah, the loudest per capita. But there's a lot of Sen fans here, too. There are. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that the desk through the uh, KC versus Sentinels on the English broadcast, yeah. by the way, <laughs> just ruining yeah. the KC fans. Yeah, what do you expect? Oh, only 15% uh, only of you think KC is going to win. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, do that in Camino's chat, see what happens. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Telling you, probably 100%. But Zekin now has a judge. Does this mean we're getting into something a little more pacey? It's got pro ass that double satchel plays can really take the space quite rapidly this time again a lot of players are coming court grouped up behind mound looking to try and fight this one eager in fact that one prowler Prowler's makes them think that it's going to be the split push again the door they're trying to get proactive just in case to punish those players yeah nice idea as well shin using his second smoke but here we go follow-up fight now he doesn't have a smoke for the one way here paranoia is excellent they're all grouped up right towards the back tp on top that's Tens. amazing this man is terrifying what an angle to find all the way forwards, Judge in hand, Shin. It's away with it, still. Reinforcements arriving, the rate can't withstand it though, the pressure. It's too much, it's immense. This man is a thing of nightmares. The mobility, the confidence, both oh working in tandem. He's on for the ace. Give the people what they want. One left standing, the counterpart on the omen. He knows Shin is around, he knows Shin is lurking. <laughs> Shin just tucking to spoil the clip. <laughs> 10 and 4. What a demon. You saw that the counter paranoia there thrown from Shin pushed back the rest of Sentinels. Nobody else was able to get the punish in that kind of way. But then when Tens teleports up top, he's not been caught by it. Everybody else is blind. It is shooting fish in a barrel. And it really is terrifying what Tense is able to do on Omen. It's, it's fit him like a glove, this new role. Oh, yeah. That's how you know he's different from 2021. Not just the agents being played, man, but he didn't play for the clip. That's <laughs> <laughs> very true. Keep the rifle going. I mean, that round, there was still a little bit of danger, right? I mean, Shin got the pick onto Tens. If Narate had been able to punish Tens too. Oh, sorry. Shin got the pick onto Zekin. If Narate had been able to punish Tens, maybe KC could have come out with something. Two more rounds. Cofany is building here in the Madrid arena. A Sen fight for rubble control, something they have not been doing very much of. Zelsis quite far away. His lockdown could be a large entry piece of utility, but they could also save it for post, as Zekin now had Showstopper online too. All right, with a swing. Let's see what they end up using. What? Now, that is going to tell Zekin as a player oh. that... Oh. <laughs> Decided not to use the ult, though, just taking space on site. There's a chance of it. Everyone setting up from Carmen Core side. Backwards, spots ahead, vulnerable. You should run. Look how nicely, though, they've saved all of this utility for the post-plant here. Sure, the spike isn't down just yet. 
but they're anticipating the fact that KC are going to be playing retake because of the ults, and the the threat is more dangerous than the action. Fine time off the clock. Second, here's it. Footsteps. Sancho. Oh, the way, Magna. Nasty shot. Nasty business. Here, tens. Will fall. Perfect. Magnum through the back now in a side control gained here close to the corner. Shin instantaneous with it. The trade sticking now. Tom is he onto it, but destroyed. Spam through the smoke. Two players caught. Surely that's the fuser now. Another tap from Magnum, but it's just him. 1v1. Him versus Zelsis. Sticking half on it all the way through to the fuse. Zelsis puts him to bed. Little bit of danger again there as KC started to get that retake working. Really lovely the follow up on the paranoia and Martin's entry through, but Sen stay solid. So many of these post plants are set up with two layers from Sentinels. A few players playing further forward to draw all of that utility, and then a few players further back playing the spam the spam game. You know that we see the same thing when it's planted over towards C. You have tens in a more advanced position on top of the box. A few players playing out towards Mount. Yep. It works all across their map pool, and we're straight back into things. No early fight over towards Rubble, though. KC dominate that area early on, open the door, and that is going to tell John right at the beginning that it was heavy Rubble control. But they didn't use a nade. There was no signs of life from Martin, so they might think it's only two. Expecting perhaps to call that pivot here on either side. So you can see it, the territory being slowly gained. Sassy taps the orb. Once the rest of his team's got ready, that's Nightfall online. Here it is. Through with a Nightfall, Prowlers. Chin the targets, a few of them are broken in time here. Now potential for the retake. Still that danger with a showstopper in the oh. back. Pocket, no way! That's just spam. The rate, finding it onto tens. Beautiful first kill for them, and this is going bad to worse, really, for Sentinels here. They still can't get a, a safe plant down. Util flying through along with the rocket, Martin. Unfortunate, really, not to get that one. Satchel through into the back, pushing his teammates right into forwards. Magnum is there, collapsing, colliding, spraying them all through. John QT, he's got so much to deal oh. with here. No more bullets, Unbelievable. right click, but everyone's there to collect it out. And so a 7 5 half, Carmen Court, a sneaking suspicion that they're going to be happy with it. Very happy. That's an extremely solid defense side, powered by those retakes. I mean, don't let the the technicality fool you. They flooded back in there using their same retake setups and the timing for Magnum to swing around the side when the rest are putting pressure up on top, it all worked really well. Signs of life from Carmen Court. Really excellent stuff on their retakes all around here. Still a steady lead for Sentinels. A steady lead, I should say. Let's send it down to the floor with an interview with some special guests. Down on the floor, and I'm joined by Mama Zekin and Mama Tens. Give it up for the parents. Los Madres. Uh, Mama Zekin, you have, you were, we saw you in Americas cheering on your son. Now you're here in Madrid cheering on your son. How does it feel to be able to travel the world and support your son as he pursues his dream? I feel like I'm the happiest mom in the world. Woo! Amen to that, sister. I love that. And Mama Tens, I found out this is the first time that you've ever watched your son play on stage. How has the experience been, all the fans here in this building? Uh, it's been amazing, incredible. It's a dream come true. I met so many amazing fans of his. I'm going to cry. No, oh, it's OK. It's OK. Guys, give it up. Give it up. Wonder it's a beautiful thing, for sure. Have you been enjoying Madrid? Yes, it's beautiful here. First time to Europe. First time to Europe. First time to Europe, everybody. Wow. All right. Mama Zekin, how has the Madrid experience been for you as well? Mi amor en Madrid. Woo! I mean, she's the best hype man in the biz right here, baby. Let's just send it back to the cast and get this party rolling. <laughs> Give it up one more time, guys. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> that is one hell of a way to get the crowd on your side. Do we need to pick her up for the uh, for the broadcast? Yeah, <laughs> a bit of crowd work. Yeah. Oh my Keep that Golden is Boy off. That I want to see excellent. grand finals. <laughs> Mama Zekin out there hyping up the crowd because I mean I'm I'm loving the hype though because this match is delivering so far. Oh, yeah. We got to see excellence from Sentinels when it came to split. It was close in the first half and then they pulled away. And I think Casey 
may have done enough here to feel confident going into the second half of Lotus. Doesn't mean they're going to win. Doesn't mean they're even favored. But when you look at what's on the board, five rounds on defense, normally KC very good on attack. You've got to be feeling good. Definite chances. Stay in the series. They have a chance of things here, but players are grouped up and they're meeting side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Prowler will afford anything. Right into the face. There's a satchel. Martin, not even with a shorty, but he will go down. And Anna Swarm's tearing him to shreds. And KC decide not to commit off the back of that. Certainly, Sentinels getting surprised by how deep KC got before the trap play was punished. But there are a lot of players still here on the C site. That noise re hit. The danger is still here. Like I said, players anchoring into the seaside. Zekian holding into the corner. What a peak. It's a common core. Classic! And they've just got it. Look at themselves. Dodging and weaving out of the woodwork is what it feels like. Really nice. All of that fundamental prowess that we saw from KC being demonstrated here. Certainly warming up into the tournament. Starting to showcase the strengths of what made them a team to be feared. This pistol round was a great call coming out from Magnum. As long as they can secure things, and John Cuties denied the miracle. They'll be feeling, again, really good about their chances. Let's have the tools for it. I mean, a lot of players weak the rate chooses to put an end to it. So, pistol round should, you know, as long as things go correctly, end up being that 7 7 equalization. Oh. Yeah. And that's Magnum that actually gets the kill there, but. There are so many little set plays that we saw from KC when they were playing in EMEA, things like that. Doubling up and setting up, you know, maybe a high-low setup or a jump peak, and the second player swings in. Now we see Magnum picking up the Outlaw, actually. Nobody on send binding armor, of course. Not going for that force buy. A few pieces of util. And how many times have we seen this in the series? No real possibility for the team that lost the pistol to do anything because both teams just kind of rotate around each other. Yeah. I feel like every time a team's won the pistol, we've seen this in this series so far. Dodging that variance. Roaming around the map like a pack of wild animals. Free sight for Carmen Court. Plan of a mound control. Yeah, and a great plan. And now, once you get the plan down this easily, you, can, you have the mental bandwidth to start thinking about how do we optimize our alts. Right, so do we want to try to load them into Narrate because he's already halfway? Do we want to try to prioritize Martin, perhaps? These kind of things you can really start to ponder. But there is still pressure here onto Tomashi. In fact, Senna committing utility into this. He thinks they really did purchase and buy. They've squeezed the players out towards mound. Time ticking away, running short. Free clearance called by Carmen Core. So, right through the back there. And Sentinels realize that there's really no chance of this. They're making another call now, moving their way forwards. And I think just looking to try to die to spike here. But Sassy is going to take a little bit of a timing. Plays a call down in the open. They're going to be able to die to the spike. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, really successful there, to be honest, from Sentinels. Not allowing KC to get close to any of the large ultimates. And that's very important. Lotus, I think, more than any map in the pool right now, is so alt cycle dependent, especially when it, with it being attack sided and both orbs being accessible to the attackers too. It's a mixed bag of a buy though for KC. They've come into this bonus with some unusual weaponry. I'm interested to see if Magnum can get anything done with this outlaw. He's the sole player holding back the A push, and Sen have committed four players to dominating that fight. Yeah. All players with light armor, too. Lots yeah, that's to a great point. From. Great point. Four players that would die in one shot to Magna. There's an extra danger. So you can see the decision making being used here by Carmen Court. The smoke setup as well just allows them to hide plate. Not quite an anti flash position, but at least hiding from the initial haunt. If there is a core from Sentinels to refi when the orb is tapped. Loading up the alt orbs onto the rate, making sure that Nightfall gets online. You can see the pings over towards Rubble, pointing out the three main positions that somebody like Tens would be playing if they got him posted up in an aggressive spot. So they're going to go through the motions there, making sure that they clear all of these angles. There is nobody home whatsoever on A. 
It's a weird one. Look at this. I mean, back and forth as the call's going for Carmen Core. Looks like there's a lot of uncertainty. I mean, Senna basically just playing rotate through spawn right now. They're, they're not trying to, you know, anticipate this so much as just rotate. No way. Don't know what gave that one away still. It's a kill. Well, Sentinels, first kill going their way. Never They've anticipated this pivot. Up. Yep, they're looking for it and expecting it. Out towards B, smoke still up into heaven. What's the call going to be here? With only 15 seconds left, the chance really to try and fight them aggressively. Haunt, broken, Boombot now, 11 seconds plan. Finally going down, but what is the fight? Yep, right through. Seize, no connection. Second! Oh, the hopes and dreams torn away in this round. Shin wrapped and caught. Cheeky flank timing. Destroyed. No. Not getting away with that. That was a really bizarre round, though. Sen were rotating through spawn off noise cues, off reads, and just trying to stack the correct position where KC would end. They're not worried about leaving holes because they're just trying to be hypermobile around the map. That can really bite you. If you're planning to play defense like that, sometimes if the attacking team just cuts noise, you, you're just running around having no idea where things are going to end. But the reads there from Sen were perfect. They got the right call on what KC were going every time. Let's go, boys. Good job. No damage on that bonus. Yep. yep. Really good job, boys. No damage, but a healthy buy on either side. Vibes Merchant making sure everything is in order. Here we go. TP4 is dashing across here. Sees Nade. Everything being combined. Shin surely goes down. He gets no a kill on second. How's that happened? How has he managed that? He was caught dead to rights inside the Sees Nade. To almost single digits. Evacuation called. Tens. Backs away. So listen, call up the cartographer. Fire lines being redrawn. But giving up space entirely of Rubble, not even posting the player up deep onto A. Cowan Court giving it up. Certainly very willing to rotate around the map themselves on the attack side. And Sen now a bit frozen in place, expecting this to be an A re-hit. Even when Sassy doesn't really spot anything over towards Rubble. Zelsis has all the utility here, but he is just one man. He's caught here still with the Odin. It's a very big gun and a lot of targets to really choose and be down spotted. Beaming, he does! But the Molly's into the back. He had no clue about it. Snake bite. Everything being utilized on top of it. Ruins his day there, but still getting two. The position he was in. Pretty miraculous. He's made it an even job for Sentinels on this retake. Four position of Magnum. He's hoping for an easy kill, maybe even a cheap one. One way smoke has to force out that paranoia early. So Magnum, he's done his job. Pulling out that util early. Now back away with the rest of his team so we can play side by side. Shoulder to shoulder. Sentinels. This is Carmen Core. Comes down to the fundamentals. Comes down to the aim. The battle being won. The Sentinels in charge of it all. A 3v3 post plant where KC, in theory, could have planted anywhere, could have positioned anywhere, and Sen still got the site so easily. Bundling up the KC post planters into a tiny corner and landing that snake bite onto them after Ten's TP'd in behind the orb. This, amazing that Zelsis gets two out of that situation, but it basically just equalized part of the luck that Jin, I think, getting away with Last it at the start of the round. Yeah. But it's that snake bite combo there with Tens being able to swing on top of it. It just looks really claustrophobic from KC in the post punt. They kind of gave Sen too much space there to do whatever they wanted. But that is two huge rounds in a row from Sen. One to make sure that they didn't take any damage from the bonus round, and the other to knock the economy of KC. If we're talking about Lotus being attack side, being momentum based, well, Sen have just stolen all of the wind out of KC sails. Essentially, back to back gun rounds being won from the retake protocols. Not just that, I mean, they've earned themselves up to some pretty serious alts. Utility and kit looking nice and clean for Sen. They've got a showstopper. Zekin's not having a world-class game, don't get me wrong, I mean, he's sitting at 9 and 12, but he's doing his job and he's doing it well. Yeah, I feel like, though, Tens has been that guy. Oh, yeah. From map one to map two, Tens' performance has been amazing. When they need him to get aggressive, like, for example, in that retake, you know, John Cutie survives on the other side of the map, there's a Viper Orb up in the middle of sight, they pop it up, that allows Tens to only focus on one angle, teleports forward, takes the one fight, again, fighting off the back of John's utility, Bada bing, bada boom. He can do it all. You need an omen entry? Call me up. <laughs> that's, that's tense, man. He's looking awesome. He really is.
Fight over C early. Again, the same smoke, but it is that weaker by Carmen Court. And you either need a really good set play to be able to push this one across the line, or you're looking to try and, you know, do damage to the economy and draw out ultimates. Certainly B is the best site to fight with these more close-range weapons, like Magnum Stinger and Martin's Judge. They haven't cleared Mag oh. Martin. Oh, wait, hands! Adjustment of a lifetime. Snappy and precise, a bit later towards the end, but I'll get the job done there, 10 to 7 I, I mean, that was wild. Martin was just stuck in the corner with a judge there, but he got blinded up, and I don't think he realised that people were pushing through the door on him. Yeah. He probably had a couple freebies, but a yeah, great adjustment from the fans of the tent. They completely neutralised that round. This very reminiscent, actually, of one of the earlier rounds that we saw from KC, where Martina, Mag uh, Martina Nare pushed out through B, trying to find that timing. And here, Sentinels on defense, being proactive, clearing out that area in the mid-round and catching KC before they could set up. Damien Kaur aiming to win that fight out, but they don't actually have anything planned for the Hawks. Potential mistake there. Lots of pings to a variety of players. Damien Kaur, though, not dissuaded. Now with a nightfall. It's going to scatter. Low forwards here, Zelts is getting tagged, same with John QT, they're not going to know how close these players potentially are with the alarm bot being broken, season to the back of the site, they really don't have a clue, Zelts is spraying away and praying, just hoping that the reinforcements arrive, but he backs himself into a deeper position, tucked to the back, still danger, vulnerable, Ooh. no way in hell, second showstopper, oh, but this player's right behind him, they don't have a clue, shut down, close. To the corner is Shinley surviving, keeping his team alive in this round. It could go in any direction. And the rate is still struggling to get the plant down. Some of these fights, the way it goes, I mean, flip a corner, a better chance of guessing. Still up onto the ropes, that's Shin. Forwards. Do Sen expect it? Do Sen expect it? Do they expect it? They do not, John. Brought down. Angles watched. Forwards now. Sassy, keen to take the fight, keen to trade it out. Through the box, though. Couple of straight bullets, and Sassy's dropped down! Everybody watching, and eventually the adjustments are there. Well, that one was dangerous for Carmen Corp, but they come out on top. Magnum's position in pit ended up being so important. But there were moments all throughout that round where things could have flipped in either direction. So much of it coming down to timings that they find on one another. This, for example, not even a half clear from Zekin in that corner. Too many positions to try to guess at. Great aim from Magnum there. Big readjustment. Pulls KC back within two. And they can start here to work some of their ults and start to build a bit of an economic cushion. It's be the win con. One away, Martin builds it up. Has the rocket. Prowler, Boombot. Let's wave for Util to dissuade it with the Nana Swarms, both of them being deaded. And Celsius putting the Odin to good work. Look at that. Spraying through into the angle. Timing. Both double swinging through, but they're vulnerable enough now. The nade goes flying forwards. The connection. Celsius couldn't withstand it. Now with the lockdown as well, you have to respect it. Sassy's overstaying as well, can pray in that somebody would open himself up into that sideline. The plant for mount this time, instead of the more claustrophobic one on site, allows KC to play two layers of this, and they still have Martin's showstopper to work with. Surely they win it. Well, it's incredibly favoured. At least with the odds. Horns. What's the back? Sentinels are already in. So stopper, no one to break it. Couldn't let loose with the prowl of the fuse burning away. Half into it, it's a gamble. John QT, he finds it, still four versus four. What other util do they really have? They've got to play it side by side. Time working against them. Paranoia tens, went in for the timing, flips the switch, and now moves forward for Sodu Carmen Core. Sodu Carmen Core in complete control of the front section of the site, and a decision is made for him. John QT hightailing it out of there. Well played by KC, adapting to what Tens was trying to go for. Sentinels, you could see, were expecting KC to have already fallen back to mound. They thought that they had the site roughly for free as soon as Martin got picked off after using his showstopper. That was not the case. Both teams really messing with expectations. And it's Celsius, a headshot through the wall there that actually sets up the nade kill. A little unfortunate. But both of these teams are looking sharp. 
mind games on mind games in these retake post plant situations. But Zelsis once more has been left alone over towards C and KC, like five hungry wolves staring towards a snack on the C site. Just that, I mean, vacuuming up these orbs, granted and given the C mound area basically every single time. There's no plan in action for Sentinels. They did manage to take rubble over towards A, so they've got tens posted. And we haven't actually seen tens in this position before. We know that KC have got protocols to clear this out. We just haven't seen the fight actually occur. Now, do they believe that tens is not on top of rubble because they've seen Zeka? I'm going to use a molly to clear it. One way. They, don't, they do not like what they've seen. No. They're happy to return back over to Magnum. He knows that there hasn't been any re-aggression on C. Magnum. See, Magnum did not give that one up already. Through, forwards. Well, John QT. It's an unorthodox one. Just playing close to the pillar here. Now sets down a Viper's Pit. This is a difficult one. Carmen Court. What chances do they have? What is the call to be made out forwards in front of it? Lucky to be alive. Still smokes on smokes. Who knows which direction this one's going to go into with a nightfall now. They don't know anything. Adjusting oh. Magnum! That is disgusting! But Tens, he's forwards and through, eventually removing that pesky, pesky problem that is the IGL. Two players forwards to the rate, has fallen. Shin, last alive! John QT, miraculous with the movement. And Sen somehow get that one through, despite the fact that Magnum was able to pick off three. Way. It looked great for Sen, though. That opening kill from John QD to be able to get his pit online. I'm, I'm amazed, frankly, that Casey even got the pit, uh, the spike down, because there was so much pressure coming through there. Pit used, Nightfall used as well. That is excellent awareness. They've often been using Tomoji's uh, smoke to be able to get into the C site, and John QD just reads that for the first kill. And a little whiffy towards the end from Narei and Shin. Otherwise, Magnum had given them an opportunity. Devastation for Zeish. So two rounds ahead again. Maintaining the lead, our Sentinels. Yusha making the difference in so many of these moments. Acro game being called from either of these sides. It's a good one. Both the IGL is going to be working overtime to try and get that edge. Into C again. Celsius. Really deep off angle. There was a chance he could have been punished, but safety for now at least. But the snake bite fades. And here's the things. Prowler, Satchels up above, doesn't expect it. Stinger, exactly where it's favored. Close quarter combat. They don't have to side just yet. They know where John QT is. John needs some help. John needs some help here. Swinging wide. Sassy will be punished for it. Casualty. Line of fire and a line of action here. It is a bit futile, is what it feels like. Carmen Core only just getting ground underneath them. Plants, paranoia that forces it out, and a satchel forward smoke fading away. Martin! Oh, he's on one right now, on for the ace. One more. We'll do it. John QT. Spotted. 1v3. Spotted and shut down. That's a wild situation. I mean, Sentinels realize that Tomoji is one away from being able to get his pit online. So they can't just allow him to go for the plant. They're forced to go aggressive. This entry, excellent from Martin. And wasn't really expected in this spot. But yet, yeah, they're forced to go for this level of aggression and run into Martin's Odin here because they need to deny the plant. Otherwise, they're going to be retaking into a pit. Unfortunately, they lose the round anyway. And now Tomoji has pit up for the next. And Sentinels' economy is getting stretched. I mean, look at this. Tens is at the top of the scoreboard. And my man's about to come into this round with a sheriff. Sheriff and half armor. I'm Guardians. I mean, a few rifles. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, it's. I'm going to need someone to drop him a gun. <laughs> <laughs> at least. I mean, I know that he can get work done with the sheriff, but you want to put your players that are in the aggressive positions in the best position possible. And here we see Sentinel's coaching staff taking the timeout because this is crunch time. They have a chance here of being able to close out the series against the number one seed from EMEA. Book their spot into playoffs, set themselves up, potentially as tournament favorites, oh, if yeah. they make it through Heretics and KC playing like this. Other teams will certainly be having words about that. But there would be 
little to doubt if they could close things out here. Most people ahead of this tournament, the Carmen Core Sentinels penned in as the most likely finalists, really, the two teams that look the strongest coming into this event. Been a banger of a game so far. Yeah, so back and forth. But I think you kind of have to favor Casey's chances of being able to pull this round across the line. Now, C's fade combo, uh, sorry, C's nade combo, very possible here. Not using it. Horn, though, again, enough to deal with that one. Not sure what that lineup is, but... It's a, it's a different lineup, actually. Sassy was throwing it previously from B, now throwing it from A. Still not getting broken. So I'm perfectly happy to follow that trail of noise. They've stacked it with a lot of their players. Prowler forwards. Martin satchel in to clear that space and take up control of Tree. With them breaking the Prowler, really does feel like an A hit, and it might still be so. Sees Nade. Wrong timing taken for it. Guess what? They want to go forwards! Second! That's a snake bite that takes him down. There's so many layers to that. It really is. First wave of Util, second with the Paranoia and with the Satchel. That has really put Sentinels in the driving seat. But Magnum broke the alarm bot on B. No response from anybody there, so he's calling to narrate that B may be clear. Oh, is Tomashi going to try to fake this with a pit or something? What? What a KC cooking. They had a free B site to go for, and they're still going A. Coming in, Ten just walks forwards for the information. He's brought down three versus three still. Two plays at the back of the site. What is it called? Double face! And sprayed through and down. Equal parts on either side here. One left standing. It's the rate. And a 1v3. To avoid his team being put on map point, on series point. He's worried about Zelsis. But Zelsis is still tethered to his turret. 15 seconds wow. less. 10. Just no chance, surely. Anything taps it, hoping that a few of these players will be out wide and open! Unbelievable! This time! Unbelievable! Ella seconds Cel available! Celsius is miles away. The Nightfall going to confirm that he's not playing towards Rubble. Number eight, nine below! What? Ridiculous! That is one of the most important clutches that we've seen in the tournament so far. Narate somehow saving his team. How does he line this one up? Unreal! Get out of here. I mean, what was that? 0.3 on the timer or what? I don't even know. Everything stacked against him. No oh, way. I mean, barely, <laughs> barely <laughs> contained it. It's just like, okay, I'll be the stoic one. Somehow, Eng expects that, apparently. Yeah, not shocked. None of us did. God damn. Magnum is buying an outlaw here to get his team up to map point, knowing that Sentinels are on an eco. What's the save? And the ults are all in favor of KC, really. There are still ults over on the side of Sen too. So Do they choose stacking. to use them? They're hard stacking. There's five players. I don't know what gives this read away. It just seems to be a gamble. Zelsis forwards. Tens is set up for a paranoia. Are they going to try to clear this? Yes, they're going to be trying to fight this one. Paranoia, forwards, haunt, haunt, broken, tags it in the smoke, forwards, Sancho's backwards, about in a second, he let the rocket loose, and Sentinel's no way! From the jaws of defeat, they're trying to take it back, Magnum has taken so much damage in the mix of things, 3 HP, Spike, retrieved, back and away, not quite, it's dropped down, and Sentinel's out of nowhere! You're joking! That is utterly ridiculous. The five-player gamble stack, just at the perfect time. And not just that, but finding the play off the horn being broken. I mean, look, look at the way the Martin is playing that. They find the exact moment that Casey were about to commit. All of them with utility in their hands, ready to exec. And Sen, the aggression pays off big time. They could not have found a bigger moment to slam the pressure back into KC. We're into this, the final round of regulation. It's already here. Shambolic buy for KC. It's bottom of the barrel. That's all they're working with. It's desperation. Individuals need to step up to even stand a chance of staying in this series. Emotional roller coaster doesn't even begin for the players there on stage. You go from elation to devastation. Backing away from tense there, Prowler connected. 
gives them that space freely. Carmen Corlo, Spike in a different direction. Now Shin does have his ult. There's a chance he can pivot. Martin has the showstopper, but he took 124 at the beginning of the round. He took a long range phantom headshot. Fake. Lockdown being used here to just try and make it feel like this. I mean, it's a good call. Sentinels have been playing super reactive off of the time cues, but the lockdown's broken just from the minor amount of util. Now the showstopper forwards Martin. He'll go down to the turret. He'll go down to the turret. He has to send it flying. Poor Timmy. Lockdown. Drop down. 30 seconds. Spike can't be planted. That desperation. It's frantic in nature, but eventually going to be sticking it. Shin backing away. Pit will stay up, and this retake is happening at a blistering pace. Forwards. Zelsis. Dominating the ankles. One tap to force out the util, but this could be it. All on the line for Carmen Court. And the calls are being made here, fighting up close, fighting forwards. All tucked away, Zelsis! The hopes and dreams ripped to pieces. Shin, desperate for it, tens forwards. And it couldn't come down to anything. Doma Z, no chance. Sentinels have done it. The number one seed taken out. Sent City here to play. Well, despite it being the two, oh, this match delivered. Those final moments are just bonkers. Sen being able to take this map with a five-player gamble stack over towards C that takes the win. It looked poised, it looked ready. It looked like it was going to bind. But the final map denied us. As Zen denies KC their spot in playoffs for now. This team still with options being able to make it through our Swiss stage. But the path for them continues. Number one seed of America's. Taking out the win against the winners of EMEA kickoff. And what a game it was. Oh yeah. Sen definitely the better team there on split, but a hair's breadth between them on Lotus. I mean, the smallest of differences. I was convinced we were going to be seeing Bind. I was convinced it looked like it was preordained, man. But it's Sentinels moving forwards in the playoffs. They'll be happy for it, I'm telling you. <laughs> Kaplan and Drew have been gaining grey hairs at a rapid pace. <laughs> they haven't had a break, man. They haven't had a break, but finally, a bit of peace and quiet time to prepare. Sentinels are first team in the playoffs. And you've got to be thinking, they're looking like one of the favorites to be able to take oh, yeah. the entire thing. Yeah. Because chewing through, and listen, they had some close maps, some close games, but chewing through both of those EMEA teams who are looking so hot in their regional matches, Sen are looking excellent here. And with all of that time to be able to prep, certainly they're going to be looking at all of the other teams, seeing like who looks dangerous as they head forwards to playoffs. Potentially even more dangerous as well. I mean, of course, can't can out Carmen Core. They're not out of the tournament just yet. It's the Swiss stage. Listen, they're going to get that chance of redemption, that chance of playoffs against still. Who? Against who? <laughs> against who? <laughs> against who? I mean, there's too many unknowns, man. There's too many unknowns and too many other good teams. I mean, we're barely any way into this tournament and we're just seeing such high quality of play. Yeah. It's just insane. It's yeah. insanity. It, it really is. It's also just incredible individual ability being brought to the big stage by these Sen players. Yeah. They've worked so hard to increase that fundamental stuff. The, the retakes, the discipline, the coordination between the team, the IGLing that John Cutie's brought in. But throughout it all, the backbone that's standing up and winning them games here against teams like Heretics and KCU, and no slouches individually. One of the big things that's powering through are those individual performances coming out from players like Tens. Yeah. You know, the second on map one as well was just unbelievable. And John up towards the top of the scoreboard here for the second map too, whilst also calling an amazing game too. Yeah, the battle of the IGLs was something to behold, honestly, as well. Those <laughs> macro calls, I mean, just the gamble in that, in that second to last round. I'd think of the read. Making a difference. I'd think of the read. You're joking. It couldn't have been better. The timing too. The timing on the horn, yeah. the break, the paranoia, the run into the smoke. I mean, these are what dreams are made of for Sentinels, but also KC, that is going to be going through your head over and over. Yeah. Very difficult, actually, to get those kind of moments Thinking away from you. Yeah, I'm taking a gander, trying to see if the interview's ready right now. Will be, I hope so, yeah. at some point. And yes, it is. I've got the cue. Go straight to the interview. What's up, everybody? Let's give it up for Sentinels one more time. 
here joined by uh, join uh, QT, and we're going to have a little bit of. Uh, we want to hear the feelings after this matchup. Estoy aquí con John QT. Vamos a hacerle unas cuantas preguntas sobre este partido. First of all, after failing to win Ascension, getting uh, back to, uh, with your coach, getting here, making it to the big stage. Now you're on to playoffs. I assume in that you're feeling amazing and crazy. But how different is actually IGL and preparing for Americas compared to this? Uh, it's not much different. Uh, we just have our process that we follow. Uh, we just trust our protocols. Uh, we're approaching the games the same as we approach them in America, pretty much. Uh, just making sure we understand how the other teams play and how we want to play and just trust ourselves, pretty much. Le he preguntado sobre, obviamente, se tiene que estar sintiendo encima de una nube por toda la trayectoria que ha tenido y estar ahora aquí será además el primer equipo que se clasifica a los playoffs. Le he preguntado cómo es de diferente prepararse para América que prepararse para aquí. Y dicen que básicamente hay que confiar en sus protocolos, en lo que tienen preparado y que la diferencia realmente es mínima. Okay, you say that the difference is not really there, right? But coming into today's matchup, knowing that you barely had any time to rest, how was the preparation, if there was any, especially, you know, with the maps and everything that we saw? Uh, the preparation wasn't uh, that long, to be honest, because we had no time. We just made sure to trust ourselves, discuss the veto, and uh, the coaches watched the, watched the games. I also watched the game, and uh, we pretty much just predicted the veto. I watched their Lotus and play. I was very aware of how they played, and they didn't change much, so it wasn't that hard. What was the hardest thing to adapt within the game for you? Uh, the hardest thing was just to make sure uh, we're not nervous. I think yesterday we definitely played bad and we still won. But we were very shaky, making stupid mistakes, stuff that we're not used to do. So I, was, I, was, I just made sure that everyone stayed comfortable and played well. Le he preguntado que también cómo se ha preparado con tan poco tiempo, ¿no? Después de que ayer fueran el último partido y hoy el primero. Dice que tampoco ha habido mucha diferencia entre lo que Carmín Corp ha hecho en días anteriores y lo que han hecho hoy. Con lo que más dificultad han tenido, sí que ha dicho que es con mantener las energías y no cometer los mismos errores pequeños que cometieron en el día de ayer. Well, thank you very much, John Kitty. Let's thank hear you. it one more time for Sentinels as they make it to playoffs. Nos vamos a ir a un cortito descanso, pero no os preocupéis porque tenemos más partidos. Don't go anywhere. We have another matchup coming up next. Gen G versus EDG. Red Bull gives you wings.
Welcome back to day three of Masters Madrid. It is time for our second match of the day. China's number one seed, Edward Gaming versus Pacific's number one seed, Jenna G. I'm Mika Fabs, back on the desk once again with Mimi and Kakuka. I hope you ladies are ready for another banger match today. I was hoping for more from that first one, honestly. I know, I, I know. We wanted a match three. three. Uh, but this series is going to be so exciting as well. I, I feel yeah. like it's been a long time coming for the best of these two regions in kind of their new form with Gen G taking over that crown in Pacific to have a match. Yeah, exactly. And especially after ADG getting the, the final win against PaperX, I feel yeah. like everything is coming to fruition. Sometimes when we talk about the placements from the teams coming into the tournament, I think that both these teams really deserve that top one. Genji proved it the other day, and so did ADG. Oh yeah, there were a lot of uh, big surprises that happened the other day, and that's how these teams came to this point, right? But there was also a lot of trash talk about this match, and I just love it. Here's what Munchkin had to say about this match. Match. Are you ready, Kang Kang? Uh, not like full trash, I like recycling talk maybe, but both these little, players. A little light, a little light. That's but a saying now, Bea, <laughs> and you can't stop that. Yeah, I, I won't stop you, I'm never. From the uh, beginning of LCQs, uh, many Japanese fans call me the god of operator, but now I want them to know I'm the god of duelist. Dude, every Kang Kang quote is so hard. It's so, it's so like, metal. I mean, they so chew metal. their bones to like pieces, or how was it? Like, yeah, I'm like, gonna chew my opponent's bones to, to dust, I think? Something he's, like that. He's crazy. You know what? If, if Close. ever Valorant yeah. ha has like a heavy metal kind of theme and the, the lyrics of like the opening song should be like Hong Kong's quotes. Yes. I feel like yeah. that, that, that's what he does. I feel also like in the past, he was more about uh, the teams. I like the fact that he's humbling a little bit more, you know? I think that he's taking a step he's back. He's focused on himself. Yes. That, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. No, 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 yeah, I think I think it's great. I think that the evolution that we're seeing uh, within the players themselves and the personalities coming into, uh, emerging with the rest of the community that we already have is perfect. Well, I guess, you know, when you talk about EDG, you usually talk about Kong Kong, but there's so many other players that are really delivering. There's actually nobody else to talk about. There's nobody else to talk about, really. Well, let's send it over to Golden Boy and hear from EDG's Nobody. Nobody, come here real fast, my friend. Hello, hello, good to see you. How are you doing? Oh, stand right here for me, if you don't mind. Uh, yesterday, we, you guys overcame a massive challenge by defeating Paper Rex. And now, today, you enter a new era here where you have an opportunity to you know, overcome new challenges. Is the next challenge to win the tournament, or are there more in the way? That其实在昨天的比赛里面是完成了一个熟悉的挑战，打败了PRX。那你觉得接下来会不会有更多的挑战在等着你们？或许是赢下这整个所有的比赛，又或者说还有其他的挑战，你觉得在等待着你们去完
But it looks like they're just about ready for every single challenge. And I mean, EDG got revenge on Paper Rex. So I think after that, after that history and finally managing to overcome your demons at international tournaments, right? I think like you'd be ready for just about anything. Yeah, I mean, they've played this team three times to four at global events, have lost every single time. But in this one, it, it felt to me like the final evolution of EDG style. When we yeah. first saw them at Global, they were this chaotic team who was so focused on individuals, a, a lot like what kind of FPX is now. But in this match, they were so slow and controlled. They were very focused, especially on the attack side, of playing these really patient mid-rounds, waiting for Paper X to mess up, and then finding the gap. Yeah, and actually that is something that you can expect from Paper X, right? Not the, not the messing up, but actually, you know, they're going for the aggression. They're doing a little bit of those funky plays. I think that that adaptation also is going to help them throughout the rest of the tournament, because the, the opponents and the teams look more like Paper X than the, the conventional teams, uh, especially with how the meta is shaping and how the regions are advancing and moving forward. So, good to know that they can can get that revenge, but is it going to be enough when pushed to put up against different kind of play styles? Like, for example, Genji being more traditional. I mean, I feel like both these teams actually have really comparable styles, right? Yes. They're both now playing that super slow, mid-round heavy style, trying to embed lurks, but both have these like really ridiculous uh, kind of levels of players to step up in the late round yep. and win clutches, which I think makes this a very, a very interesting style match. Speaking of players that really step up and make it into clutches, we have to talk about Haodong, because I have to tell there's almost something eerie about the way he plays. There's always something uncanny. He's always at the right place at the right time every single round. Yeah, exactly. And that is something that made the difference completely on the previous matchup. Uh, seeing the way that he was finding the space, that he was finding the right time, and that he was giving the right information to the rest of the team. I think that we highlight so many IGLs around the world. And it is time that EDG Abos moves away from that tag of, yeah, we have Kanka, he is good on the operator. Haha, <laughs> we do duels to actually uh, thinking of them as a very high contender team. Yeah, I mean, this guy, his evolution has really, I think, mirrored the team. As as the team has gotten better, so much of it has been about Haodong's IGLing. I, I think we've really seen him learn from the teams they've played global event after global mm. event. Well, this is the time he's ready to rock up and teach <laughs> some people, because his lurks were perfect yesterday against Paper Rec. When we talk about exploiting that gap, getting in in these mid-rounds, it's all there. this guy. It's all this guy. Yeah, it's, it's I, again, as I say, it's eerie, it's uncanny, it makes my spider senses tickle. Well, who's not on this team, so I don't see why well, would be Yuri. Well, that, that, that's true. <laughs> no need to be shocked or anything. But I feel like, you know, when you talk about EDG, again, you talk about Kang Kang, it's great to see, by the way, that he is also evolving because, you know, you usually lock him onto the duelist role and in the, the, the super opera of EDG. But now you see him actually flexing onto different roles. He brought out the KO, for example, a while ago. And he is no stranger at all to events like these. And I believe, Mimi, you did set, sit down with the EDG duelist. Now maybe flex to talk about his return to the big Stage. I'm joined here by Kong Kong and our translator DJ. Kong Kong, welcome to Madrid. I wanted to start off by asking you, uh, this is the first event now that you as EDG has been representing the CN International League. How has it changed from previous events to now playing in the league? 那其实对于我们是代表着我们 C N 联赛建赛区也第一次参加这个世界性的赛事嘛？那你觉得和之前相比的话，来到这次马德里大师赛有没有什么不一样呢？嗯，我觉得这次参加马德里可能更多的是背负 V C T C N 的一些荣誉吧，所以说我要先为兄弟们登上这座山，然后为兄弟们擦这面旗。I think like we kind of like take the pride of our C N League. For all of my brothers from CN, I kind of like I want to climb this mountain for them. Yeah, and well, you're you're already、uh, kind of starting on that quest. I, I want to ask about some of your games that you played in CN. For EDG, it feels like sometimes when we when we watch you play, you see kind of different versions of this team. When you you played against a team like Case, it's a very like put together team, and when you play against FPX, sometimes it gets a little bit more chaotic. Do you think EDG is a team? Plays to the level of the opponent they're against. 其实我们会发现 ，EDG 在面对不一样的对手的时候，其实你们的打法风格会有改变。比如说，你们在面对 KC， 可能你们会更团队一些的那样去玩；但是在面对 PRX 的时候，你们又会可能也会打得比较冲啊，比较有是那种打得比较有侵略性那种。那你们会根据队伍的不同来改变你们的打法风格吗？嗯，我觉得这是以前我们的一个弊端吧。然后，我觉得我们现在要做的就是。在他们可像 P X， 他们可能会打得很混乱的时候，然后我们做到，呃，不要被他们的节奏所影响到自己需要打什么的东西。对、嗯、我觉得我们现在应该做的是做更
做好自己。对。I feel like if we change our play style,、uh, depends on who is our opponent. It's kind of like a disadvantage of us because we want to like keep play our own thing, no matter who is our uh, opponent. Uh, for example, if it's PRX, we don't want if they play chaotic. If we discipline and do our things, I think that will be better. Okay, very interesting.、Okay. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. But thank you very much for joining me, Kang Kang. Yeah. Well, Kang Kang talking about、uh, scaling mountains, and the next challenge, the next mountain that they have to scale will be Gen G. This was their first global qualification, and right out of the gate, they took down Loud of all of the teams. Yeah, I mean, Gen G's debut showed that Pacific was not a fluke. It wasn't just a, a one-off to go out there and beat a team like Paper X. This squad was here to play. Loud came out playing some funky comps. They went, they went back. They changed onto a Yoru on their ascend. They did a lot of stuff、yep. that I think would be really hard to deal with as a team seeing it for the first time. And Gen G. Adapted to it incredibly well. Again, comparable to EDG, this team does a great job at slowing down these rounds, not letting themselves get dragged into the chaos, and instead setting up to, to find the right mid-round idea and adapt to even these weirder comps very well. And we've been so excited to see, you know, faces coming back and new faces. Lakia is one of them. I think that he had a good day.、Uh, the fact that we're seeing Texture in such a good form coming into、yeah. the international stage. Those are the kind of players that will make a difference, right? The one that has to be the explosive player and. Also, the one that has to bring all the knowledge and 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 all that calmness onto the stage. Yeah, and I feel like you know you mentioned、uh, texture, right? He was a player that was already one of the best duelists to come out of Pacific, and you set him up in a team that complements his playstyle perfectly. And suddenly, it, you have one of the most dominant duelist showings in an entire tournament that was Pacific kickoff. I was I was honestly kind of disappointed watching him play all all of last year and be、oh, tossed more. around、okay. on all、so、these. Oh, she wants more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all the I mean, you meant the other day. No. No, no, no. Think about how many different agents he was playing,、yeah. how often his role was being switched around. No, he gets on this team. He's playing Jet. He's playing Duelists. He's playing what he's good at, and he's damn good at it. And he's probably one of the reasons why they were they were able to manage it to get this miracle run、For、that、sure. Genji、uh, had in Pacific. And I think、uh, the fact that he's able to translate it here. And by the way, I do not think that he's still 100. It's amazing, and will probably take Pacific very far. Well,、yeah. let's see if we have、uh, more from、uh, Genji with Golden Boy and Munchkin. Munchkin, come here, buddy. Oh man, it's been so long.、Uh, we we got to get the awkward hugs out of the way, buddy. It's been a minute.、Uh, I saw your post online to Kong Kong.、Uh, you had asked him、uh, if he was ready for today. Is it safe to say that you're excited for this match? And and why is that?、Uh, just he won Munchkin lost to EDG, but Genji Genji Munchkin win that. Oh, Genji Munchkin will not. Good to see you, buddy. Always a pleasure. Back to you guys. Welcome to Map Select presented by Omen. This is match two of the day, and we'll go ahead and get started. EDG, do you want Team A or Team B? Team B. Team B. So Gen G, you will be Team A, and we will start with your first ban. Ban Bind. Bind. EDG, your ban. Ban Lotus. Lotus. Yeah. And map number one from Gen G. We pick Icebox. Icebox. Side on Icebox. Attack. Attack. And map number two from EDG. Split. split, side on split. Attack. Okay, next set of bands starting with Genji. You have Ascent, Breeze, and Sunset. Ban sunset. Ban sunset.、Uh, your ban. You have ascent and breeze. Ban ascent. Okay.、Um, so map number three by default is going to be breeze. Genji side on breeze. Attack. Attack. All right. Good luck to you both.
first spot into playoffs. China's number one seed versus Pacific's number one seed. It's EDG versus Genji. And we've seen, Mimi, just how hard these teams can punch, even against the best of them all. They absolutely can. EDG has been a team on a long rise, climbing mountain after mountain. But their next opponent, the new kings of Pacific, Genji, have been impressing everyone on the run up to Masters Madrid. And this is their chance to lock in playoffs early. And it's, it wouldn't be the first time that we see a miracle run in a Masters tournament. And I think that not only making it into playoffs would be enough for Genji, they should be hungry for more after defeating a world champion in Loud. But think about for EDG as well. Yeah. Every international tournament they've attended, they've gotten better. The placement has increased. They ended at a crescendo last year at Champions with a new CN League in place with them on top again. There's definitely that pressure to succeed, to make it international, to represent China the best they can. I love that you brought that up because, like, you, you know, you're just reminding everybody that EDG kind of had a later start than all of these teams, right? And now we're seeing them here dominating so many others, and it's going to be a memorable performance for, um, for for them for sure. Especially since, as you mentioned, we're seeing them getting better and better and better. They're the only team at Masters Madrid who didn't make a roster change into 2024. Oh, that's right. They are really the last, like, I guess, old guard team that is fully intact. How? What they How did we get be. here? Where they are the old guard on a tournament? I think it's crazy and, and outrageous and also if we think about the map veto that, that, that we just saw knowing that gen g is is the team that has played every single one one of them that has played every single map that is out there in the in the map pool is very interesting to see where edg wants to be taking things and also if gen g is going to be changing things around yeah we're starting out on icebox for this series and, and i think this is a, an interesting matchup because gen g have been so damn good on this map they're they're yet to lose it in 2024. Yeah. Five win streak. The last name they took down was Loud, who a lot of people considered one of the kings of Ice Fox through, through the history of that team. They yeah. play the Gecko KO composition, mm -hmm. playing around those dizzy flash combos, and they're so, so good at it. And it's perfect, right, for it to play against EDG. They do not have uh, uh, that much into it. And we've seen the agents already. Yeah, and no changes here. EDG have been playing this comp at home in China. Yeah. The comparison is playing into that Sova versus that KO. Both these comps play pretty similar when they're on the attacking side. They don't have that Sage 12, they don't have the Harbor utility. So on their B hits, they have to be fighting forward, going for space. So what I'm looking at in this series is Kung Kung and Texture, two Jet players that we know are incredible and how well they can be set up to take space forward and allow that plant to come down or to win the retakes. Yeah, and I I want something else. I want to see. I want to see the gecko making and being the difference. I want to not give them the space that they want and actually finding not only the lurkins but the right timings to go into execute. Well, we're all set for our second match of the day. Let's send it over to our casters. It's Mitch and Tom. Thank you so much, Mika. I, I'm very excited for this one, Tom. It looks like yeah. we've got a pretty juicy series in front of us. You want to throw out a favorite before we go into it? Any predictions? Oh, that's brutal. Throw you the bus I today. Know. I like. I think I'm slightly leaning the way of Gen.G. I, I think they've been in slightly better form, but EDG is one of those teams that is, they're, they're on the war path, is the way I want to put it. They are slowly improving better and better, and their game versus Paybreak showed they could weather the storm. But they've got slightly different weather conditions as we kick off on Icebox, and that's not the greatest start with T2 already going down. Yeah, losing out on their Killjoy. A lot of space behind them is now wide open for Genji to take. So they've got to be a little quicker or move back towards the site, make this a brief site take. Instead, it's going to be much faster as they look to fight on the site. Meteor good for one at least, keeping numbers in favor. But Dong, this man was impressive, able to constantly get behind enemies. But this time, he's taking them head on. Three kills already, and EDG are back in the round. A fourth just around the corner with Munchkin so desperately low. But Dong falls, Texture putting up one hell of a fight. Connections, another with the headshot on Smoggy, and nobody, 68 HP. Texture's gonna find it hard to get him dropped with two bullets left. He needs to be precise, and he has no idea where nobody has snuck off to. Texture creates some space to pop the reload, back to six bullets. A bit more spam ability, and he's right in the corner! Only one shot, and he needed both to land. That is one to zero for EDG. Yeah, a real back and forth in the initial pistol, and already seeing a, a little bit of what this man Texture can do with the Sheriff, definitely fearsome opposition. But I do like this, sort of a, a slightly more direct approach initially. 
from that side of EDG, just looking to take their way straight in towards the side, and even Texture can bail them out of this one. Of course, just looking at this map in general, we've already seen the actually very, very good attack sides coming out of the side of Gen G. So they're starting on the weaker half, and for EDG, they really struggled, but we've only seen them play it versus FPX, who, I'll be honest with you, that's not a litmus test of how you play a map, because FPX are playing the, the double duelist, Rainer Jet aggro crazy style of play. So I, I don't think that it's something to really worry about too much in terms of that match going down poorly. And 3DG obviously getting off to those good starts, being able to build the economy up a little bit is a good place to be. Well, Tom, we've seen the famous words pop up on the screen. Of course, we're in a technical pause here. After just the first round, best time for it. You know, realistically, if you're halfway through a series, that, that can really break momentum for any team. But man, right off the bat of the pistol, it's going to give more time to KonKon, for example, who had already decided to purchase an Outlaw. Now, this is something I am thrilled to see. I look back at one of their previous Icebox games, didn't see them purchasing the Outlaw, and got very sad because KonKon is one of the strongest snipers we see floating around the international scene and I just think he can maximize the potential yeah. of this weapon so super excited to see if he keeps that what he can do with it but for now we're gonna be sitting in this tech pause while Gen, Gen G get their gear fixed up yeah I, I think this this is a match filled with storylines as well like you're looking at Lakia looking to make his way back to a playoffs after a, a career that hasn't been where it should be. I think that's the best way to put it. He peaked in new turn and now has been on his way back through the entirety of his previous rosters. For Gen G as an organization, this is a real opportunity for them to get into the playoffs. A team that last year started strong but then underperformed, now have an opportunity to do it at a Masters. For the side of EDG, this is a story of can we oh, now see yeah. China overtake Pacific? Because because that's the thing. They've been pretty close a couple of times. They've battled versus Paper X many a time and finally beat them just yesterday. Now they have an opportunity to take down both Pacific teams and become, well, they're basically the kings of Asia. That's what we're looking at here. So it really is an important matchup for either side. Gen G to finally sort of prove themselves and even just sort of what, what we saw from Munchkin earlier, the sort of like, okay, I lost to them on T1, but I'm not losing to them here. Maybe just feeling that little bit extra confidence with his new roster, with his new team. Well, Tom, it looks like we're back. We got to see actually pretty cool over the shoulder of them just testing it there at the end. Mouse is back online. Game's running smooth. And so the game is running right back into things with EDG 1-0 up. As we can see, Kon Kon didn't decide to take the outlaw. He's gone instead for the Guardian. Different uses, different ideas. And this attack side, nice and slow. Little bit of A control. They had the recon go up, but it was contested by the side of Gen G. They've refocused and they look towards the B site. Drone clearing out a ton and a Viper wall that they can easily push towards the site with. You don't imagine Gen G will be playing ahead of that with their pistols. Normally in these sort of rounds, you expect Gen G to like, they'll have utility to deny these plants. Like you're talking about nano swarms, snake bites. You're talking about the marsh fragments but this is a low buy round so they haven't used any of that so it gives a lot easier access because that's always one of the things we talk about with this sort of composition being run by edg they have to take a lot more control to get that plant down in this sort of round though just a farming exercise a chance for kan kan to really build up those orbs you know what he's still he's still gonna get a couple still makes it a little bit costly I'm trying to see if we're gonna have chi chi pick up a weapon he did make it just about so three rifles carried forward for EDG altogether. Decently successful round, and I think the main thing being that Kong Kong finds so many kills that, and the death, this might be able to cancel out some of the economic disadvantages that could be coming after this round. For now, they'll play it as a bonus with some pistols, and he's, ooh, Kong Kong's three away from the Blade Storm. Yeah. Again, he, he might be baiting me, but as we get back in, <laughs> you see a scope in his hand. The weapon dropped over, Tom. We're going to get it. Let's see what he can do. Attack well, side outlaw on this man. He has to get kills here because he basically needs the blade storm for the next round. Okay, Chichu does actually have extra credit, so maybe they could drop an extra one, but it will leave them with some gaps going into the next. Obviously, again, the real benefits of their composition it's one of is them. being able to execute onto that A site. But yeah, it also can't come just himself. This is the thing. You've got Karen and Lackia both now terrified because they've got half shields. So that outlaw rings out and you realize 
we're in a bit of trouble. I, I wonder if even an element of that is looking at previous ice boxes and seeing this wasn't a preferred weapon. With Kong Kong down, that rifle can still be retrieved. It can used still later be on. retrieved and, and used really, later on. You gotta think about and really, damage. You gotta That's think the about the game damage. Here. That's the name of the game here. Either way, either way. We are gonna see them building up we back towards, towards the building up back again. towards this A site again. Nice work from Haodong to at least be able to find one. To at least be able to find one. And in this 2v4 situation, it is not looking good. It is not looking good. It really good. needs Meteor. to get something Really here. needs to get something here. And now Caron is the only one remaining. And one versus three. Try and turn this. They planted in an audacious spot. I guess expecting him to come around on the flank. This man has been a real showstopper when it comes to Gen G's success. And he might be able to get a second player planting. Definitely got a little bit tight for a second there. Looking to try and isolate one of these jewels, faking out the sound. But now know exactly where he is. Needs to try and drop one of them, and Haodong is waiting on the other side. Great start to this map from EDG. Well, we've seen these leads fumbled before the three to zero and the immediate bite back, but this one, it has a, a, a very sweet taste for the EDG fans. Their economy is stacked. You've got three players floating around that 5K mark. In fact, coming out of that round, you've got players close to 9K, yeah. but big reinvestments being made, <laughs> big upgrades too. The Bladestorm will be online soon, so definitely no economic struggles. And a Viper's Pit to work with, most likely in this round. For uh, Will it be used in this round? That's a different question, but they, these are huge pieces of utility and abilities to have where Gen G now find themselves trailing and on an eco. Yeah, I do wonder when the moment will be that we see Gen G kind of stack up a little bit over on towards that A site. It's what this composition for the side of EDG really relies upon is these A site hits. Because again, it, it can be quite difficult without having a, a straight up blockade of something like a cove or even like, having those extra flashes that you might see coming out of Gecko. For now, at least, though, already shutting down the players in mid, and they are just winning every single battle very easily indeed. Well, uh, Bladestorm even going to come out here to try and I don't know close why. out this round. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure this was needed, uh, but, you know. Either a misclick or he's just like, I'm going to get five kills next round anyway. So. <laughs> Audacious play if it's the latter. I, I would side towards a misclick, but maybe it's just a, a, a asserting the dominance. Oh, first don't shot not going to He's up in the window. <laughs> you go what you deserve. Absolutely. Economic damage now looking pretty good for Gen G. Already two rifles dropped. Let's see how many more. Ooh. Again, there's so much money on the other side, but Munchkin was really starting to dice them up. How long was left on eight HP? Luckily, far enough away. Now, four to zero we go for EDG. And now the buy comes through from Genji. But the thing is, the attackers have quite a lot to work with, not just on the credit side. Like we said, the Viper's Pit now is online. The Hunter's Fury is there. The Bladestorm isn't, but that's a different story. Okay, he, he hit three headshots. And he only actually got one kill from headshots. Because <laughs> some of the players are so far away. I'm looking at that operator, though. This is where texture can bridge the gap a little bit. You can see that gamble already beginning. Three players over. They're going to look to try and pressure, but this is why they have three players on the other side of the map. The reliance on texture. No escape available at this stage, so he's just going to have to run. And he will hightail it out, but there's been a catch in mid. Yeah, this is a big kill. Losing their utility, they're going to filter back in very quickly on the side of Genji to take that space, but well. the cost is massive. Two kills. And a big player taken down if Genji decide or if EDG, pardon me, try to switch directions, Genji would be blind to it. Up close here, Texture's already used his dash. There's no easy way out. And with the shot, not wow. hit! Nobody is punishing again and again! Lackey at the last man standing. Once the, the herald of this region. Hey, he was all we heard about again and again. Oh, wait till he steps on the international stage. <laughs> well. Doesn't look too good in this one. There's a 1v4, though, so we'll give him a chance. Five to zero. Doesn't he only play bind? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they messed up their roster on this one. <laughs> oh, that was a that, that I was feel a, those bad are, Those were dark days. Yeah. It's really funny as well because the first map Gen G banned was bind. So we're not doing it to you, buddy. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. But no, what a start from EDG. This is a map that they played once oh my God, in the season hyped. in China. They lost to FBX, and that was in the final. And on the other side of things, a 5-0 record 
beating RRQ twice, Team Secret Zeta, and of course Loud, which we saw within this tournament. So you're talking about a Gen G in massive form on this map and an EDG that have barely played it and lost. And right now they're winning 5-0. Well, the sign in the audience might be spot on, up long, and right here they've given an op over to KonKon. An opportunity for EDG to further extend that scoreline. Their opponents not having a lot of credits. They're going to be coming in with a couple rifles, maybe a big iron on a couple players' hips. But for the most part, it's not going to be pretty. Tom, this is a flying start for EDG on their attack side. Do we expect Gen G to turn it around on the next? Like, it's what's possible. Their, what's, the, what's their minimum, their benchmark? I'm, I'm looking at this round purely because Texture is a Bladestorm. Okay. He is one of the OGs when it comes to the Korean jet. And if he if he starts hitting his shot, that's why they've actually invested a decent amount. Like Munchkin's bought a rifle, along Karan has as well. But I, I genuinely think they believe they can win this round when Texture has a Bladestorm. He is that good. Well, he's had a tough time when it came to the operator up on B. And one of the other things is the consistent uh, knife coming out of Smoggy early on sort of deters that early aggression. You're never really going to have a chance to actually use it now. You have heard that blade storm pop. He's lost it. And he's gone for a moment. For a moment. It will be back, and there's no pressure immediately applied. But they are keeping three players towards the B site, and this is exactly what EDG want. The rotate's just now started for Gen G, but EDG are already knocking on the door of A. It's all about pace here. How soon they're going to actually commit to this? It looks like not soon enough. Texture has rotated in, and in fact, Karen's on the way to help out. It's going to be a stacked site, and Munchkin at least grabs one. This is what we needed to see, and Texture now cancelled out completely. Yeah. Second time he's lost it, but he was given an opportunity. Nice shot from Meteor, though. Gonna go back in with the Sheriff still. Just means a one-for-one -one trade, but Karan's starting to step up. This is Dyke to the double as he gets a second off the back of the Guardian. And now that Bladestorm, at least a couple of knives, should be online. Smoggy just waiting patiently. Little bro is gonna give his position away, and eventually, finally, that knife comes through. The MasterCard Thrifty will give Genji their first round. Yeah, Texture waited quite a while to get to use that. A funny round from them, but the early contact on B, I guess from EDG, the fact that they didn't follow it up, you have the drone go through, the knife fall, and then they immediately move towards that A site, but shifting the whole way. It allowed them to rotate in on the side of Gen G on time. They were ready for this play. And they obviously held back until you saw those knives come back online. Good crunch and five to one on the board. This was not a round that most people would have expected them to take. And if they did, probably off a massive play from Texture. No, I, I, I thought they'd win it, but yeah. You just expected the one kill from the Bladestorm, did you, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, sure. that adds up. Let's just not play back any of the audio of what I said. Yeah, no, we can replay it later. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the op again on Texture. He has another opportunity. And the dash still online. As well. Oh, that, they've been the spotted. Thing. Yeah, that recon just saw the player in the corner. This would have been a great bait, firing the op, running back, telling them, like, oh, I'm scared, and then... Easily mowed down by Lackey. the aggressive position as well. Like Munchkin has pushed up. Nice shot from Meteor as always. Won that battle versus Chichu for the first time. Now this position becomes a little bit more audacious because you already have the man advantage. You don't really need to be in such an aggressive position anymore, but there isn't a safe way out. This needs to be at least a one-for-one -one trade, and I think he's going to get maybe even more than that. The only thing is the timing. There's that first, but oh! Smoggy comes around the corner. The hard check. Spike down A. Really saved the day with that one. Nobody's going to recon out after dropping Texture. Making it up top, but Chiron spotting it. And for EDG, the spike is now down. They've got plenty of control. The B side is theirs. But what are they going to do with it? Nothing without that spike. It's Con Con. One versus three. 20 seconds left. And it seems like this round is already over. Go. No, nope. the angle's oh, a little okay. off on Timmy. So he's sneaking his way through, but now he's being spotted. And with 12 seconds left, there is no chance to plant. They're just going to send one player. Well, actually, they're going to scatter in every direction, ensuring no matter what, yeah. he can't get all three kills. Yeah, if it was anyone else, I think maybe there'd be a bit of confidence. You're going, do we want to face into Kong Kong? No. Nah. Not really. They are going to hit the steps, though. That, yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's the exact reason why. So clean with it. But I'm liking the adaptations we're already seeing from Gen.G. That was the exact thing I was saying in the early rounds is, are they going to now adapt to stack up that A-side? Because, as said, with all the utility that's there for EDG and without having something to help them get the plant on that B-side, 
it becomes a lot easier to fall back into the same sort of traits of going in towards that A site and looking for that afterplant. So they've just died stacking up players. You've had aggressive positioning from Munchkin, and then they've gambled in the early round. Okay, let's see if they push B. If they don't, we'll quickly rotate. And it's worked for them so far. Well, Genji certainly starting to find their footing on this defensive side. The 5-0 to zero was worrying, concerning. But it's still very much alive. Even in the last series, thinking about the Lotus game, you saw Sentinels flying into the lead, and it's much closer at the halftime. It's fairly common for teams to need that little bit of uh, time to see how your opponents are playing. To what you were saying earlier, I think four minimum, five rounds, I think Genji are, are fine. They've shown that they have normally about six to eight rounds every single time they play their attack side, so it's definitely their favored of the lot. Looking to now set up in towards this B-Tape, but again, the read from Gen G, they've got that early rotation, they've set Texture up over on the A site, and actually, we're gonna see a Hunter's Fury pop. They're gonna try and get the opener, and they might just oh. succeed. Nice work to take out Karen. That weakens the defense a bit, but there are still multiple players here, and the hold on mid to make sure they can't rotate back. Well, that hold's just now given up, but they're aware it could still be online. Instead, they're gonna commit towards the B side Beautiful rather than going flash. to A, and it's worked out fantastically. Just Munchkin left. He's got some support on the way. Meteor just making it through the holes, but look who's right behind them. Nobody snuck his way in, and he's grabbed a quick double. The lead now convincingly in their favor, and with a lurk from Chichu, the final nails in the coffin for that round. Six to two. EDG back on the board. Oh, that was just gorgeous. The, the way they isolated each of the fights, okay. I'd say the Hunter's Fury had a little bit of risk to it, but you could normally gamble, especially after seeing the snake bite. You know that he's on yellow, so either you clear yellow or you have at least a kill. And then on the other side of things, just lovely little interplay. The pot flash coming out of Smoggy. He's already racking up the assists. And, well, you're going to bank on if you blind an opponent. Konkon's getting that kill. I think I'd be pretty confident with that one. <laughs> So long as he's on the same side of the map, that player's dropping now. Khan Khan wants to get greedy. He heard the orb be tapped, but there were players covering it from far back. Lots of big irons in play for Sheriffs and a classic for Lakia. But the real danger here is when it comes to ultimates. Retake with a Viper's Pit. Even the pistols can be deadly inside of that and a thrash online as well. There's definitely potential for Gen G to play retakes with some success. Although, again, it, it would be risky. Really, if we see them commit anything big, I imagine it's going to be on the back of a couple kills first. And they need to find those. Texture, yeah. a good candidate for it, but they're going to be forced back by this lockdown. I think that's been the problem, because some of these ults on, it. have been online for a, a little while now, but they just haven't really found any opportunities to actually be able to use them. And a lot of that is because they've stacked the right sites most times. And at least the lockdown, and other stuff is very good for retaking. Again, they do a little bit of damage, but ultimately, Mitch, not really much to write home about. No, no, and I think certainly not with the, the amount of credits that are in play for most of the EDG players. Even the reinvestments will keep them with a two-round buffer. So for Gen G, coming towards the latter stage of this half with just a couple rounds left to compete for, yeah, it, it, it's not ideal. They have those two, round six and seven, under their belt. Things were looking good, but we do need to see them build the rest of those foundations fairly soon. And, uh, well, Tom, you've just pointed at my screen, and I, I almost just don't want to bring it up. But, yeah, yeah. I said Lackey has had a tough time. Wait, it's He's the no still assists a tough time. as well. Like, it, it means that yeah. so far there's been almost literally no impact, which is a pretty scary prospect. I, I've loved the way that they've used this combination of Gecko and Ko in the past. So far, it's just not really been there. Oh, Kankan -kan has definitely a little bit of extra sound. I don't think it's ludicrous to say that Genji have a decent idea of where they're going. Already three players sat within the A site. Alert from Chichu. This battle between him and Meteor has been a regular occurrence, but this time it looks like it might go amiss. Oh, Chichu's at least been spotted, oh, no. but they don't react in time. A free kill for him, but not the follow up. Meteor is at least able to keep this control as the lockdown now is a big threat for EDG. They're going to give up the site control. Spam's on the way as they retreat. Kankan -Kan keeping their back secure, but a Viper's Pit to nice. stop them from getting back into the site, to stop them from keeping their Viper's Pit online. EDG completely shut out of the A site. 
now they've got to go looking elsewhere. But in fact, they've already gone looking elsewhere. They've pushed up mid, made it through the tube. They'll be spotted immediately by the turret. But with 5 HP here, a big threat for Texture. He's got an op that can one-hit them. If they've got anything, they can one-hit him back. Yeah, they still have the spike over on A, though. They are still going in this direction. Haodong needs to find something here, and he does. It leaves it down to just one player actually within the site. They have to go running in, though. Karam might be able to just ruin their day, and that's exactly what he'll do. Three kills, a good reaction initially off the back of the Viper's Pit, but also a solid hold as he was the last point of defense. And just a really good read from him as well, that if he sits inside that pit, they'll push in. If they, if they go through the pit, Probably he gets them both, but there's a rope right up top, and it's dangerous. Instead, he just waits for them, lets them try to jump straight through to get the plant. The time was what was putting the pressure on them. Yeah. Seven to three. Gen G found another round. Economy's good. Thrash online. They committed a couple ultis to the previous, but they also managed to deny Haodong's Viper's oh, Pit. This, this is, is an incredibly aggressive push coming uh, out of Munchkin. No flash on the corner. Looks like he just wants to hold it, but soon you have to imagine he goes for that peak. He's out in no man's land, backed up by oh, Karan, but now, now the real trouble comes into play. Where can he go from here? Oh, they haven't actually pressured. I guess at this point they expect that there's an operator on the angle. Yeah. So they don't, they don't gonna go pushing around that corner and give Texture a free kill. Little do they know, Texture actually isn't there at all. He's on the other side of the map and again has a little bit of aggressive support from Lakia. A slower approach though from EDG. And, and this is what works for them. They've been very good at pulling those rotations. The calls from Haodong have been fantastic. For now at least, looking like a sim similar setup to what we've seen before. Now, Karen has to be careful. He got isolated last time. In fact, he's playing anti-flash. Ready for it, and will even pick off that first kill. He's done extremely well. They know he's here, but the backup is covering him until he swings into Khan Khan. A dangerous play for anyone to make. One that, well, was punished that time, but the trade is good. Two versus four. Munchkin and Meteor extremely low after that engagement. But what can really be done by just a lone gun of Smoggy? 15 seconds or so to get that spike on the ground. And it looks like it will make it to the ground. Unfortunately, not planted. Seven to four, Gen G. Well, they've certainly recovered this one that after a shaky start half. and a couple bumps in the road. They could have a 7-5 half. Yeah, and as said, that, that's not bad. Like that, that will be workable for them. I do think they're going to have to be careful because as you've already mentioned, the sniper of Khan Khan on the other side is, is always going to be a prospect, but They've made this one look doable after what was a, a blitz of a first five rounds. Even still though, an 8-4 and EDG are not gonna be too worried whatsoever. Looking to again build up in towards that A site. The real threat as always is gonna be texture. They're already gonna clear the close angles. That, that it almost seems like a direct counter to just the position that Munchkin was playing earlier. Here comes the Null Command, and assumably the rest of the EDG squad will be following up with it. A full play towards the A site. And Lakia seems to be point of contact. It's nobody to find one with Texture down. Munchkin soon to follow, but EDG find a roadblock. Lakia just the one before he falls, as the defensive side is now locked out. Two versus three. Meteor, okay, he's caught nobody up top. The spike still not planted, but Smoggy <laughs> finds both kills to close this one out. Eight to four at the halftime, a significant lead for EDG. But Genji, they recovered it a little bit towards the end. They yeah. certainly seem hotter now, moving on to their attack. Yeah, Lucky got his first kill in that round, so there you go. He's at least on the board, but it definitely was a rough half a bit. Meteor is the one that we're really gonna be singing about, but no, I, I think the side of EDG are gonna be very, very happy with the way that one has gone. A fantastic start for them, but also just continuously adapting. I think they did very well slowing down a lot of the rounds and just playing with their opponents for the majority of this half. Yeah, most definitely well on the side of Gen G. They've, they've gotten warmed up, but I want to hear what Chichu had to say earlier on in an interview. Let's see. Hello, everyone. I'm EDG. I'm in the position of the player. 
，我觉得赢下 p a p e r s 的感受是消除了这么久的争议吧。就是我们其实一直是有打赢他们的方法的，但是我们一直因为我们的心态没有放开，导致我我们的操作很变形吧。因为我们在赛前的时候有看他们的比赛录像，他们是已经有拿出过这套阵容的，而且我们我们在赛前我们有很多的研究去如何去应对他这个。我觉得今天浩东是今天潜伏的最好的吧，他今天在图二的时候扮演的对我们的帮助很大很大，工作了，我觉得对我们今天掰平比分很重要，对。然后图三的话，我觉得就是我们整体的一个协同跟练习了这么久的战术的一个展现吧。我觉得我们的信心就在来自于我们的。两两位教练组吧，他对我们，他们两位对我们的赛前的，就是如何针对对面，做出了很多他们的想，他们各自的想法吧，然后以去帮助我们去，在赛前的训练的时候去练习，然后去适应呃可能会遇到的情况，种种的变化吧，这就是我们现在临场比较厉害的一个点吧。我想对这些黑子来说，我我知道我们一直以来我们队伍的争议很大吧，我不在乎黑子们说什么，我只知道我们的团队潜力很足。Where obviously we can talk about the interview there with Chichu and how well Haodong did on bind. First map removed uh, in the veto. Not really surprised by that one. <laughs> I wouldn't want to play against that man either. But the fact is, he's had a decent first half, but it's mainly been a team effort. And I do feel like a couple of the pieces were missing in that first half. Now, the The thing that works with this comp for Gen G is those executes around that double flash. The the dizzy flash combo that you can throw out with KO is fantastic. So hopefully they're going to be able to get off the mark here. Otherwise, they're going to have to head into split, which has been an amazing map for EDG. Yeah, it's been tough so far. Like you said, that that get going, Lucky. It's hard not to be drawn to. Oh, it, he's dead. Well, that's about as poor a start as you could get for the poor guy. He's got the one kill, no assists on the back of it, but his teammates. Gonna pick up the pieces here in the pistol. Already finding a lot of value is Meteor, and he's got right. backup. Even if they take him down now that he's super low or hear his steps running away, they should not assume that there's another player around here. It's free for texture. He's also not being off to a great start. A lot of whiffed up shots, but this one, it couldn't get any easier. There you go. Smoggy down, nobody left. 1v3, Meteor low, but everyone else is healthy. And the time is on Gen G's side. This will be a Impressive clutch, to say the least. He's got the first already. Okay, maybe there is a chance. A meteor down below quickly shuts it down. Big round for Gen G to get on the board. Yeah, you can take the man off the duelist, but you can't take the duelist out of the man. Meteor has been clean so far in this game. 17 and 10, really putting up a lot of numbers individually, but also just finding space. Now, that was basically what he did this round, just while the rest of the action was going down elsewhere on B long, just manages to get through that mid position and have, find that initial fight. It's going to put them at least, well, if they convert this round within touching distance. And that, as said, that's all they really need. Like a lot of the games that we've seen from them, they've managed eight rounds over on this attacking side. So they can easily get this over the line. And wow, what a start to have already. Khan Khan down, one of the main danger players. Because you have to bear in mind, EDG have been unbelievable with their pistols. Even when they have nothing, they've managed to do a lot. Oh yeah, they, they were a very scary team when it came to those Ecos and what we're seeing right here for EDG. Four players stacked up and ready to go. Flash out, the kill not coming in onto the little guy. So the plant has been secured. EDG, numbers thinned out. And that defensive side doesn't stand a chance at this stage. You have to imagine. Chichu, 35 HP in a 1v3 with a Sheriff in hand. And two of his opponents have rifles with a double peak setup. I don't know how he hit that shot, but thank God Texture was up top to cover. Yeah, they've made that one really costly, though. Three players go down, so it's definitely not ideal. And I believe they lost at least a Guardian in that round. So yep. it's not like you had a load of pistol players alongside them. So I, I think they could be very happy with that, especially when, for the majority, that was them fighting up against an afterplant. So... I think the EDG have done well to make that one as costly as possible. And because of that, well, Lucky is only going to have himself a pistol. We'll see, though. These a site takes is where I've really enjoyed watching this squad play. I think EDG know that. They've got three players here initially. 
no early control is taken by the side of Jan G. They've also put an alarm bot to cover the walk up. I mean, that's a very aggressive stance. I don't think we saw that from EDG on their attack side at all. No turret to cover their back either. Where is that being placed? It must have been destroyed early. And for EDG, he said three players on A. They're still there. But the drone clearing out some space might cause that rotate to come through. I just wonder if Gen G are planning to go back here with Meteor still being so far up or if he's trying to sneak behind them, which it looks like that was the idea. Not very successful. Oh, now you're going to have Lackyard looking to try and lead the charge. There was a snake bite down. I don't know if that's actually going to deny it. No, it isn't. Uh, far managed to reposition, so that's something at least. Already, though, with that man advantage and Chichu on a fast flank. Bear in mind, because they lost Meteor, they don't actually have any flank watch. He is just walking up behind them. This is looking like some of the freest kills he's ever going to have. Manages the first, but now he's just a nuisance and continues to be a flawless round coming out of the side of EDG to put themselves back on the board. Yeah, this is a big round. I mean, as soon as they take down Meteor, they make the realization the push wasn't coming in there from the drone earlier, from the lack of footsteps and follow-ups, and the lack of entry. There, there was no dash in, there was nobody taking the space, no flashes, just a guy sneaking up. That's clearly a lurk. Immediately, the decision is made to go on that flank, and, and it was the right call. The value found absolutely massive. But it was one of those rounds for Gen G. You're not going to be happy to give it away, but... It's somewhat expected you don't get a lot of damage. I, I do think they'll be a bit upset that they got none. Yeah, no, for sure. It means that now the economy can really build up for EDG. They'll have another buy, and also, in terms of alts, getting that little bit closer. Now there is already one online. That null command available. I like the audacity of Khan Khan to play this spot again. He got a kill from that in the last round. So you'd think it's going to be immediately checked, and I think it may have been. I don't know if Munch can caught the angle, but Khan Khan definitely saw him. And here comes that double flash, but he's managed to avoid both. And Khan Khan, you can't allow him to survive. And these sort of possessions just continues his aggression. Karen, the only one left. He does still have the spike. He's going to try and get the reps off, but Chichu picks him out of the sky. I think it's fair to say he expected that. <laughs> Very nice crosshair placement from him. I assume that wasn't just a reactive shot because that would be a little bit ridiculous. Double digits for EDG on the back of that round. And you know, just looking at this, it's so smart. Kong Kong falls back, allows the contact to be taken by nobody, and then goes back out into heavy traffic. Oh. Yeah, you can see he was thinking about it. He tried to equalize things into a 2v2, at least use the res as a bait to force a fight. But it's not worked out. Ten <laughs> rounds for EDG. Economy absolutely stacked. And Gen G going to be in trouble. <laughs> he is no more. Nice early utility. This is just making them very paranoid about middle. And you can see there's a lot of bodies looking around this area. Yeah, the thing is, the only real danger... Wow. <laughs> This Sky. man is always a danger, but I mean, the only real danger in this round for EDG is that Viper's pit. Like, if they can get that into a position where the weaponry can actually become valuable, that's so filthy. They've used it to force them back. They're pushing them into Khan Khan. They're looking to just feed him frags. That's such a disgusting use of an ultimate. Just like, here you go, Khan Khan. Farm. Yeah, it's not even a time thing. There's still 50 seconds yeah, left yeah. on the clock. It's just really locking them into a box. Fish in a barrel for Khan Khan on the first as Gen G now look to take the site, but no matter, well, I was going to say where they go, they don't even get a chance to. Sprayed through the smoke immediately. Two players holding on the next fight, and Khan Khan clean as the final one comes through. And again, we're not going to see any damage dealt. A flawless round for EDG. And if you're on this attacking side, it feels like they're just running headfirst into a brick wall. This is an opportunity as they get the rifles out. But, Tom, it, it could be their last real opportunity. Some ultis online, some rifles in hand, and EDG two rounds away from taking it. I'll be honest with you. The way this match is going so far, this could be a statement from EDG. Cool. Because they, they play versus Paperx, a team they've never been able to beat. They beat them in a, a long four-out series. They come in here, this is a map 5-0 for the side of Genji, and they're going into Split next, which is their best map. If they just demolish Genji here, I think we have to start switching our expectations. And for the side of Genji, well, they 
we heard from Munchkin earlier, this was going to be the time that he manages to get his revenge. It is not looking likely right now. This drone's going to get so much information as well. Here comes the dash and the dash Uncon as well. He is repositioning and <laughs> caught falling out of the sky. Uh, Smokey's made it out. And she Karen goes down trying to kill him. Oh no. Chi Chi has managed to get that kill. I think he was up top. Counter flash, but it shouldn't matter too much. The HP is so much in favor of their opponents. I don't know how EDG are going to find it. A gap in here. Oh, Tex just kind of got lost a little bit. No cover either. Somehow we're back in a 3v3. Yeah, the EDG have managed to create their own opportunities. The real problem, though, is the time on the clock and the amount of EDG, or sorry, Gen G players tucked away. EDG make the call. They go aggressive to try and root these players out of post plant positions, but Meteor has got an angle, and up top, they've spotted that there's not one but two players ready to pounce. A good response from yeah. Gen G. The gap is only four. It's obtainable, but this road is filled with peril. Yeah, I, I just, I'm not sure I feel like I believe at this point. There, there hasn't been too many convincing rounds, even when Genji have been winning it. We have multiple flawless rounds already from EDG in this half. Like, look, they're buying in with an operator and can still comfortably buy this round and the next. So this is already where the game changes. They also had to use the Thrash to actually be able to take the space. They're not going to have that one in this round, but they are one away from a lockdown. Already, a lot of information garnered by the side of EDG. That initial knife has spotted the majority of players. Viper's Pit could be thrown in here. Karen's actually rotated in very early, and they've got such an aggressive mid position that they can actually hold this spot and keep three players within the site. And similarly to what they did with the lockdown, if they throw Viper's Pit in here, it may just be used to deter. I don't know if that will have connected. I don't think it did. Doesn't look like it. Player slightly out of the circle, especially with the height of it. Flash in deep, but oh, no, he already saw him. Well handled to find the first. The numbers sit towards Gen G with the side under their control, and now the actual advantage. Four versus three. EDG on the fight back. They've got a flank underway. They've managed to sneak their way up pretty close with that turret down. And they've got a lot of control, but Genji have to be aware of this. And even as the turret comes back up for a moment, it's too late. They've already oh. gotten past, and it's Khan Khan, the danger man. Now operator in hand, dash online, blade storm in the back pocket, and he's making his way forward. He's making noise while the rest of his team come in to fill the gaps, and the players spot it up top. Ooh. That's an ambitious way to try and take that fight. Munchkin's actually got an opportunity now, but Smoggy saves the day for EDG. That could have been a way back through for the attacking side. Instead, it's 12 to 7. EDG on map point on their opponent's map pick. Yeah, this is the thing that's now become peculiar because although Meteor has probably been the best player individually for Genji, that's a couple of times now where I feel like they've been boxed in either from him dying and just not realizing his util gone, or in that case, him being so far forward that his util goes offline. Now, that, that's a mistake that you just can't have. You're in a man advantage. He doesn't need to be that far forward. And if he is, somebody else needs to be aware of it. Those are mistakes that if you give those over to EDG, you're done. You can't allow Kankan that much space. This is it. It was a small window. And I think, obviously, a lot of this impact coming out of Smoggy popping the ult. This just delayed Gen G's info allowed that gap for Konkan to sneak up behind. Five opportunities to close out this map and send us to split, where EDG will look to close the door on Gen G's run. This is a scary time. The Gen G, they looked very, very good regionally, but well, well they, they, it was a big challenge. They also beat Loud. That's true. <laughs> yeah, like, like, that's absolutely. the thing. It's like they, they look good regionally. They beat Paybreaks. They beat Loud. They beat DRX. Like These are all teams that in the past would have beaten them, all three. Three out of three times so, in the case of Paper X. So they have been massively improving, but the fact is, right now, Gen.G look a little bit flat, and they're making errors that I, I just didn't really expect to see on their map choice on one of their best maps. It is it is not what you want to be seeing. And as I said, there are a few maps that I would heavily hand over to the side of EDG, and one of them is split. Funnily enough, the other one is actually Breeze. <laughs> I, I've not enjoyed it. Like, Gen.G have had some rough games of Breeze, so they lose this map, and well, EDG have two opportunities on maps that I favor them on to close out this series.
Well, you know, four ultimates is usually a very strong position, but more so for EDG. If they had four, they could dump them all into a round and just claim one round win, move on to the next map. For Gen G, they have to be a bit more conscious of how they use these. So obviously off rip, you're going to see the Bladestorm pop to make up for the economic disadvantages. Munchkin also using his ultimate, the Null Command, I mean, robbing them of their abilities if they're close enough, and a Viper's Pit committed. So I said they need yeah. to reserve them. They have dumped them into this round with a lockdown being the only thing they'll carry through to the next. I don't know if they will. <laughs> That's the thing, if, if they keep it. Yeah, the Judge investment, I like it from Munchkin. He's going to play a close corner within this Viper's Pit. I feel like they almost need this one just to keep their economy strong, and they are utility dumping already. Tex just going to pick off one, but so much util thrown in to clear him out. It's easier said than done, though, as he takes out Chichu along with it. Nobody trying to clear this back line. Somehow, Khan Khan's found another. They may not get to use that ultimate at all, because they're being picked apart. It's left all on to Caron, but the time is ticking low. If he gets this kill, it's surely done, and it will be. But he's going to go down with it. That was meant to be an economy builder as they spam all their ultimates bar one. And they don't even get a single player out alive. Yeah, that's, I mean, just take a look at the credits. No one's able to get their full shields alongside the rifles. Maybe one player is, but that's about it. This is going to be a really tough position to play from because, like we said, there's almost two ways you could look at it. Save the ulties and, and try to use one, maybe two, incrementally tick them over and use them as safety nets in these rounds, or dump them and build that economy. So you've got rifles. This is this is the well, worst it, it of both worlds. It came down to Red Bull Clutch. That, that's, that's all you really yeah. need to know. So and now the, they've got it was clutched by the spike. <laughs> I also, I, worth mentioning, I like EDG's approach to just not play heads up into the Viper's Pit to move around the back and try to contend for the, the back site all the way down that laneway. It, it's a good idea, and you can see it, it very nearly worked for them. I think if G had slightly less ultimates Where's pop, he going? the round would have fallen away. This man's crazy. He hasn't even popped his dash yet. Yeah, he also doesn't know that someone's already crossed to the other side. So this this really is a very, very audacious oh! play. He's, he's dead. He's definitely okay. dead. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that was maybe slight misinformation, but even still a filthy shot to open. The take in the meantime has come in onto the B site. Three. <laughs> so what? No. A single bullet tapped and Chichu just ruins his opponent. They're not even going to get the spike down. And now this is a problem. Things become so much more difficult. The spam oh, through from no. nobody is so clean. And now Texture, the hero, the man that has been highlighted throughout this tournament so far. He's got to find three to try and save them. The spike is down. Nobody has already spotted him on the angle. There is no hope. EDG comes through with a dominant victory when it comes to map number one. And they have their choice next. Yeah, this is where it gets scary, Tom. Like you said, uh, you said off camera coming into today that after we saw the veto, it looks like we're probably going to go to that map three, right? We're set up for both teams to take yeah. their pick. Will Gen G now find themselves quite a bit behind in this series with Split coming up next and Breeze afterwards? Don't go anywhere because we'll be breaking this one down after the break. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that old thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Apple Watch SE all on us, only on Verizon.
Hey folks, I'm here with Coach After and Luna for the translations here. Congratulations on Map 1 victory. Uh, what was it about the Gen G Icebox that uh, you had identified and you wanted to try and take advantage of, and which of course led to your victory? 这个问题想要问到的是在森寒东港这张图你是怎么样找到他们的弱点找到了自己的优势并且拿到胜利的呢很多次那种前压都是打得特别明显的所以我们其实只要怎么讲按兵不动先听对面给出来什么声音我们再从一想好我们的解决方法就行了 um, like the day before they play with Loud, uh, just as uh, the same icebox, we have already do the research and they wow. almost like we know all what we, will they play mm -hmm. in icebox. And also in today, they have a lot a very obviously like pushing forward. Yeah. And we just see that and we do our move. Oh, and That's if all. there's one thing that EDG does, is their moves. Good job, coach. Good to talk to you as always. Back to you guys. A dominant showing answer. from EDG, 13 to 7 against Gen G. Hello, Wingman. Thank you so much for opening us, by the way. They grabbed Gen G's map pick away from them. And I feel like, Mimi, this was, uh, I mean, we have many things to say about this match for sure, but this was painful for Pacific, I feel. Yeah, it really had to be, because EDG, it felt like this game was just trouncing over Genji the entire yeah. time. In, in that first half, they were going for like crazy double lurks with only three people hitting the A site, but that three strong hit was still winning out. These Genji players were so often playing forward, taking early fights, so they never, whenever they were actually playing the retake, they were down yeah. numbers and they couldn't properly combo this KO Gecko. There was eight opportunities for a retake. Genji won none of them in that first half because they were getting picked apart in these early rounds. Back. I love the fact that in that MVP graphic, we see Lackey at the end and we do not see the assists, just a KD, because it is probably one of the first times that I see a Gecko getting one assist in such a long map. The fact that they were n getting no Reddit out of it, we were seeing it round by round, how the KO and the Gecko were not merging together because EDG was actually playing for the ego play in that instance. And Denji has done something very, very, um, let's say wrong for them uh, coming into this map matchup and it's enabled Kang Kang to go crazy. Absolutely. I mean, Kong Kong got the same number of kills this map as Lucky has had the entire tournament <laughs> thus far. Go he was, <laughs> it's just true. And I mean, Kong Kong was getting to feast on them. I, I think yeah. we're also seeing some, some lapses in awareness from Gen G. This totally. round in particular, yep. where EDG, I think, really having a great understanding of how Gen G plays this map. They commit really hard on their attack mm. to these execs with the double flash combo, and they're going for these fast flanks. They, they were so far ahead the curve on these rotations, so they on their defense were just destroying with these floods. I think it also has to do with the fact that they knew that on the defense they screwed up a lot of times, right? So that gets into your head, uh, it gets into like who is in charge of what, and that awareness of the map and the control that you have literally leaves your brain, and that opens the window for EDG to do this kind of thing. Yeah, and I'm kind of ex exasperated here because this is such a contrast to what we yes. normally see from Gen G. This is a team when I watch them in Pacific that I'm so impressed with their protocols, with the way that they're slowing down these rounds. They're playing proper, they're thinking about about these things like the flanks, but it really slipped away from them this time. And it, it's it's a real risk of losing the series now. Uh, totally. I mean, this is not the Gen G that we saw from Pacific, right? They were so unsure of themselves. They were so timid. And it's because like, you know, it's because of that, that EDG was able to sense that they could be bullied and they took that opportunity, right? The score line that we mentioned earlier, like 13 to eight, that did not reflect how, um, you know, one-sided a lot of yeah. rounds looked. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, uh, Genji made the same mistake yet, uh, uh, when they played against Loud, then today they chose to go to Breeze, it didn't go the way. They chose Icebox, didn't go the way. But now looking into the agent select, what can we expect here, uh, Mimi, on the side of Genji on the attack? Yeah, so Genji here, they're playing the default comp. I think we need to see a yeah. lot more out of Meteor. This is one of those maps where he's playing the jet, where they're rocking with that double duelist composition. I, I think this is an opportunity for them to kind of reinstill confidence. It's a comp they've played a lot. It's something they're very comfortable with. And they have, I mean, honestly, some good ideas. Take early map control with the double dive. Have a lot of you.
Bubble on your defense for Flood retakes. I think yeah. this is a little more comfy. Yeah, and moving away from the Astro, having a little bit more utility. And also, we've seen it a lot on the stage, playing with that Defen and with that um, a blind for the Omen has been a difference maker in many, many of the splits. Gen G got dismantled on map one. EDG here, if they can close out on split, a chance for the number one Chinese team to lock their spot. Well, in let's playoffs. find out. Let's toss it back to your casters. Here's Mitch and Tom. Thank you so much to our wonderful analyst desk yet again. As it looks like we're ready to dive on into map number two, Tom Split. We didn't have a lot of hope before the break. Has, has anything crossed your mind since that makes you confident that Gen G are going to take this one to a map three? I like the swap. I like that they've swapped away from Astra and gone into the Omen. I think it just allows for a little bit more burst in their plays. Like, uh, it, it removes a little bit in terms of some of the executes, some of the cool stuff you can do uh, with obviously like the Astra utility and also the ult. But ultimately, I just think having that paranoia, being able to set up a little bit more, I think it's going to benefit them quite a bit. Again, though, I do think we need to see quite a bit from that double duelist. Uh, Meteor and Texture, they are both insanely strong on these duelists, but oh, so is nobody. And he's going to go almost immediately. Does take one with him, though. Well, the Fnatic Classic finds one as Kon Kon escapes with his life. They made it here in some way. <laughs> They're living on. Well, let's see if he can find any more with his low HP. He's actually going back out to aggress for some information. This is a risky play, but he's cleared a lot of control. But it's up close Fine Munchkin play. that I'm worried about. As the peak comes Ooh. through. Nice connection down to 47, but Munchkin finding that kill keeps him alive for the clutch. The one versus two that he finds himself in, a 3K to close this one out. And the first player he has to deal with is up in heaven. He hasn't realized that. And so that will be his downfall with a defuse coming through from the Omen on EDG. It's one to zero. Yeah. Team Solid start from them once again, and I, I think this is the thing. They're always going to be pushing and pulling around, especially on that A site. We saw that multiple times yesterday from Nobody, always happy to get up in his opponent's faces. And I think this map is the one where he might be most comfortable individually. Like, we saw him have a really poor performance, come onto this map and just be unbelievable. So, not a great sign after he's just had a very good map, and now going onto this as well. And I think for Gen G, just one of the main worrying factors here, was obviously coming into this map, they are starting on the attack side. Now, normally you'd look at this composition and go, oh, well, that's fine. You've got double duelist, you've got the sort of explosive nature of this composition, but they had a really rough time the last couple of times they played on the attack. In fact, even in a 13-11 match, they only got two rounds on attack. Well, this should be an easy farming round with Gen G just left down to pistols. And oh. An opportunity for them to get a little bit done there, but... No shots connected with just the one falling of Haodong. A good opportunity to build the economy. Seems to be just around the corner. There has been a retrieval. Caron posing a little bit of a threat with the Bulldog, but his HP is being chipped away at. Down to 70 now. Good flash. The flank of nobody has caught Munchkin completely off guard. Cleaned up on this B site. EDG find their second. Here's the real challenge, though, as Gen G pull out the rifles. Yeah, they've gone quite heavy into the Bulldogs, though. Clearly feeling confident that they can get it done with these weapons. So it's not going to be the, the worst purchase in the, in the world. Still a lot of opportunities for them to try and find something in. Nobody going to go on to the Stinger. And honestly, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see it. That said, he's very good at getting up close in their face. And this is where we get to see if they can get off to that flying start. Because let's be real. In the last map, Lackia had a Howler. And, and for the most part, Texture got shut down. Then two players, they're going to have to be impactful here because Lakia has a lot of the setup utility that they're going to be running. And while me, well, Texture is Texture. He, he needs to be fragging. Well, this is it, right? Uh, again, we mentioned Texture wasn't necessarily as hot as we were expecting on the previous map. Lakia, I mean, it's unlucky. He's going to have that video made about him on Twitter. It's, it, nobody had it yesterday, <laughs> the day before. Now, it, now, it's, now it's his turn, I suppose. Hopefully not two maps in a row, though, as we know what Lackey is capable of. Genji up close, but it's Kon Kon having pushed through the wall that will find the kill. A blast pack down to deter further aggression, and he's out scot-free. Advantage for EDG, which is so valuable in a round like this. Yeah, they already managed to win the bonus in the last map. Bear that in mind. That was the 5-0 start that they had. Haodong just trying to play with his opponents and a little bit of space being taken. Chichu, oh, he got the timing spot on. Means he's going to just push them back. 40 seconds left, and as of right now, Genji have no control. They're only just making their way into mid. 
Like, this is such a slow attempted take. It's getting very, very scary for them. And they even still had a nade on the other side to deter them even more. Smoggy still got the stun in back pocket as well, but it's not going to be used till they dive onto site by the looks of things. How Dong spotted and now challenged oh, nice. by Munchkin. Good kill found, but it's Khan Khan. It's returning like for like. Oh, nade down nade. is perfect. It's uh, not going to be planted anytime soon, and time is running out. Just six seconds left with nobody all alone. He's not able to deny plant going down, but he knows where both players are, at least roughly. Snuck his way past around the back of the site. They don't know that just yet. But I like the idea to group up together and Caron before the heal even comes through. Closes the round out. Two to one. Costly. Good damage from EDG and great potential for them to have won that. Yeah, I, I think that's the scariest prospect is Khan Khan's nade could have finished it. If he lands the shot, he could have finished it. But Gen G do manage to hold on and at least convert the round this time. They're not out of the woods yet, though, because as mentioned, that was a bonus. That was Bulldogs and a Stinger. Now they come in with the full rifles, one off a showstopper as well. So Ultimate's definitely closer to coming online. And those duelists are still yet to show up over on the Gen G side. It's early days, but it can't go on for too much longer. Again, that's uh, that's the anti bonus round coming out from Gen G. Two kills or two players left standing. Their economy is going to be chipped away at, as we can see. There's three players very low on credits, and the big problem being that EDG close to having a very valuable ultimate. All we need is Kankan -Kan to find an orb or a kill, and he's been pretty consistently finding at least the one Ooh. in some rounds. So massive safety net potentially there for them later on. Gen G early challenge, good damage on the one player that can't be healed back up. And they're happy with that. You know, they've deterred some aggressive control and started the move towards middle. The only thing, Tom, is that there was a flash that just popped by nobody. It saw no one was there. Yeah, and the, the tiger dog. goes through. No one else here. That's a lot of information. And with the tiger not being heard by Gen G, they don't know how much of a read EDG have on their current play. They've been so good at this. They're similarly on Icebox, just being able to get so much information and then just play off of it. They're going to have two players watching into mid, two players on the B site. Looking at Haodong as well, look, they've even got the stun at the back, two flashes, a paranoia, but like they have so much utility for this take-in. Already though, great start. Meteor, even while blinded by the paranoia, is gonna be able to find one, and he gets the second as well. The duel is finally coming alive, but here comes that showstopper. They have to back out. There's only 20 seconds left. Any time that could be bought could be paramount. It's done so much damage, 21. And well, now the HP healing back up onto Caron. He's going to TP to the other side of the map, but look how close nobody is. A flash just to try and catch him. He's going to be able to get the plant in, but look at where the rest of the players are. They've got to go sprinting to try and get back in here. It is oh. shaky from Chiju. I don't think it's going to matter, though. There's nothing they can do to stop this. It's a very peculiar round, and it ends with a Red Bull clutch. Just some good old hard yakka. Standing in between us and victory. Well, Tom, this has unfortunately swung back the way that we feared it would. EDG finding the round in, in a very unusual manner, considering the, the TP. I mean, it was a last second attempt to get that spike down. It wasn't going to find its way to the B site, that's for sure. Well, the, the thing is, they're not baiting out any of the utility. Like, I'll be honest, what Meteor got away with there while being paranoid is a lot more than I was expecting. They still had all of Breach's kit, all of Haodong's kit on Omen as well. Yeah. I think all that was used was nobody's utility. And sure, it doesn't come back anymore, but that you, you need to be getting rid of some of that utility at some point in the round before you go running in with 30 seconds left. This is disgusting. Yeah, no way you expect this. Reacting to it, <laughs> well, apparently <laughs> okay. is easy enough. All right. Texer just tanked a shotgun to the face. chinchu has got a 50-50. If he checks left, he... Oh, oh. no! What? Oh, Munchkin! A chance for more as well. The shots didn't land, but... Oh, oh. This, this has been a bit of an unusual start to things. EDG have the advantage in rounds, but not in this one. The man advantage oh, was was to Gen G. Now it's just right about even with a rifle recovered by Lakia and movement towards this A site. But TP in, Hao Dong's in position to stop them from easily walking into this A site. And he's checking heaven. Lakia needs to win this fight on the way out. In fact, timing will be a key factor for him. The flash goes towards the elbow. It seems like he's safe to cross with EDG too far away to do anything at this point with Smoggy still in spawn. Again, the time getting a little bit low, but 
the aftershock won't be placed before anything else can be done. Lackey is still having his tiger. Oh, he is going to be able to spot the man in the corner. How dumb, though, not stunned up. It doesn't matter. Even still comes back into the trade. Smoggy with his full belt of utility still online. Hasn't had to use any of it just yet. But instead, he's going to potentially just go walking through this smoke. And Lackier, the man who was silent on the last map, speaks loud in this round as Gen G get their second. Two big kills from him, denying the vent control and then closing out the round as well. This is what we wanted to see. Lackier waking up, finding his form, finding his footing, as it's three to two, a one round gap between them. And again, looking at how some of these rounds have gone down, you know, in the previous map, it was feeling pretty much a uh, favor to EDG from the get-go. After the, you know, the first five rounds, essentially, they didn't really take their hands off the reins. Here, though, Gen.G are already punching back. Yeah, they managed to do it with a low buy as well. The pistols finding a lot of value, and that success could make all the difference. They've already realized that nobody's close, and... While having that judge, you really don't want to pressure into this man just yet. Interestingly, you've got the lurk out from Meteor on the other side of the map, but it does seem like EDG are fairly happy to just sit passive. And that's the thing, as I said, I, I don't feel like Genji have done a fantastic job of baiting out any of the utility from the side of EDG in these early rounds. This time, though, Paranoia not online, but they still have all of Viper's util, and in this case, the wrong read. Yeah, even though the bird just went up from nobody and caught those players outside B, again, the problem is always going to be it could just be one player, one person lurking, catching that flash and running straight to A. But They're giving him a smoke. As we can see, this isn't how it's playing out. The judge, it could do a hell of a lot of damage up close like this. But the smoke is suspicious. They know there's something afoot, and yeah. Texter's dealt with it perfectly. Well handled by Gen G, and that's the real threat in this round dealt with already. Yeah, when you put out a smoke like that, there, there's going to be a part of you that's thinking, okay, there, there has to be someone within it. And I like the fact that Gen G play it safe. Boombot and Seekers gives everything away. They know that the site is clear. And, and that's the thing, they haven't had a lot of rounds, even throughout the series thus far, that have been particularly clean. Now, though, what can be found from EDG on the way back in? Probably not a lot. Smoggy at least will be able to find one, drop an extra weapon, but other than that, expectations desperately low and oh, Karen's taking a little bit of damage but he'll fade out of there before his life is lost for Smoggy now the value might actually come from going down to the spike yeah that's definitely the game plan for him as another round swings to Gen G and again I, I like their usage of their ultimate the lackey puts out the seekers just to confirm there's a player close in that smoke they have a boom bot following it up it allowed them the the perfect timing to swing in on the back of that utility and catch a player repositioning around the corner at three to three it really is anyone's game and that was my worry was that we'd come into this map after the first being pretty dominant in favor of edg and we would see this be a very quick evening I think, uh, at the very least, we're owed a close map between yeah. these two teams, if not a third one. Well, normally EDG are stellar when it comes to this defensive side, so... And as said, Gen.G had some rough times when it came to their attack, so this is already a, a pretty decent start from them. If they can keep things even throughout, I think they'll be quite content. Already a fantastic start. Meteor has been great throughout the series on an individual level. That's a little audacious, though. Oh, trade out with the showstopper will keep it in their favor and Kanka just goes through the movement sublime and now just looks to try and get a little bit more rolling thunder's gonna leave texture completely stunned up but he hasn't been spotted one bullet is all he needs but Kankan's there again a third kill for him already and he needs the ace he's gonna look to try and get it hard but he's completely blinded already baiting them out a second flash and there is no hope I've seen that one before Mitch but it won't happen this time yeah, thankfully not. <laughs> Second flash, immediate peak, and you can see he just had nothing to do unless the spray landed on heads right away. It was done and dusted. Somewhere someone from Giant X is going, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> don't peek him. Well, considering a 4-3 to three score line and three ultis online, Viper's pit to play with as well. This was a big round for Gen G because they've left their opponents with no money, no credits to buy back up. It's going to be a scrappy buy for the defensive side. And so far, we've seen Gen.G be very clinical with dealing with these lower buys. They've not been giving away too much. They have a healthy economy because of it. 
They'll look to farm up an even better one right here and now. <laughs> okay, then. There's the Meteor we know and love. A lot of the time, we don't see him get to play that Star Duelist anymore, but with this one-two punch of him and Texture on this map, they are really starting to come alive. We mentioned him and Texture as clinical pieces to this puzzle. Carol, though, already just mowing down two of the remainder. Haodong, not particularly close to the angle and the action. Again, it just comes down to can he make this one costly? But the fact is, the economy now of Gen G is off the charts. You win an eco and then have a couple of cleaner rounds. He's still okay. actually killed the player behind through the other. It's a couple of guns lost, but ultimately for the side of Gen G, it doesn't matter. They are stacked for cash. Yeah, and, and even one of the players we saw there before we cut to the replay was Meteor. He had a judge, but he managed to upgrade to a rifle. And, well, oh, I. I with the economy that they have in play, there's not really going to be too much bother. <laughs> well, it's unsurprising. In the previous map, we had Genji call both of their timeouts the last towards the end of the game before things ticked over in EDG's favor. This time, it's EDG getting off to an early start. They want to have a chat with the coaching staff and come to a conclusion on how they want to run this next round because, again, they're going to be buying down to their last credits and that's going to put Gen G in a very advantageous position if they find this one. Facing into an eco, it could be seven rounds already. Yeah, I think as well, when you look at what's online for your opponent, you don't want to allow them to get into an afterplant. Having that Viper's Pit online for Munchkin is going to make things desperately more difficult if you're unable to deny. And also, you have a showstopper onto Kankan. So you can go for some of those set plays, put him into position. He has been thriving still, at least on an individual level, but. Over the last few rounds, I feel like Genji have just been a little bit quicker in the pace. They've not allowed them to hold Util to the late rounds. They've been taking control. And also just on, they're just looking a bit more confident in what they're doing. Like, you can see Meteor committing to these early fights and everybody following him in. That seems to be what's working, at least for now. now let's see where the response lies. By the looks of it, they might be about to go for another fairly aggressive piece as they've got no luck. That's something we've consistently seen for Genji as they now look to take some early control towards this B side of the map. Yeah, I mean, they have no control anywhere else, so there's not much of a backup plan here. The Showstopper, well, that's plan A, and it hasn't worked out. Those players slowed down, sure, split, but they've already got players towards the site. Meteor's in position, teammates coming in to rally alongside him, and the retake attempt from EDG, it's not going too well. Kills swinging in favor of Gen.G, trade after trade, and a three for Lakia for health, but there's not exactly too much they can do to take him down if he's hit him in those corners. Maybe Chichu needs a miracle snake bite to land. And it could come in off the back of the plant. It's Lakia attempting the plant. But they don't know just how low he is. Viper's pit activated, and that's going to oh. even the playing field a little bit. It was so close to taking him down, but now Meteor in the right place oh. at the right time. He's going to clear out both of them. The direct approach. Just working out perfectly for Gen.G, unable to slow them down, unable to stop them. I want to say as well, I think there was some gorgeous movement in there from Texture. I don't think there was a lot else in that round, but the showstopper's fired towards him, and he just backs out of there immediately off a blast pack, just flies backwards into the corner, and it hits nobody. That, that's the, the perfect thing for the side of Gen.G. They've dodged the showstopper, and that, that's the one thing that was really dangerous. Can't come in the right place at the right time. He was there, he got nothing. That's it, that's it. But hey, that ain't gonna happen too many more times from what we've seen. Thank their lucky stars as we go six to three. Gen G doubling up on the score line now. Look at, oh no, never mind. Look at this aggression coming out of texture. He's running it down towards Vance and he has certainly chased Kankan to the other side of the map. <laughs> and an impressive pace change from Gen G. And now they've got full mid control. Again, it, it seems like EDG have their players position well. And these are some of the rounds that worked out better for them. These slower paced rounds from Gen G. It's, it's been the quick moves in towards the site that have worked better for them. In terms of ultimates, not a whole lot online either. A Viper's Pit for Chichu, but where to place it will be the real problem. And starting to throw out some utility in towards this B site, but I can only assume 
with where their players currently sit. This is a ruse, and it's worked. It's pulled at least Kung Kung for the moment, but that stun is sublime. Now they'll have an extra player in to support. Nobody already watching, but he doesn't get either. Luckily, Kung Kung is there. Oh, and so is Chi Chi. Good shot to start and a follow up. That's sublime. 21 HP left. He's in danger, but he's got two players close to back him up. And with 20 seconds left, it's time to get that spike planted for Gen G. The last player standing will take Chi Chi down. But still three more, 15 seconds left. And surely this plant cannot be acquired. He'll tap it first to try and fade into a fight that doesn't go his way. Four rounds for EDG. It's a resurgence. So another foot in the door. But Gen G have been looking good, and because of the rounds they've won, there's not going to be any thought of an eco for the rest of this half. Oh, no. Not even remotely close. Again, though, it, it does seem like when they, they split up and play these slower rounds, a lot of the time it ends up biting them in the back. I, I, I think just sticking together and just playing as almost a death ball has been one of the major sort of benefits for them. I also think as well props need to be given to Smoggy. The, the stun there was just completely game-changing. Viper's Pit, though, immediately put down after what has been some tough executes for them to deal with on that side of the map. They're just going to section it off completely. Well, the pings here from the attacking side seem to be going in towards the spawn. I don't know what play we're about to have come through, but I'm excited to see it. It looks like they want to end towards the A site. And OK, pings go back towards heaven. Instead, that's going to be the play. Split heaven, put pressure on this A site, and have your lurker, this time it's Meteor, to pick them up as they start to rotate back. It's a nice idea. See how the execution goes with Seekers confirming the players are here. You can easily see those rotates come through. That's the idea that Meteor is playing off of. Look at this shift back towards heaven. They're ready to reunite, but Meteor can't go down. He has to maintain this control. Thought about walking into spawn. Instead, it's the sight on the back of a flash. A dash now up close to the pit. And as Chichu thinks about going outside of it, that could be the end of his life if he did. It's all down to timing. He's won the first, but Good that's trace. all he gets. Yeah, really nice trades. Lakia was well aware, and in fact, Meteor almost gets to kill himself. Kankan, Kan, though, you can't give this man that much space. Quickly takes two. This round is starting to fall apart. They know exactly where Texture is, but can't quite connect onto him. The Tiger's gonna do it through, but he runs through on the other side. Into the 1v1, but it's still Kankan. Kan. They just can't deal with this man. Again and again, he pulls off rounds that he shouldn't. And EDG, well, somewhat luckily, do get ever closer. A sensational play by Texture. That almost won them the round, just blitzing it, through it the smoke. It should have won them the It round. should have. It absolutely should have, if not for this man. That's gorgeous. And the return was straight through the yeah. smoke. One enemy remains. That's just disgusting. Okay, running through the smoke. That's even worse. But it works. And if it works, it works. Six to five, EDG. In prime position to equalize coming out of this. <laughs> That's what we like to see. Getting heated down there. Showstopper online for both sides. This should be an interesting one. It's right off rip. Both are you! That texture! A double kill! But there's still one man standing. Not anymore. This is Texture's round. Yeah. Anything you can do, I can do better. Spike planted. Now, well. For the remaining players, what do you even do? You've just lost the entirety of your B defense. Everybody was here waiting for this play to come through. Counter utility used to deny anything. That was the thing, the aftershock cleared a player out of position. It didn't matter. The paranoia wasn't even utilized in that initial take. To find any space here is gonna almost rely on a mistake. And why was it, you know what? The somehow uh, Smoggy has made this interesting. It won't matter though. He started this round, and he will end it. Texture one-ups his opposing raise. Well, oh, we had both showstoppers, Tom, but only one got to be fired. That is absolutely <laughs> gorgeous for Texture, disrupting the plan of his opponents and getting ahead by just an inch, just a second. That's all he needed. And a gorgeous ace to add to Gen G's momentum. Now seven rounds at the half. They're leading. And moving over to their defense, I'm excited to see what they've got in store for us. But what we've got in store for you is a halftime analyst desk. Take it away, guys. 
Seven to five in favor of Gen G this time. And you can kind of see the team waking up. You can see their energy rising as well, which is great because it is time for our Verizon high speed moment of the match, Mimi. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think fam number one, Gen G. Bitch. They weren't they didn't really, they weren't really awake. They were getting ran over. But coming into this map, they look reinvigorated. Their players in particular, like Meteor in this clip, were looking so much better. And also just their approach to the game. They're again playing these slow, very proper mid rounds on the attacking side. But I think they did a good job at finding the opportunities against EDG. And these double dive XX were tearing yeah. EDG up. Exactly, and we saw it especially on the last round with that ace. I think that of course for Genji is not going to be easy now moving onto the defense, we're seeing a lot of aggression. We're seeing a lot of mistakes and a lot of punishment coming from both of the teams. But I think that it's so based on individuality and some BS rounds, like the one where Kankan -Kan just gets the kill across the smoke after a brilliant play and push. Uh, and I think that the, it's kind of concerning, right, that this is go what it's going to come to. Absolutely. I, I think in the second half, EDG have a great chance at coming up back into this. Yes. They're playing this double initiator that is built around enabling Kung Kung on the dive. We saw it earlier second playing on this map, get absolutely eating up on Rays. This comp plays pretty similarly, where there's a lot of duels being put into one player succeeding, into getting space on those sites. And if Genji are making some of those same mistakes of Icebox on their defense, if giving these early opportunities to EDG, it could go a similar direction. EDG, they're one half away from making it again into those playoffs. They have to make us dream, Mika. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to start dreaming. Let's get the second half underway. Back over to our casters, Mitch and Tom. Thank you so much to our wonderful analyst desk for what could be one last time. As EDG on their attack side look to close out this series up against Gen G. It's their map pick. You know they're going to be comfortable on the attack. Remember, that means that Gen G chose to start on their attack side. Maybe it's the best hey. of what they've got planned already behind them. It went well. Oh. Hello. <laughs> I'm stuck on something. I'm stuck on nobody. Help me step. Wait, what? Either way. <clears throat> We are going to have... We'll just breeze right past that one, I suppose. The flash. Coming in. Nobody looking to take the space. Been a little bit quieter this time around. And yeah, not as pacey, that's for sure. EDG still just toying with that map control. It looks like they'll be taking the fight eventually. And it's Con Con and Smoggy to find the openings. Heaven completely under their control. Or so they think. There is a fill back in by Meteor, but, well... It doesn't look like EDG have decided on where they're going. The spike is still in spawn, checking for a flank. And they're just waiting for Gen G to make that move to re-clear the space. Player spotted up close, stun is good. And he's only bought himself a second as that smoke fades. Chichu lands this shot. Texture on 45, in a lot of trouble. Emerging from the smoke element. What? Surprise! How has he gotten all three? He was 45, now 15 HP with nobody all alone. The frenzy up close in heaven. He has thread the needle beautifully for that one. And with Texture being on 15 HP, to be honest, after what I just saw, it's anyone's game, but 14 seconds left. Nobody has to be so quick. And look at Texture, he's already here. This this could decide it. If he can speed his way through heaven, he might get the angle just after the plant. It all depends on where nobody's looking in the wrong way. Texture's got four. The pistol goes to Gen G. This guy's insane. I've had a lot, there's been a lot of plays the last couple of days on this map in particular that have left me speechless. I have no idea how he, he manages three kills here. What? Like the last two especially. Like that, that's better than anything you could ever dream to get from Four that position. Four bullets, Tom. Four bullets and he gets three kills on 45 HP. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> Give it to him. Oh, oh that's wonderful. We are in for a treat. The two Rays players in this match at the moment have basically been competing for who can make the most audacious play of the day. Well, that was a round that should have been for EDG, but for that man. And already, him and Meteor are showing why we talk about this double duelist coming into this map. If they were going to win this, if they were going to compete, they had to be fantastic. And you know what? They're doing all right. <laughs> all right is a, an understatement. You know, what we've seen so far, individuals hey. are coming online. Forsaken set the bar. <laughs> hey, listen, that's a bar that I think only he can jump over. But uh, 
Well, with 9-5 to five on the board, Gen G may well have that third map locked and loaded for us. Breeze in the back of EDG's mind. But the forefront is the fact that it's only a four-round gap. It's recoverable on the side of EDG. It's definitely a long road back. I think not helped by the fact that Texture got so many kills and is now one away from yes. the Showstopper. And also the other kills all went to Meteor, which puts him a few away from a Bladestorm. So even Ooh, yeah. if this goes badly, if he gets one or two kills and dies, that could be enough. They've actually got a great read as well. Three players set up, Tiger through. Now there is a judge coming out from Card Card. The push through on the other side, but the trades have come in. Kept things in their favor. They don't expect Meteor to be here. Why would you? Another man pushing into mid and Karen's there alongside him. Gen G could give themselves a massive boost if they could take this round away. And while Smoggy, he has now got some serious weight to carry. Three players spike in mid. And they have a decent idea of where he's coming from. And his opponents picked up a judge. Yeah, uh, picked up a judge and is sitting inside a smoke. So very best of luck to Smoggy here. Uh, blind spray is probably his best chance. He could Smoke. stun all of them. True, but he doesn't want to give it away. It's a contact play into a judge. And he got the contact he was looking for. 10 to 5. Double digits for Gen G. Showstopper online. Bladestorm close. And three rounds needed to pull this across the line. Oh, also EDG on an eco. So add up all those things, and it seems like it's a pretty hefty advantage towards the defensive side right now. Yeah, I'll be honest. This game has not gone anywhere near the way I was expecting it to go. And yet it has been incredibly enjoyable. <laughs> well, you, you did say you expected a map three, but... Not in this order. Yeah, the, the other way around. The, 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 journeys look, uh, the journey hasn't gone as planned, but we might reach the same destination. Exactly. Somehow, we've taken Just a Just like detour. you and your scooter. <laughs> this city's a little confusing sometimes. The GPS doesn't work. Nice shot by Meteor. Doubled up on as well. The Outlaw putting in work in this round to control middle. And for EDG, you know, this is somewhere they have been dangerous before. We said it in the last map. When they've got pistols, they were able to upset a lot of opposition. But Gen G seemed to have a real handle on it, never letting well, these disadvantageous rounds slip out of their control. This has genuinely Rarely. become a race for who's going to be number one on the scoreboard between Texture and Meteor. Kankan Kan is still, like, in a close third place, but those two have started to just completely run away with this one. But, you know, he's always terrifying. Guardian gets him a first. Now, he's actually a couple away. One more kill, even if he goes down. <laughs> he's so quick with it. A single bullet is all he needs. A plum. It's actually going to give him a showstopper, but he has to try and fall back from it. And actually, the defenders are going to use their own one. Karkos just found another one. Finally, it takes a bazooka to take him out. He's given some essence of hope for Haldon, but Tixi was blind. He, I don't even think he knew that he'd killed him. I expected to come out of this round and compliment Haldong. Uh, a fantastic paranoia and even better decision making. He made the realization there's a good chance they're stacked up, one above the other, firing squad to take the trade. Blinds the guy down below, takes the fight this against the top so player. Wait, where's this one? Nice. That, that crosshair didn't stop moving either. It went past him. He just clicked it at the right time. Yeah, I'd love to see this guy. You ever seen those arcade <laughs> games with the, the boxes that go left to right? You gotta stack them all the way on top of each other? He'll get banned. He'll he, he's out of the arcade be, three minutes in. They'll just go... So we've, oh, run it's out, a, we've run out of items. Hey, hey, that used to happen to me down at the arcade. The coin machines, they'd come over, unplug it. Oh, it's out of order. Oh, sorry about that. Some of those machines... You can, you can game the system. And that's exactly what this guy's been doing here. Texture's 21 and 12. Yeah. I mean, he, he like I said, he struggled last map. It didn't look too comfortable. But, I, well, a completely different face coming out of him. Yeah. It is a three-horse race for top of the board, but he's definitely leading the way. That round from Khan Khan could have gone down as one of the best. Unfortunately for him, he did get bazooka. So that, that that's one way to put him down. It seems to be the only way at this stage. 11 to 5. He seems like maybe the only player that could cause any issues here for Gen G because they now have six rounds to the good. Operator on the board for Meteor as well, who has also had a real step up. Bit of a slow start to this game, but that has quickly diminished. 
And now looking to just almost roam mid. They've got three players set up onto this B site. EDG spread. Just trying to play this one in a bit of a slower default. Problem is they've even used ults of their own in the last round. Kanka and I didn't actually notice it. He used his showstopper too, so that's now gone. Must have been dropped extremely quickly. I think it was he got showstoppered as he popped his. Yeah, I mean, he did actually oh. blast back up in the air. Yeah, true. How Dong, wrong way. Wasn't looking into the oncoming traffic. That's three players swinging out on B main. He doesn't even get the info that there's three of them there. It's the worst part. Gets shot in the back. Then you got two more players coming through Vent, but a reposition from Meteor. He is more than ready for this, but okay, it's the right rope. It's being taken. Textures dropped on B. Now you might start to think it's a B play. Although they've just heard them on the yeah. ropes. Yeah, now you're sticking around. Meteor's here. He's ready to fight. Although they'll give up control up top. It's that, not only the scope, but the blade storm backing it up that's been activated in heaven. And EDG, I mean, look, they're playing blind no matter where they go. But as we can see, it might be the wrong decision. Meteor's already considering the rotate. 30 yeah, seconds left. I think we're looking at Khan Khan and what can he find here? He's been stellar, and that's already the star they were looking for, leading the way into the side. He doesn't know there's another man behind him. Will be taken out, but that entry does enough. Puts things into a 2v2. Meteor Blade Storm out, maybe trying to deny any sort of plant, but hasn't been able to, and the rotation coming around from Munchkin, you'd think he may be. Wait a moment, he just does it all himself! Almost disrespectful to his opponents. It's risky, but it works for Meteor. It absolutely does. He found that space perfectly. And now that's a 12th round with this defuse coming through. It's going to be given to Munchkin. I, it, th I thought for a second, I was like, bro, you've just used your role. You're like, you're like I can get it again. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> at this stage, I don't know that either of those ulties are going to be online by the end of the game. Gen G have been snowballing. And we said it was a dominant scoreline on the previous map for EDG. That was 13 to 8. Well, here on their map pick, it could be 13 to 5. And there's a lot of weaknesses coming into this round for EDG. Well, I, I'm, you, I think you can just clearly see a confidence difference from the last 100%. map. hundred percent. Like the fact that Meteor, that is a 2v2. You wouldn't be surprised for thinking it was a 1v2 because Munchkin was still making the wraparound all the way through spawn. He's like, don't worry, bro. I've won the round. Uh, let's go next. Oh, you on the defuse? Oh, hello. That's a bit problematic for Munchkin, but he is going to be able to get out there with not too much of a scrape. Immediate. This is exactly what I'm talking about. He has Lackier in pocket here, to help here. him out here. Smokes could be gone within a second because this man is just not missing. He's now one away from texture, by the way. Both players have been unstoppable. Yeah, it seems like a formality with the way rounds have been going. The fact that it's a 5v3 and the amount of hero plays that would be needed from EDG to fight their way back into a seven round in a row. A seven round deficit. And yeah, it has to be consecutive. I like the idea, sending the really slow play through middle to try to find a gap. They've not seen anyone in Vance move towards heaven. Munchkin's in position. He's got one, Spike and not the follow-up. But Khan Khan has another challenge. It's Meteor Zop that's come through with a dash still online and a player sitting down below. That's Lakia, who seems to be destined to close this round out. There it is. Not just the round, but the map with it. A 13 to 5 statement from Gen G. <laughs> they were down and out on map one, but now we're going all the way to Breeze. Oh, well, Lucky is definitely having a great time there, right at the end, but that's the thing. You look at this scoreboard, Khan Khan, 22 kills, Texture, 22 kills, Meteor, 22 kills. They all had fantastic performances. The difference is it was much better teamwork from Gen G. Either way, we're going off to a break because this needs a third map to conclude.
Well, Gen G take it to a map number three as they tie up the score. It is now one to one in this series. And we saw a much better showing from Gen G over here. Yes, there were some still small mistakes that were happening, but this is, of course, a Gen G that we are far more ready to see. Yeah, it absolutely is. The difference between map one and map two in this series is Nine unbelievable. <laughs> and the difference in performance as well is insane. You play the double duelist comp, you need your duelist to go crazy and my God, did yeah. Genji's duelists go crazy this map? Exactly. Thank you to Space who gave us some of the crazy stats. Actually, both duelists plus the 50% success in that first blood. 67% of the 4v5s won by Genji. 70% of their post plan and 100% of their retakes. Whatever says on the scoreline doesn't really matter. We know that it was about individualities and the Genji was always supposed to win this match. Yeah, and I think that's that's so important for Genji as well because they're really mm. like a vibes-based team. When you watch them winning the, their match the other day against Lad, you laugh, but I think no, that no, is no, a we're real the vibes. thing. Vibe checked. Yeah, when yeah. they're playing well, you see them out there laughing, I'm because giggling I'm, I'm, with I'm each other. Your head, I'm trying to understand you better. I'm getting to understand you better every time. Okay, well, you're ruining my vibes, <laughs> but Genji's are good. No, it, it, it is really good, and you can see them, right? You can see Texture suddenly, you know, jumping up and waving his hands like he usually does. You can see like how Lakia is as well, um, smiling, you know, and, yeah, and yeah. really carrying uh, the rest of the team with that energy. And I mean, for Gen G, I, I feel like they were losing a lot of rounds that they kind of had no business, or excuse me, for, for EDG, that they had mm. no business losing in this one, right? Like Gen G pulling off some crazy miracles with individual plays, but also like this bonus round, for example, was a huge moment for Gen G. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and how much of that is uh, put into those controllers, into both uh, Karen and Haodong, and all the smokes that we were seeing on to mid, all the spacing that the teams uh, were taking against each other, and probably, uh we were mentioning, right, those mistakes coming in from EDG, definitely coming into uh, the third map. We need to be keeping an eye on the duelist head-to-head. -head. I was saying, enabling Kankan to have a good game is a very dangerous game to play, and that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, and I, I feel like now with EDG, actually, they need that second win. They need that second win to come out if they're gonna, if they want to close out map number three, because I feel like on Breeze, this is a potential uh, aim duel, once again, a du duelist matchup that we're gonna see I mean, here between be Kankan and Texture. Ourselves. Breeze is like the, the aim check map in the yeah, pool, which sure. I, I think, honestly, I have no way which way it's going to go, judging on by how different the first two maps were. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, um, we're going to see a lot as well from Karen, who has to be pushed because he's up against yeah. Haodong, right? And that's the IGL who is carrying EDG through this run that we're seeing here. So it's a big test. I mean, like, you're up against a um, you're up against an IGL and you have a rookie who is just months into his professional career. Yeah. yeah, of course. And uh, and uh, coming on to the last map, we know that both of these teams on the previous uh, matches that they played, they had to win here in the last minute with the last trend just pushing it to the real limit. But for both of them, making it to playoffs means a lot. When we're talking about how the world has changed in the terms of Valorant, how the meta is swifting, Genji coming now into this stage, proving that they can make it to playoffs through two wins, I think that they will be such a staple for the team. Yeah, well, right now it is time for our HyperX Reflex moment of the day. And this one goes to... Texture. Least surprising sponsor segment pick uh, in the history of the world. Texture was insane. We can't talk uh, enough about how good this guy was. His raise has always been impressive. And I mean, this one is just the raw mechanics. Yeah, completely. And now that we were talking about that aim duel, the possibility of going just in that head-to-head -head against Kankan in this map on split, he had the support of a second duelist and the rest of the team just playing for them. Definitely the Vice were on their side for this one, but they need to keep it up for Breeze if they want to close it their way. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, now we have uh, both of these teams on their highest energy, right? You can see the exchange between both of the teams as well. They're up on their feet, they're out of their seats too, and they are ready to take it to Breeze right now, Mimi. You think about the history of, of this matchup between China and Pacific, it's been so back and forth. This time it's the new guard for Gen G. They have to prove why they beat Paper X, why they beat DRX, why they're here. They have a chance to book a spot in the playoffs, but so do Edward Gaming. We're into the agents like Gen G played the Yoru comp on this map and EDG play the old bog standard with Kong Kong on that jet. Yeah, I mean, uh, I like it. I like the Euro. I want to see more impact. I feel like the other day it fell super, super flat. The impact was not there, especially now it's starting on the, on the attack, but most so on that second half. Is he going to put that pressure onto the map? Same goes for Karen. I think that he had a great game, but it was a disaster was a bit lackluster. I'm looking at the flanks and how Genji can handle it. Last time they played this, they were getting lurks up holes 
on their defense, on the attack side. They were letting flanks come through. They really need to have buttoned down how to play because it's a big risk going to Breeze without Cypher. Well, the winner moves to playoffs and the loser will have to fight for survival on Monday one last time. Here's Mitch and Tom. Thank you so much, Mika, and our wonderful analyst desk, Tom, as we dive into this final map, the third of the series, the last of the day. I'm very impressed with what we just saw from Gen G. Do you want to put out a prediction for this one? No. All you right. Know what? No, I don't. Because so far, I said <laughs> that I thought uh, EDG would win the second map. Yeah. And I thought that Gen G would win the first map. So, um, yeah, no. You know what? I don't fancy giving a prediction. I'm just going to let it <laughs> let fair. it go at this That's stage. Fair. You know what's, what, what I'll say, though? I predict Gen G if it's going to be the same as last map, where Lakia lost one opening duel. One none. Other than that, it was exclusively <laughs> Meteor and Texture that took yeah. opening duel. I, it's rare you see that. The other two players absent in early fights. It was just these guys. So and with the success they've been finding, hey, I, I'm not going to ask you to change that. So the record that they have on this map for Gen G kind of stinks. It's Ooh. not been fantastic. They've lost it three times in a row to RRQ, Team Secret, and Loud. But according to Jen, who is obviously who does a lot of the Korean translations and interviews, she said that they feel really confident on this map and in this composition Leaks. in particular. So, yeah, I've, I've, I've leaked what she said. She can come find me if she wants. Either way. You're not winning that fight, Tom. I know. I'll let you know. Just like but I wanted Kankan. to say it that bad that I'm happy to be beaten up. <laughs> but just like Kankan Kan there, not winning that fight as he gets dropped on that defensive side. An aggressive push that's now left Haodong in a little bit of an isolated position if he didn't have two players right behind him. It's a pretty heavy stack up on B. And after finding that opening kill in this direction, <laughs> especially if they took down Haodong, they might consider just full blitzing the B site. That seems to be the plan, Tom, but there could be danger here. Still a trap on site. It gets destroyed and the cam's gone. A lot of control. Smoggy, though. Know, oh, okay. Never mind. No, no. What? Never mind whatsoever. That has just been a, a slaughter. Blink and you miss it. Every single member of the EG, EDG side is gone. And, well, that's exactly how you want to see it start if you are on that Gen G side of things. Clean, clinical. And that's the thing. Okay, it hasn't worked for them so far, this composition. But it's one I like. That you have two agents that can take a lot of map control. I think obviously the, the one sort of detriment to it is having that single initiator and not having the Cypher. That's the main worry. You can be flanked very easily. So it's something that they're going to have to definitely watch out for, but it allows for an awful lot of cool set plays. Well, early peak. Kankan -Kan wants to get involved. Marshall out. Headshots being looked for, but no bullets landing. And the aggression from nobody has been spotted. They're anticipating it. There's not really much he can do in terms of continuing down that avenue. Gen G have been super patient in a lot of these rounds that we've seen before. Anti-Ecos, anti-bonus rounds. They're always sitting back, always using their utility to clear up and then catching them on the fall back. I've really enjoyed the discipline that they've shown, especially on the last map. And it seems like it's no different here. Yeah, I think they've definitely warmed up into this game. and. You almost have to hope for EDG's sake they haven't cooled off because we've seen a lot of different heroes throughout, especially in their Paper X game. We talk about great performances out of Haodong. I think nobody had a fantastic map of split. But in the last map, I was basically like, how many kills can Kankan Kan get? And if it's not at least four, they're probably losing the round, <laughs> which is not the sign you want to see. It reminds of almost EDG of old. He's the hero, and the rest of the team are just looking to try and put him into position. For this round, 30 seconds left. expectations incredibly low. Sure, he has a marshal, which, given the opportunity, could do damage. But now in an afterplant, Lack here on a potential late lurk. Now, there is a bit of a gap being left, but I think Lack has now filled that. One enemy remaining. And it will now just be Khan Khan remaining. I think they've already, well, they should have spotted the sniper. He shot a couple of bullets at them, so I don't yeah. know if anybody's going to want to feed him. And the only person I can see peeking that is Texture. The scope of his own on the outlaw, and an advantageous fight regardless of where he hits. 45 HP. Kankan's on his way forward. Understandable. You know, he's not going to look to carry a marshal through to the next, but the outlaw is holding the angle, and Texture will find that one easily. 2-0 to zero for Gen G. Not much in the way of damage done. I think it was just the pistol yeah, that was, was lost on mid. So, altogether, a very positive start to this map for Gen G. Yeah, and that's the only kill that anybody has been actually be able to get on the EDG side. So, a very quiet start for them in a map that 
doesn't decide their fate, but it's still a scary fate to have. Like, bear in mind, okay, yeah, sure, they, they've managed to beat out Paperx once. Do, there's a chance they'll face them again. You've got the likes of Loud, Heretics, like all of these teams that can come back, even maybe a little bit of chance for revenge for FPX as well. So those decider games are not going to get any easier. Getting through first time definitely has its benefits already. Quite a bit of information, both duelists being spotted outside of that A site. And considering that this is a bonus round, it has some real legs to it. Especially in post plans here for Gen G. If they can muscle their way into a site, we're gonna have the outlaw leading the charge to take opening fights. Everybody on the side of EDG has got full shields. Of course, they saw the outlaw last round, so you're not gonna go running into that with light shields, giving him free kills, giving him a, basically an AWP upgrade. Texture's avoided the recon. It's in a good position. If anyone does go for that peek just to grab a little bit of info, they'll be in a lot of trouble, but the poison orbs up, and that should keep them back. Yeah, they've got the information that they are still here. It's the split into middle that could definitely make things a little bit more interesting. Trying to almost bait with the shots. Ow, oh, and they haven't actually seen it. Already first duel going their way, but nice work from Howdong. Smoggy as well, combining. Desperately low on HP, but they've managed to weather the storm, hold them back that little bit longer. Leaving just two players remaining. Make it one, it is a clean sweep. Only nobody lost. Which sounds mental as a sentence. Yeah. An EDG bomb after a single kill in the first two rounds. They do quite well in the first buy. Yep, a very well held push on the side. I mean, this is what I'm saying for Gen G actually breaking through. I think is the, the the problem in this round, short of any over peaks out of the side of EDG. But they were patient. They took their time, and they certainly managed to reap the rewards for that. Now, coming into round number four, I'm a little concerned. Meteor has an ulti online, and it's going to be pulled right away into another dimension. He goes. He's got to fall back, so he, he's left his gate crash in towards A main, clearing out this like a recon. Look how far back they've gone. And yeah, I mean, they've made the right call rather than being blitzed on. And Karen has such a good angle for the rotate through. I, there's no way Chichu could have expected that. Yeah, it's the orchestrator, the conductor from the back of the gun barrel spotted. The start from Texture. It's going to make it so much more problematic clearing out these players from the back line. It's going to be impossible. Bear in mind, they've got snake bite lineups. They could use a gravity well, but I don't think they're even going to need it. Picking this team apart, Smoggy at least has found one, but here comes those lineups. Anybody even gets close to that spike, and they've already spotted both players. Meteor's blinded himself, but it doesn't even matter. And now the grab well's also caught out Smoggy. A clean take from Gen G with slightly comical close to it but yeah they won't mind yeah, i've never seen a man look so lost in my life meteor today <laughs> he didn't know where he was. That was the blind he sees a player close he has to run out of the smoke rather than get shot in the head and <laughs> ends up getting blinded himself it was beautiful it must be so confusing for munchkin to step into that scenario seeing them back to back I think they were shooting for a james bomb poster three to one Gen G in a prime position, Bladestorm online, not needed, with full rifles in play for that attacking side, and EDG having next to nothing to work with, just some pistols. I see the clock frozen on the top, and I have to almost think this is a timeout from EDG. This early on, you don't want Gen G to be just storming away, and as we can see, yes, it is indeed an EDG timeout. Yeah, I, I think it's almost just off the manner in which these rounds have been won. As I said, the first two rounds, they got a singular kill. Me too. And then also, the last round, again, just one kill. It was only the round that Smoggy actually managed to sort of hold the line on the site. Other than that, they get forced back. But the thing is, so far at least, that those retakes haven't looked good. And it, it's not your normal composition. That's sort of the benefit of not only having Meteor as that extra space taker. You can also cause havoc when you're trying to go for those retakes. But then you just have Karen and Munchkin. It, it's sort of like the yin and yang of the team. Like you've got this crazy aggressive lunatic in texture. And then you've got two guys going, I'm in spawn. I'm uh, line up out. Okay. 
There's the snake bite gone. Okay, few seconds. It's a gravity well. And then that's, that's basically the round over at that point. And in the meantime, it's like, you know, the guy that's sweating. You know, the, the sweaty guy. Yeah. I mean, you've just, you've just got Tess going, I'm in the fight. I, I killed one. And just the others chilling, just having a nice time. It's a disgusting sort of matchup to try and play against. And you almost have to play into that aggressive nature. You have to try and, well, as GB would say, punch him in the face. You have to get up close and personal. And Jinji are just so good at denying that. Well, this is it. We've seen so many rounds where they just pump the brakes right off rip, play it super slow. Early on here, I, I'm not sure what Meteor just did. Maybe popping a flash through A main, then TPing right over to B for a much quicker pace take to keep these players in position on A. Perhaps even grab the rotates over. But one man is still here. Standing his ground. Well, not anymore. <laughs> Chichu's not standing at all. Good shot from nobody. And an angle lined up, but Meteor was ready for it. Yeah, this round looking done already. Smoggy, he's going to get his ult online no matter what happens here. Well, unless he goes down to the spike, but I don't think that's going to happen. But the thing is, Genji is just giving them nothing. Every once in a while, someone goes for a slight jiggle peek, but they're just so passive in their spots. Ratty angles being held as well. Okay, sure, as said, you've got players like Meteor who just want to try and farm up as many orbs as possible. But again, that's another player around with four players alive. There's been barely anything to talk about in terms of EDG. The finance is already off the charts for Gen.G. If they wanted to throw in an operator, they could comfortably on pretty much every single player. And this now has to be a response, because right now this is looking like a deflated EDG. This is not the team that we were singing the praises about in map one. Even Khan Khan at the moment is missing. Yeah, and that's coming out of a pause as well, right? Like, th this has got to be somewhere that you've had your coaching staff come in, like your IGL's trying to pull it through. You call that pause, you touch base with your coaching staff, and you're right back into the fray. Uh, for Gen G, I mean, look, it's plain sailing. It's a breeze right now. EDG need to get back on that horse. And we've seen a couple different approaches The Gen G have shut down each time. This time, though, late aggression on the back of a flash. It did catch one of them, but the other sneaks into the corner, and that'll be aggressive A information for them with a the rotate coming through, but the dash was heard. They know Kon Kon is coming around this angle. Two players are lined up, ready to punish, and that was because of texture being up here in the tube, being able to hear that. Perfect comms. Again, no success for Kon Kon is aggression. When they played this map versus FPX, to qualify, he was one of the only reasons they were even in the map. Like, he was so aggressive but successful with it. And right now, that just isn't the case. Again, they, they've sold a ruse, trying to keep a couple of players, but right now it's still split. A solo defender in the form of Haodong, and just look at his HP. He's, he's already low. He's about to come under some serious pressure, and at least support has began to rotate in. Smoggy actually pushing into his own util to try and just get anything there, and it's so easy. They are making this look like a walk in the park or maybe a walk along the beach. Finally, there's been a response, but just look at where the players are. The afterplant will again ensue. The rats will go back into their corners. There's no hope. Yeah, this is a very strange position to find ourselves in, considering how we started this series out, Tom. I, I thought we were in for a quick day, and, well, it might be three maps, but with the way things are going, it could be in the run time of two. 13 to 8, 13 to 5, and Genji now leading 5 to 1. The question, how many rifles can EDG carry through to the next round? Already one is spotted towards the elbow, and there's the crunch coming in from Meteor. He gets one, and there's more players on yeah, the way. Where do you go? They're willing to commit. <laughs> They're boxing him in. Chichu knows his only chance is to come out swinging to try and take the fight before they pincer him. Unfortunately, nothing is found. Rifles are dropped, and EDG, it's not just their economy that's in the bin, it should also be their mental. This is a really tough position to play from. Yeah, they're so prepared for everything that they want to do. Kong Kong's initial aggression, I think he's actually caught by his own teammate's flash initially. So unable to find anything on the peak. The push into middle also, they're just waiting. They're ready. And the second he's dead, it does just look like, okay, now they can go for their executes. They get rid of the real danger. And the only round that they've won so far on the EDG side was purely based of Smongy managing to get a multi-frag on the site. Again, the ult's being farmed up. 
Meteor one away, Munchkin one away. They've got a couple of marshals to play with in this round, though. Maybe could try and do a little bit of damage, but that's that's all the optimism I have left. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of damage. Look at their economy on JG. Yeah. It's not going to do anything, like, short of them being able to completely break open this attacking side in the coming rounds. Good shot by Smoggy. Uh -huh. That's texture down already. Some economy damage. But we need to see a lot of rifles dropped, and really, we're looking for a round win for EDG every this could be big. time they run it. Nice position. Oh, no! He puts his gun away! And it's still uh, a little bit labor, but it still works out for Karen. Ah, there was a chance the that HP. he gets picked off, but that lurk was filthy. And again, look, they're just going to use the Cosmic Divide, get themselves the afterplant. And uh, do I believe there's any hope in the afterplant? Maybe. They've at least eliminated one of the players, but I don't even think they realize just yet where everything's going down. Yeah, just look up in the sky, see that Cosmic Divide, that'll give it away. But they were looking to clear out any lurkers around, no one to be found. Rifle's potentially retrievable. Something. But if you're on EDG right now, the real concern is Smoggy and Haodong being so low. A bullet, all that's needed to take down the final player, and it is delivered easily. That one didn't really seem under threat. Was Jan G tighten their hold on this map and on this series with a six to one lead? The one saving grace, Tom, is that EDG have four ultimates coming into the next round, and they've called a timeout, and they'll be full bought. If ever they were going to put another round on the board, this is really where you want to see it. Yeah, not bad ultimates for a retake as well, because that, that has been their major problem. Just look at the deaths. That, that's it's not something I say too often, but look at the deaths over on Genji. Munchkin has died once, Karen has died twice. And that's because they are playing for the late round every single time. Karen's lurks have been sublime, but they're so ready to just play in those afterplant situations. Now, at least with something like a Hunter's Fury, maybe an aggressive push from Khan Khan with the Blade Storm, they might be able to clear out some of those late flanks. I'm also looking, though, at the fact that he's got the Operator, because he has been getting into a lot of early fights and losing pretty much every single one of them. The gun that pretty much made him famous is in his hands once again. And if you're on that EDG side, we are going into round number eight. Both of your pauses are already gone. That is how dire the situation is right now for the Chinese powerhouse. A squad that came out swinging on map one, on Gen G's map pick. They yeah. set the tone for the series. Yeah. And that tone has changed dramatically since we left Icebox. They've cooled down on EDG and Gen G coming in hot on Breeze. An eighth round about to kick off. Gen G could be on seven when we leave this one. As I said, EDG have four ultis to play with. Bit of a concern, though, with the retakes constantly needing to be played on A, with an ult for Meteor that we've seen used before to just clear this site out, get them on there, and get the plant in. And then if it's Munchkin planting, that's the Viper's Pit. If he takes the orb, that's the Viper's Pit, and a really tough way back through. We're going for a Hunter's Fury, blind as a bat. And unfortunately, it's not found anything with the orb retrieved. Here comes the pit to cover the plant. Now you don't have that Hunter's Fury to clear your way back through. The Null Command. Uh. It's not in on time, and there's not really a, a lot of coordination for EDG right now. They're, they're still covering out some of this map. It looks like they want to go forward. There's a flank on the way from Karen. There's really not a lot going for this defensive side, even though it's a 5v4. The odds are stacked against them. Yeah, so much needs to happen, and I don't even know oh. if they're going to get anything again. Karen got caught with no gun in hand, and Karen is just doing so much damage, devastation. Smoggy at least, it's just exit kills. Padding the stats because the round's already over. Gen G are running a clinic over on EDG. The team that didn't fear oh, Gen G oh. are just getting ruined by them. How many times have we seen a knife be pulled out? And that's the second that somebody peeks the angle. It's like, it's like a calling card. They're beckoning them in. Uh, it's just so unbelievable. Like we mentioned the flank, but I didn't expect that level of impact. Well, the, the funny thing as well is, at that point, the round was already over. They were going like for they, a save, they, right? They weren't, they weren't looking to actually fight back into it, but they're just not prepared 
for these players to be around. And that's the thing, they're running the comp with more information. Yeah. They're running the one with the double initiator, with the cypher. And they're the ones that end up looking like fools in almost every single round. The fact is, I'll be honest, I kind of forgot they even had a cypher at this point. Like, I, I just don't think that Chichu has been able to find anything. And, oh, it's gonna get one for free. Finally, Munchkin's died, by the way. I think that's only death number two. What? Really? He's been, I hadn't even caught that. I think he was seven and one, unless he died last round as well, but even still, he's barely died. I have well, yeah, but the Viper's Pit was online was until right at the end, yeah. so yeah, I, I think that was literally his second death. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. I mean, uh, and I think Karam will only be on like maybe three. Here. The thing is, the trade that they get there, Munchkin falling, it is big. It is removing a lot of the utility that gets them out to sight. Problem is, it was Khan Khan dropped on the other side. That's your entry. Haodong tries to fill the role, and he's shut down immediately. Lackey is caught in the corner, though. Trapped in there, and the big iron takes him down. Back up. Well, the first shot doesn't hit. But Meteors most certainly does. They don't know that there's a player sitting on the site. Oh, Smoggy no. has a chance, but I think he just broke the gate crash, so now the info will be there that there is still someone sitting around. There's going to be a bodyguard on the planter, so no chance to deny it. And the real hope, okay, well, that was actually a good chance. Some damage done. The eyes focused forward. Good flash. A good punish. Even though Chichu catches one from behind, he's going to swing straight into this off. I like the cage. Great use of it. Great swing. Oh, but he doesn't hit the kill shot. 55 HP, but that's enough for Texture to still be able to duel. And with Meteor coming around the other side, I don't see a lot of ways this goes for Chichu. He needs to be quick, clean, and clinical. Good shot, good correction as well. Meteor forced back, and the defuse is underway. No utility for the Yoru. It's going to be a dry peak, and it's worked out again for Gen G. One of the closer rounds for EDG, but again they lose, and 8 to 1 we go. It doesn't seem like there's any safe haven for the defenders. No, that was one of the best opportunities for them. A few pieces of individual brilliance, an aggressive push, some team play that worked out, but they met Meteor at the end, and they went extinct. 11 and 4 for him, but there hasn't been a weak link. That, that's been the major issue. Gen G have peaked at the perfect moment, as they have done versus most of their opponents throughout this game. Well, time to lock and load. Go again for EDG. They probably would have called a timeout coming into this round if they still had one, but they've burned them up. They're on their own now. I cannot use that. All on their lonely, just like the round count. Viper's Pit online for the defenders. The way back through, that could help. You see a retake wall on B. One that lets them get close from middle and then pop. No. I, I, down. He's out. OK, cool. Oh, oh no, no, he's not! <laughs> oh, he's been hunted! Oh my, oh my god, god the what? damage is huge! I, that, that's one of the best Hunter's Furies I've ever seen! It just tagged both, that's ridiculous from Luckier. After a first map to forget, he has been fantastic ever since. Back with a vengeance. And look who it is they killed, Tom. That's your Viper's Pit, down and out of the round. No way back through for them now. Well, nobody's gonna try. He's got some support, but again, there's a smoke to deny them a meteor in an aggressive position. Just doesn't seem to be missing a beat. Stolen away by Karen in the end, but nine of one. Whether you predicted the first and the second map, I think you're a bit crazy if you did. But if you thought this is how map number three was going to go, props to you. This and, is and how is it living in Korea? This is just yeah, so disgusting. Was there? Am I mistaken in saying that there was nothing to give away that player's position? That was a, a blind fire to Hunter's Fury, right? <laughs> He's pulled back the bow. They're both doing it. They're three, both doing it. Three pulls of the bow, and every single one hit their mark. Bullseye after bullseye. Nine to one. Gen G are absolutely stealing this series away. They got dominated on their map pick, and then they showed up. They've only given six rounds on the last map in this one. Explain that one. Fake time. Oh, either way. The drone's going to give a little bit of info. I, it, it really is a bleak reality for EDG right now. We saw on the player cams real frustration for Concom because it is rare, no matter who you are, that you shut this man out completely. But that has been the story thus far. <laughs> 
even being played with by an opponent. You can see just trying to make this awkward, try and make this confusing. And there's Texture. Even still, though, Khan Khan has managed to take him down. A trade, which I'll be honest, so far has been unusual. A deep mid position from nobody, but looks away. Just as they make the cross, the entire team comes out and then Khan Khan peeks into the lot of them. He has had a cursed game so far. Finally, we see. It. There's Cypher a cipher. They There's got a tag, cam. Tom. He got a tag. It's because they're finally going B. That doesn't happen very oh. often. It doesn't matter, though. They're still losing every single fight ahead of them. Chichu probably gobsmacked that they've actually entered into the B site. I don't know where he's hoping to go here. They're so ready for it. He can't work. He does at least Once manage to drop the player planting, but it's off. They've already planted. And while just as every other round goes, it is 10-1. Ridiculous. I don't Last even remember round what round EDG half. won, to be honest. This has been the most... It was the round oh, was where Smoggy got, uh, I think it was three kills on the back of the site. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was the pyramid play. I remember Flash it because up top. it's, it's yeah. the only thing that's... <laughs> it's the only thing that's happened. <laughs> like, you could study this. You could watch this back again and again. I spot. Oh, look, look at what they're buying. Look at what they're buying. Stop. Look at what they're buying. It's the last round of the half. Look at what they, they look they've at, got backup look, weapons. Look at what they're doing. They've got backup weapons for days and three. This, this is this operators. is the Concom waiting angle. What? Where does he peek? Does he peek a main? Does he peek into middle? That's where Concom is. They're waiting for it. <laughs> this is so disgusting. They know it's coming as well. <laughs> Oh no, they know where Texture is. What a disaster. <laughs> Blade Storm used as well. Up shot fires out. It was Munchkin letting loose on that shot, swapping the weapon over for a Phantom, and they're still keeping the three. It's just juggled around. Now it's Lakia who's going to be your opper. I don't know how they're running this. You know, you take one shot, then you juggle it over, right? That's your chance gone. Now it's oh, well, someone else's turn. Already gone. They're, they're, they're already dropping them. Oh no. Poor form, but they do have to make a play eventually. 50 seconds left on the clock. It's time to push forward. Hey, two ops on attack. It's, it's still pretty good. <laughs> still pretty unique. Oh, Meteor taking space. There hasn't been a battle or a brawl in this round. EDG have played a little bit more passive. It doesn't make a damn difference. They're being battered. Khan Khan again tries to be the hero, but this time and every time he has been shut down. Haodong, Chichu, well, there's uh, nothing they could do. A nice shot at least. Still know where they are. But knowing and doing seconds. anything about it is going to be another thing altogether. The plant not the safest, but that's cover. They didn't even need the plant in the end. It is 11 to 1 scoreline. The most dominant half we've seen so far in the tournament. Yep. And it will have to be an even more dominant one if they're going to turn this around. Yeah, fair play if anybody can beat that moving forward in the event. I'm not expecting to see a much better half than this on any map. Absolutely gobsmacked by this attacking side of Gen.G. 11 rounds, an EDG that came in the start of the day looking like favorites, playing like favorites. And Gen.G have found themselves behind. Let's hear from Munchkin, we sat down with them earlier on. 안녕하세요. 저는 젠지에서 아이젤을 맡고 있는 먼치킨이라고 합니다. 제 아이젤링 방식 자체가 팀원들이 잘하는 플레이 방식을 약간 돋아주면서 더 잘할 수 있게 하는 게제 아이젤 스타일링이기 때문에 저희 어느 선수든 나 이거 지금 해보고 싶다. 진짜 이거 할수 있을 것 같다라고 항상 콜을 해주면 그런 방향성을 최대한 밀어주는 것 같아요. 어 크레이지 라쿤에서 속해 있던 저는 그때도 나이가 적은 편은 아니었지만 되게 성격이나 게임 쪽으로 되게 어렸던 것 같고 지금의 진지는 그래도 이제 청소년기가 조금 지난 그런 사람인 것 같아요. Monskin now just too late to the party tries and actually might do a little bit of chip damage to Dewey's here if he doesn't get himself out of danger. Dewey's taking a lot of damage from this. That's a little surprising as Munchkin now ready for it gets it. He gives them the tiniest of margins. 사실 멀리서 이제 유럽 경기를 보고 북미 경기를 볼 때는 되게 다 무서웠는데 지금 마드리드 와서 보면은 푸시픽이 가장 무서운 것 같은데요. 지금 한국 시간은 되게 늦은 시간인데 경기 끝까지 봐주셔서 정말 감사드리고요. 저희가 남아 있는 경기들도 좋은 성적으로 거둬갈 수 있도록 노력하겠습니다. 감사합니다.
Well, Munchkin sitting 10 and 2 right now. I imagine he's going to be pretty happy with his performance and probably the performance of his team overall. 10 round lead, two needed to close it out. The pistol may well seal EDG's fate, and even the best teams in the world will refer to those pistols as a coin toss. That's not a coin toss I'd like to be participating in if I was EDG. No. No, I, I think the, the word screwed comes to mind. If, yeah. if they pull this one off, we'll be raving about it for a long, long time. But the fact is, Genji, they started slow. They built in map two, and now they are looking unstoppable. A chance for the first time in their history, not only making it to a Masters, but making it to a Masters playoffs. For a lot of these players, that was a dream that may never have come and with a roster that many wouldn't have expected to be this damn good. They are just two rounds away from making that history and being, well, maybe even one of the favorites to take the crown. Still, the players up against them are not ones that you can be foolish, that you can give chances to, and they have struggled on this defensive time before. EDG clearly not giving up just yet, but this man in pistol rounds is devastating as ever. The lurking Karen is all that remains. Watch your flank. It's a trap here as well. Just gets caught by that. There's the info to play with. It will be a legendary comeback. Kankan using Fnatic's pistol. You'll have to channel some of that energy and then some. <laughs> yeah, you need more than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a mini victory, so to speak, for EDG. 11 to 2. They've doubled the rounds here with the pistol win. That's, yeah, that pretty much sum summarizes this game so far. It's It's been tough. But well, that was the thing. Uh, we, we saw that comeback happen because of a fantastic tactical pause. Do you reckon they'll have one top? No, no. not until overtime at least. Uh, they, they've got to do it on their own. The coaches, they, they mentioned it. I think it was Chichu in the interview we saw earlier. How much they think the coaches really impact them. How much they lead by example while they're silenced. You're going to have to rely, well, either on their opponents eventually taking one. I guess that will be the the real possibility. Even still, though, Texture going for a little bit of an investment here. Other than that, not a whole lot to play with. And, of course, you don't really expect any players to be saving too much here for the side of EDG because you can't afford to play a bonus round in the next. Part of me sees this as a, a Gen G round without things have been going. Texture's dealt with, though, and now my... My odds are switching up a little bit. EDG have sight control. Man advantage times three. And well, it looks like Gen G will fall flat in this eco round. One kill for Lakia. And we're at the stage with two rounds needed for Gen G. I don't really care how much you damage right they do. Click that. <laughs> they can make this a bit more costly. And for Munchkin, he's picked up a sheriff. He's close to the spike. There's a couple players getting close to ultis. 11 2, though, he can do what he likes. Probably just going down to the spike. Yeah, to be honest, they've had so many plays that have been based off confidence. I wouldn't even mind too much if he tried to just do some damage. They have such a ridiculous lead, but clearly just wanting to make sure that they don't give any of those alt orbs over to, well, Khan Khan, Howard on. And instead, we'll just go down to the spike. Now, I fully expect that any weaker weaponry here for EDG is just upgraded. You, you can't be playing a bonus round here. You are too far behind. If you allow them to get to 12, you're playing for overtime. And we are at least seeing rifles purchased up. It's still not going to be the best of buys, though. That's the thing. I think an outlaw has been purchased in the place of a marshal. That's a slight upgrade, at least. And it will still allow them to buy into the next round. But even with the slight weaknesses, EDG need to win this. Well, EDG have three rounds, and Munchkin has three deaths. It's been a pretty strong game for Gen.G so far, and now the rifles come out. As you said, EDG have some upgrades, but there's no such thing as, oh, well, we lost the bonus, it's all good. No. You got to win that bonus, and nobody's off to a flying start with Karen already down and out. Gen.G's numbers thin out, and the A site. Well, you see, with the wall already up, I think they're going to wait for another pulse. The wall goes down. Kankan might have an opportunity to spray away. Good spray through. It's dealing some damage. Texture's forced back. Caught by nobody. This is a good look for the side of EDG. Trading out one after another. We said they needed to win this bonus, and it looks like they've got it oh, locked down. Steps. But Meteor, yeah, has a free kill. 
And it's been left to a 1v2. Very winnable for Meteor. TP, I love this. I don't know if he's going to commit. I imagine it's a fake for info. And then he can sneak his way through to the site. But let's see. Both players sat back. He does take the TP. It's being watched by Kankan. Khan. Both players around this angle. It would have to be a mistake at this stage. And even Kankan, Khan, one of the most confident players, decides it's not worth it. Smart stuff from EDG. Not going to overextend. And this is the exact start they needed to start what will be one of the most ridiculous comebacks of all time. Still, I don't think until we get to eight or nine rounds, I'm even going to start thinking about what could be on the cards. And you can see the confidence that's there. Like that push from Karen is ludicrous. <laughs> it just goes walking out. But you can that's kind it. of understand it at this point when you won that many rounds in a row. You only needed to work once for Gen G. They can throw out a couple of those curveballs. Now, here's the interesting thing. 11-4. A huge lead for Gen G. And they decide to call a timeout. Funny, because you mentioned, Tom, earlier about how Chichu was complimenting the coaching staff of yeah. EDG, saying how important it is for them to touch base with them. The Gen G have given them an opportunity to do so, but obviously they're just concerned about Look, closing this game out. When your coach is solo, one of the legendary <laughs> Korean uh, FPS players, you don't care who's on the other side. But I'll be honest with you. He is someone who was there at the beginning of Valorant. He was there in titles before Valorant for many, many years. He has so much experience that I think they're going to value that a lot more than, oh, okay, now After gets to talk to his team as well. I also think there is just an aspect of momentum breaking. Because the fact is, I think of any team that we have in the scene, you watch Khan Khan's camera, when that guy gets pumped up, you're in trouble. So create the calm. Use your pauses for that. It might even just be a small talk of like, okay, let's calm down. We're not done. We're not through yet. And I don't mind it. Well, yeah, when you've got a lead like that, you see your players playing loose. I can also understand just calling that timeout to say, yeah, everybody calm down. Let's play the game. Let's just close it out. We're not here to give EDG a way back in. And if you do, well, they will certainly take it. Yeah. Big lead for Gen G. Defensive side, couple of investments, but nothing huge. Mostly sheriffs, a marshal, and a bookie to back them up. For Gen G, I mean, sometimes you'll see these rounds where you group up try to play the numbers, but it's such a big map. It's not really a gamble they want to take. Instead, just playing defaults and hoping they can pop off individually. I think really they're just thinking about the next round. Well, I'm definitely intrigued by a Bucky on Breeze. I'm not sure it's something that will necessarily be expected, but when you have that extra controller, in the form of Karen, you can create little pockets for someone like Lackia to play. And as said, his resurgence in this series has been fantastic. And his resurgence in the scene in general, he had to go through being slightly trapped to a one-map player, to being trapped in the tier two. <laughs> and now he's been shot in the face. I was optimistic. <laughs> one of those plays you never really expected to work. Meteor, though, still making things interesting. One enemy remaining. But he will fall as well. Munchkin a little bit out of the action. Looking to keep the rounds to death's ratio the same. Although he did technically die to the spike, which doesn't come up on the scoreboard. Uh, okay. If we're being pedantic, he's died a few more times. <laughs> but for EDG, 13 to five on last map. Pushing up to five here, full buy for Gen G next. The deja vu starts to ring true, but the attacking side has had a good run of things in this round at least. Damage is very minimal. Nobody and Haodong both extremely low to the Sheriff. They're just going for the exit towards the spawn. Yeah, well, Munchkin might not die to the spike. It depends how quickly he pushes out here. Still being watched on the cross, but he finds a nice safe corner to go down to it. So he'll still be able to buy in the next 11 to 5. EDG on their way, but still a long, Look at long that distance scoreboard. left to go. <laughs> It's worth mentioning, Lakia, right, he's 13 to 9 right now, three assists. He was three kills, 18 deaths, one assist on map one. I mean, it was a, it was an abysmal map for him on Icebox, but split and breeze, he's back in the game. Oh, it still seems like it was the closest map so far, which kind of says <laughs> how things are going elsewhere, but there we go. 11 to 5. 
EDG starting to bridge the gap, and that's one hell of a way to kick off the buy round. I said there's always a worry if this man starts gaining confidence. Well, it doesn't get any better than that. One shot, two kills. Gen G left to rely on a very scattered hold. Look at the minimap. You can see those defenders are going to have to have big performances when the push comes down. And it looks like EDG want to shove into the A site. This is Texture's opportunity. The drone could clear him or at least keep him behind this Viper wall as it's about to go up and the push to come through. Texture, no dash. Uh -oh. He's been silenced, suppressed, but he still fires back. 23 HP though, and the players are quickly circling him, encircling him, I should say, and finally taking him down. Munchkin and Karen to do it all. Nice shot by Karen. There's an opportunity. If he can buy some time, the flank will catch another off guard, and now it's winnable again. Gen G has suddenly found legs in the round, but a snake fight in hand leads to Munchkin's death. Karen has to clutch this alone. He's keeping his opponent behind the pyramid, but nobody jumps up top to take him down as sixth for EDG. The gap down to five. It's not quite manageable yet, but this attack side is really picking up some momentum. Somehow, Kankan Kan is only three kills away from being top fragger. I, I, don't, I don't know how that's a thing. They're throwing the op off the map. They did. They threw it right off the map. I, I guess because Kankan Kan has the Blade Storm, he's going to use that for what could be a much quicker round. I guess attempting something a little bit more explosive. Blade Storm available on the other side as well. But yeah, I guess maybe the surprise factor of that operator now being gone. It's not like they don't have the finances for it. Right here. You can see the the patience. Interesting, actually, considering how passive they're holding in this round at the moment. I feel like that operator could have had some value. They could have removed the cam with a shock dart. Chichu now looks to reclaim that control, something that was given up earlier in the round, and it looks like they might be about to use Kankan as a bit of a, a sledgehammer. Information going to be found, though. Already clearing out A main, and I don't know if he's going to get far enough. Might be able to spot some of the players in mid. That would be huge. He has. He's seen that they're still passively waiting. We'll TP back to the site, but it means that they're not going to pull any early rotations just yet. In fact, though, EDG are going to use that as a move towards B. Cage up from Chichu as well. He's making his way around mid for the lurk. The rest of the players need to break through the B site. Viper utility to block them on the retake, but the fight is taken instead. Munchkin blinded up completely, but Kankan Kan can't get it done with Karen on the side. Three kills quickly found, and even the Blade Storm frag on the flanker. Easy peasy for Gen G. They had a real handle on this round from the get go, and 12 to six. One more needed for Gen G. Six chances to pull it across the line. And I am amazed by what we've seen in these last two maps. This Gen G squad, I, I, I don't know if they need to play a one map scrim before their next series, but they are just a, I, I would, if this was online, I'd say it's five different players, Tom. Well, that is the thing. You look at their last few series, it, it does kind of feel like that. They always seem to lose one except for an overtime victory for a 2-0 versus DRX. But that's also just something to talk about, the teams they're going through. It's not like they've had an easy route. You can't sit there and go, oh, you know, they beat one of the weaker teams in their region. They beat DRX, they beat PaperX, they've beaten Loud. These are teams that have all been within top four at international events. Now they look to beat the China number one, a team again who's been in the playoffs before, and this time it's looking like it might be theirs. Just two kills away from creating history for their organization within Valorant. And it's looked like it is done and dusted. Genji will be the second team to make it through to the playoffs. For Lakia, it is a return to greatness. Wow, what a resurgence for this man. Not only on the international stage and scene, not just counting down the years, but even in this series, Three kills, 18 deaths, and one assist to start it out. And he certainly woke up towards the second and third map. But there's nothing that you could do to, you could say to take this away from Gen.G as a squad. This team looks scary, threatening, 
and they're able to come back from these huge deficits from a rough map one to a dominant map two and three. EDG played well, but not well enough today. Yeah, I, I think it's been a fantastic showing, a great start from them, and unfortunately weren't able to battle back, but the real story here is with Genji. You've got returning heroes, teams that have been here before, players that have stepped into this team after maybe having underwhelming previous seasons. Like, expectations for this roster were nowhere near as high as this. Now, they sit top four in the world. They're looking at a chance of genuinely fighting for a trophy. And for some of the players, well, this is elation. This is time to prove themselves. For some of them, this is their first time. You're looking at Karen, someone who was stolen from Wrecked. And right now, as said, top four. That's where they currently sit within the VCT. That's why you don't troll your ranked games. Yeah. You never know who's on the other side. I've frankly unbelievable turn of events. Gen G, there were doubters. There were a lot of doubters, even after regional performance coming onto the international stage. We weren't sure what we were going to get to see from these guys, but all I want to see is more, more yes. from this squad. Texter especially. He was absolutely unbelievable in so many of these rounds, able to punch back just as hard as EDG came out. And I mean, silencing KonKon? That's a that's a feat well, of its own. It must be nice having two duelists <laughs> that are better than most teams' first duelists. Oh, like bad. you look back to that split game, and it was just him and Meteor, both 22 kills apiece. You look at this game. Okay, maybe Texture was a little bit quieter, but he is just basically running straight into the site. But Meteor was thriving, and then I said, you've got that supporting cast. It truly is a roster that looks complete at this stage, and honestly. If you're heading into the playoffs, I don't want to face up against this team because even on the, this was one of their worst maps and they just dominated. Tom, what did we say? What did absolutely everybody say when we saw the veto come through? I heard whispers all throughout the stadium. Why the hell do they keep letting Breeze through? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't think that anyone's going to be asking that moving forward. Jen was right. <laughs> this is clearly a map that they're confident on. It's definitely a map that they're good on. And now other teams might consider taking it out, but with split in there as well, I, I don't know what you want to do. That was a hell of a statement by Genji taking down EDG in the fashion that they did over on split. Now we got to see if anybody can stop this squad. They're looking for the top. Yeah, that, that's the problem. It, it's almost like you have to start picking their strongest maps in the hope that maybe today they're just not going to be that good on them because they're clearly happy to play their weaker ones. It really is an interesting prospect with this roster and honestly, it's been enjoyable. Obviously, for the other side of things in EDG, it's not the end. They're still going to be coming back. But either way, we're going to be heading off now to an interview down with Texture. Y aquí estamos con Texture y con Jen. We're here joined by Texture and Jen for some translating. And we're going to talk about a little bit what happened into this match. Actually, both of uh, your map picks so far in this tournament have gone the other way. Um, do you think that it is just you dropping the ball or maybe the preparation is not on point for the tournament? What do you think is happening? 어, 그동안 경기를 보면 좀 젠지의 매픽에서 아쉬운 결과가 있었거든요. 좀 준비 과정에서 아쉬웠던 부분이 있는 건지 아니면 좀 어떻게 설명할 수 있을지 궁금하다고 합니다. 어, 매픽이요? 네. 매픽에서는 사실 저희 생각으로는 전혀 문제 없었고요. 근데 오늘은 조금 되게 의외였었던 것 같아요. 왜요? 어, 뭐지? 어센트를 밴을 할 줄은 몰랐어요. 아... 저희가. 네. 그게 다예요. Um, no, I don't think uh, the map beetles or preparation were the problems, but uh, what did catch us kind of off guard was EDG betting ascent. Oh, okay, that is a good one. Parece ser que no les preocupa mucho que hayan fallado y hayan perdido los dos map picks que han tenido eh, hasta ahora. La verdad que la mayor sorpresa dice que es que EDG les haya baneado el ascenso. Eso es lo único que les ha sorprendido un poco. Para la segunda pregunta, les voy a preguntar cómo puede ser que no se vengan abajo con toda la presión de llegar siempre a ese tercer mapa. Also, um, as a result, you of we had very long matches. You always end up in that third map. Eventually, right, the pressure is going to catch up. Do you think that you deal very well with pressure or is something that doesn't bother you at all also moving on to playoffs now? Oh, 계속해서 시원한 2대0 승리가 아니라 2대 1로 경기를 이기고 있는데 좀 이런 부분에서 앞으로 계속 플레이오프에 진출하면 점점 더 부담감이 강해질 수도 있잖아요. 이 부담감에 대해서는 어떻게 생각하고 있고 또 어떻게 좀 해결하려고 하고 있나요? 어, 부담감은 전혀 없고요. 저희가 팀이 센 팀이라고 생각을 해서 
근데 2대0으로 끝내고 싶은 게 간절하긴 합니다, 제 개인적으로. Uh, no, not a lot of pressure. Uh, we're definitely okay with the pressure, but personally, I am desperate to uh, close our series out 2-0, but uh, we're pretty confident with our resilience and the ability to, you know, uh, crawl back or even just to recover. Dice que no, la verdad es que la presión no le molesta en absoluto. Le encanta la resiliencia que tienen y cómo son capaces de darle la vuelta a la tortilla. Aunque la verdad es que le gustaría mucho tener un resultado 2 a 0 para ir tranquilitos. Esto es todo lo que tenemos. Thank you guys very much. We'll see you in playoffs. Go get a long rest. And let's toss this back to the desk. Thank you. I got a question for you, Mimi. And yeah. hello, by the way, to Tom and joining us on the desk. I have a question for both of you. Does it ever drive you crazy just how fast the night changes? Because Gen G managed to You sound like one. a philosopher. What does that mean? <laughs> yes, guess, it you, does. Wait, wait. Absolutely. What? Yeah. yeah <laughs> strong, yes, it does. It does. Strongly, strongly agree. Uh, thanks for joining us, Tom. But yes, that match was a roller coaster of emotions. Some I mean, not it's a all too boring roller coaster. It was like a really <laughs> big high and then a really big low and if you're really an EG low, fan. Yeah. And if it's the other way around, it's a really big low and then a really big high. I mean, crazy how that one swings around after, honestly, Genji look miserable on Icebox. They come yeah. out here, they dominate on Split, they show up to Breeze, and I think made great changes to this composition. They were constantly getting into these post plans with this double duelist comp and their post plans were just unbeatable ratty. Comp. they were ratty like that's the thing they didn't they had a double rat it was like the first player obviously setting up with a all double of the fights and then Even they when had I'm in the new york the city subway blazer. yeah it, it was just disgusting like it was beautiful in essence but also then they just had the disruptive nature of the duelist it was the perfect like one two punch yeah, it's so funny that everything that I was saying about EDG in the first map, suddenly I'm saying about Gen G and this map, you know, it, it's just, <laughs> it, it, they were suddenly controlling the pace yeah. and, and, and bullying EDG in this one. I, I think it kind of shows that both these teams, honestly, are, are pretty comparable, right? That they're playing very similar, pretty basic comps for the most part. You know, Gen, Gen G will throw something like that breeze in there. They play really pretty solid fundamental Valorant, pretty slow attack sides, trying to find a gap, set things up, but also rely a lot on, like, the heat of the moment and how good their individual yeah. players are popping off in a map. And I think that's why we see, honestly, for both these teams, them be so swingy. One player missing out on a performance, a couple rounds sl slipping away, and those swings can be massive. But I think we saw peak Genji in those last two maps. Yeah, I, I think the terrifying thing as well is when Kong Kong gets shut down, I've never seen it's this so team rare. look like that before, but it was just like they were so prepared for absolutely everything he was going to do. Like all the aggressive peaks, there was someone watching it. There was a piece of counter utility. Like it was just beautiful. And you guys hit on this at the end, but it, it, it's crazy that Gen.G are in the top four, right? Yeah. Think about how many of these players, like last year, Texture w was on GE. Was who is like Karon, by the way? Yeah, who Where'd is he come Red from? Demon. <laughs> so much has changed for all these guys. Lucky we haven't we haven't seen him since 2021 at New the global term. event. Do you, do you guys know who New? Time is. No. Anybody at home? Have you died of new time before? No. A long time ago in a VCD far, far away. And you're absolutely right. Karen is like four months old into his battle. <laughs> Actually, he is four months old. The first, yeah. the first infant to make top four in Valorant. Round of applause. Oh. Yes, he was already in the range when he was born. That's <laughs> so. Is, is Woot three months old? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> crazy. That's why he's not here. Crazy. Uh, he's baby, young. you know these this new generation. I really, um, I really give props to them. But uh, right now we do have a question for our lovely fans. Lovely fans meaning Hypoc. Um, so we do have a question for you, Tom and Hypoc asked on the desk on day one what has been your favorite food in madrid so far oh I, I did one. i did go walking one of the days a lot and they had this like there was a a thai chicken empanada wait what it was like this wait, little uh, oh, what, it, was, wait, it was amazing oh, wait, well, hold on a what sorry thai chicken no thai. no the thai, thai pollo empanada empanada sure where i can't speak I, properly where does that and i i just i don't know i've never heard is that how you say it Maybe that's how I say it. It might be wrong, but I, might, that's how I a, say it. It's either a Britain moment or it I'm just. It is probably a Britain mean. moment. It is both probably. Are like, let, let's <laughs> be real. Amazing. We're probably both wrong, and Kukuka will come back yeah, in a bit. She's and tell us how we, need, we need her yeah. back. Yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah, both yeah, of you sure. are idiots. But, <laughs> yeah. It was recommended by the shop owner himself. He's like, this is my favorite, and it was God tier. Well, uh, what is God tier right now is uh, uh, how our brackets are looking because, I, again, I bring up the alternate universe of VCT that we are living in right now. And we are seeing Sentinels back when we're seeing Gen G uh, as well making uh, the two first teams into our playoffs is going to be Sen City and uh, Tiger Nation. 
Yeah, it, it absolutely will be. Sand City, actually in Europe, fun fact. Didn't know about that until today, but uh, it's it's where they've settled their roots. Um, but yeah, they, these playoff teams are looking electric. But this really sets us up for, honestly, some like terrifying 2-1 matches because all four of these teams, I, I mean, look who's down here. Loud is in the lower bracket. Paper X is down here. Wait, Heretics is down we're here. We're talking Even, about 2-1s. Like, like yeah. Either Heretics or Paper X is out straight yes, away. Guaranteed. Like that that's that's ridiculous. Again, what universe are we living in? What universe are we living in, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but before we leave, we need to uh, return the favor and we need to leave a question for your next guest. So I'll leave it uh, to Tom to uh, leave a question. Make it good. Oh. What's been your favorite moment so far? Individual play. Mm. And why Individual is it Forsaken? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta add that last part. It's a, it's a rigged question, but it's a question nonetheless. It's a good one. Yeah, I, you could I be like, a, it. like a test writer. Mm. I like but, it. So there's only one answer, and if they get it wrong, yeah. then they're foolish. Let's yeah. see who gets the question. Yeah, yeah. I'm eager to see, uh, I'm eager to see it. And uh, I, again, these matches today have just been so amazing. It's been a great first, uh, first day on the desk, by the way. Thank you for giving me those matches. We had Sentinels, and we had Casey, and then we had this roller coaster of emotions from EDG and Gen G, Mimi. Yeah, it was great having you for, for the first day. And hey. honestly, like, the, the matches today were great, especially that Sen KC one. I'm so excited to see Carmen Core play again. I want that rematch so bad. Yeah, 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 definitely. And Tom, how, uh, what are your final thoughts for the day? All I'm saying is Pacific on the desk and Pacific gets a win. So I, I guess for every Gen G game, they're going to have to bring you back just yeah. for that extra little bit of support. Yeah, Cause exactly. You weren't, you weren't here for Paper X and, you know, look what happened. What's gonna happen? That is exactly what went wrong. <laughs> so you guys know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what needs to happen. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. We will see you tomorrow from Madrid. Hasta mañana. One of the biggest matches of Masters Madrid is coming right up. Sentinels versus Carmine Corp. But this is probably one of the matches that people were expecting the it's most. The and not match. only the people, also the players. We're starting on split. Yeah. Sentinels look unbeatable on this map. They're looking the wrong way. Shit up top. Real way to play this one and fight this. Double duck together. The double swing is called Celsius. Hunting Satchels now in towards the back of the side. Shin. Nasty. Anchor in position. Couldn't see a bloody thing. And I also have another go of it. And once more, portion left alone with the things, but that is Sentinels leading the charge and leading this series. What outrageous dominance. Well, let's find out if this one makes it to a map number three. One enemy remaining. Shots going wide, second. There's no <laughs> way he's getting away with that. Pressing forwards, the players. We're gonna win this game! Sent are fired up. They're all grouped up right towards the back, TP on top. That's Ten. amazing. Satchel! No way, Magnum! Nasty shot, nasty business. No way, Tens! Adjustment of a lifetime. Down, B. Long. Nine below! And it can't come down to anything, Thomas E. No chance! Sentinels have done it! A battle for that sure spot into playoffs. China's number one seed versus Pacific's number one seed. It's EDG versus Genji. We've seen, Mimi, just how hard these teams can punch, even against the best of them all. There's no easy way out. And with the shot, not wow. hit. And he's grabbed a quick double. The lead now convincingly in their favor. Nobody up top, the spike still not planted, but Smoggy finds both kills. Pick up the pieces here in the pistol. Already finding a lot of value is Meteor. And Kong Kong, you can't. Allow him to survive in these sort of positions. Just continues his aggression. But there is no hope. EDG comes through with a dominant victory. Oh, he is going to be able to spot the man in the corner. Out on though, not stunned up. It doesn't matter. Thunder's going to leave Texture completely stunned up, but he hasn't been spotted. One already baiting them out. A second flash, and there is no hope. They're taking him down, but now Meteor in the right place at the right time. The Titan's going to go through, but he runs through on the other side. One enemy into the one v one, but it's still Kong Kong. This is my place. Slakia seems to be destined to close this round out. There it is. Not just the round, but the map with it. While well, the winner moves to playoffs, and the loser will have to fight for survival one last time. Smoggy actually pushing into his own util, and it's so easy. Nice position. Oh, no. Oh, it's just gone away. Nice up. Again.
and there's a smoke to deny them a meteor in an aggressive position. Just doesn't seem to be missing a beat. And it's looked like it is done. That dusted Genji will be the second team to make it through to the playoffs. For Lakia, it is a return to greatness. Cosa que decirte ahora, pero antes de empezar que